Abuelo no me importa Thank <laughs> you. 
Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to RDA Environment Health and Safety Consultancy and Training Solutions. Uh, we will be waiting for some of the participants to join so we can start na po. Ole, good morning, everyone.
Once again, good morning, dear participants, and welcome to RDA Environment and Health Safety Consultancy and Training Solution. My name is Lafayette Nelvi Agustin, and I will be the moderator for the Basic Occupational Safety and Health Training for Safety Officer 2 from September 20 to 24. So, good morning, good morning po, at sana ay nasa mabuti kayong palagay niya. So, to start our program, May we request everybody to please rise for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the uh, to be followed by a dexology. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang Oh 
Once again, good morning sa ating lahat, mga dear participants. Ngayon naman ay pumunta tayo sa ating roll call upang makapag-check tayo ng attendance and at the same time, tatanungin natin ang kanilang mga expectation. O, so, para po sa ating uh, roll call and expectation, uh, kasabihin nyo ang mangyayari po dito. Uh, I-introduce nyo po ang inyong sarili, sabihin nyo po ang inyong pangalan, kung saan kayo nag Uh, tatarabaw ang company o institution and then sasabihin niyo po sa amin ko ano ang mga bagay na ina-expect niya sa ating training. Okay? Ayan. Simulan na po natin ang road call at ang ating expectation. Okay. Saan po tayo magsisimula? Sa malapit ng aking lugar? o sa malayong lugar sa akin. Ano po tayo magsisimula? Luzon or uh, Visayas? Or NCR? Sige, tatawag na lang ako para mas masaya. Okay, may I request everyone to please to turn on their cameras po so we can recognize you. And then you will be asked to turn on your cameras Uh, during the training. Okay, simulan na po natin ang ating roll call at ang ating expectation ngayong umaga. Mangyari lamang po na tumingin sa inyong mga monitor para malaman nyo kung kayo na ba ang akin kinatawag. Okay, let's start na po. Good morning, Sir Erickson. Good morning po. Yes, sir, please introduce yeah. yourself and then sabihin niyo po kung saan kayo nagtatrabaho at ano po ang expectation niyo sa ating training. Uh, hello po sa lahat. Uh, my name is Erickson Guerrero. Uh, CPA po, Acharo and Pokpan Philippines Corporation po and I am residing here in Perona, Tarlac. So, in-expect ko po na matuto pa ng mas malalim na understanding po sa about sa uh, basic occupational and standard po natin. So, yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Erickson. May naman ay puntahan natin si Ma'am. Ma'am Sarah Jane, good morning po. Hello po, good morning po. Bali, ako po si Sarah Jane Duty. Then, nagtatrabaho po ako sa Spencer Foods Corporation dito po sa Pasig. So, ang expectation ko po dito sa training na to is, syempre po matuto po about safety officer and dun sa mga compliance na kailangan namin gawin since it's my first time din po attending yung ganito po. That's all po. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Sarah Jane. May naman I see, Sir. Sir Kenneth. So, ayan po. Good morning sa lahat. I, I am Kenneth Bitito from Montalban, Rizal. And I'm currently working here as a mining engineer in a Aggregates Corporation. So, my company is Big Rock Aggregates Corporation. And ayan po. 
uh, expectation this training is to learn more about basic occupational safety, safety and health. Ayun po. Then, para ma-identify ko rin po lahat ng mga risks and hazards sa aming sites. Yun lang po. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Kenneth. And uh, punta naman natin si Ma'am Lara. Good morning, Ma'am Lara. Good morning po. Opo, si Lara Melissa Texon po from BBF2, Partido San Miguel, Bulacan. Ang hirap dito. May pa ganun, ganun ka lang. Next, po na bilang bagong officer, madami po ako matutunan dito sa ating online training po. Yun lang po. Salamat. Thank you so much, Ma'am Lara. Thank you po. <coughs> Punta naman natin si uh, oh. yeah. Ang ating dalawang sir mula sa Meds Logistics Incorporated si Boom. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, ako po si Franklin Nils Mabuka from Ramadawi City, Cebu. Nagtatrabaho ako sa Meds Logistics Incorporated. Hi. Mas matutunan ko pa ng malalim sa training. Yun lang. Uh, uh, good morning. I'm, I'm Sharpie from this also. I'm a safety officer and a nurse. What I expect about this um, um, seminar is uh, to gain more knowledge about um, BOSS and friendship between BOSS and COS since I have a COS training. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Ngayon naman ay puntahan natin na ang uh, ito. Good morning, Ma'am Janeline. Good morning po. Uh, my name is Janeline Arcanco. Taga Mexico po ako, Mexico Pampanga. Bale, nag-work po ako sa company ng URC Pampanga po. Bale, expectation ko po is ano, bale, uh, Bago pa lang po kasi ako, kaya hindi ko po masyado ano yung ano, safety officer. Pero expect ko po na marami po ako malalaman. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Janeline. <coughs> oh my God. Next po natin ay ito. Hello po, Ma'am Anjali and Sir uh, Walter from Total Bus Corporation. Good morning, Sir Anjali Sagala from Total Bus Corporation. Thanks, people. And my students are learning about the safety since we are dealing with fuels in our depot. Thank you so much, Ma'am and Sir, and once again, good morning sa inyong dalawa. Aha. Ngayon naman ay punta natin si Sir so Good morning Sir Donato, good morning so Good morning, my name is Donato Gala I'm working with Gato Food Corporation Here in Kutasi My expectation is to send us to learn Yeah, thank you, sir. Sir Darwin, good morning, Pop. Parang wala, hindi tayo narinig ni Sir Darby. Next po natin.
Ma'am Christine, good morning po. Good morning po. Hello. Um, I'm Christine Joy Imina from CPF po. Um, uh, in-expect ko po na marami po ako matutunan dito para as a safety officer po. Yun lang po. Thank you so much, Ma'am Christine. Uh, puntahan naman natin si Sir Ian. Magandang umaga sa iyo, Sir Ian. Sir Ian, good morning po. Okay, wala po si Sir Ian. Ngayon naman pupunta natin si Sir Anthony. Good morning, Sir Anthony. Balikan po natin si Sir Anthony. Punta natin si Sir Ray Ventor Gragasi. Hello po. Uh, good morning po everyone. Uh, Ray Ventor Gragasi po working under CPF company. So, expectation ko po ano, ma- a better understanding po and, and all the safety measures required. To have a better working environment. Thank you. Thank you po. Ayan. Muli po, palala lang po na kailangan po natin laging naka-turn on ng ating mga cameras para once na pumasok po ang ating OSHC, ay ma-monitor po nilang nandito kayo sa ating training. Kasi po, kaya na-monitor po nila na naka-off ang inyong camera, baka po sabihin na absent po kayo during the training. Okay, balikan po natin. Si uh, Sir Darwin. O kaya si Sir Anthony. Sir Anthony, are you with us na po? Sir Ian. Okay, balikan po natin sila later on yung ating mga tatlong kasama, si Sir Anthony, si Sir Ian, at si Sir Darwin. For the time being po, uh, punta po muna tayo sa ating house rules.
Okay, so yun po yung ating rules sa kinitag po natin na pwede po natin uh, palitan ang ating mga pangalan para mandali po natin ma-recognize. So, ang nagay po natin ang ating pangalan, first name, and then the last name. Okay, I think Sir Ian is already with us. Good morning, Sir Ian. Please introduce yourself po and then uh, saan po kayo nagtatrabaho at ano po ang inyong expectation. Nakamute po kayo, Sir. Hello po, good morning po sa ating lahat. Uh, I'm Ian Pakun, uh, nagtatrabaho po ako sa CPF company. Bali, ang expectation ko po dito is uh, madami po akong matutunan uh, does and don'ts sa, about sa safety precautions. Uh, yan lang po. Okay, balikan. Thank you so much, Sir Ian. Balikan po natin kung nandito na si Sir Anthony. Sir Anthony, good morning. Wala pa din siya. At si Sir Darby, magandang umaga po. Okay. So ngayon po, bago tayo mag-start ng ating mga training, ay magkakaroon po tayo ng pre-test. Ang link po ng pre-test ay nasa inyong mga chat box. Paki-check na lang po ang ating mga chat box. O kaya po, pwede rin po yung... Scan po ang inyong mga nasa screen. So, meron po kayo 15 minutes to answer our playtest po. Eh nakita niyo na po ba ang ating nasa chat box? And sir, nagkaroon lang po ng typo, typo graphic po, pero siya po ay pre-test. Pwede niyo na po siyang sagutan, sir. Ah, Ma'am and sir pala. Sorry po.
Hi, good morning po. Meron pa pong dalawang ginagsasubmit na kanilang pre-test. Hintayin po natin. And then, kung nakapagsubmit na po kayo ng ating pre-test, balikan po natin mamaya yung ating dalawang participants na hindi pa nakakapag-introduce ng kanilang mga sarili. I think nandito na yung isa. Hello, Sir Darwin. Magandang umaga sa'yo. Hello po. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Sir, please introduce yourself po. Uh, ako nga po pala si Darwin Dansil. Uh, nagtatrabaho po sa CPF Bataan. Uh, ang expectation ko po rito sa training ay marami pong matututunan tungkol sa safety uh, officer. Lang po. Thank you po. Thank you po, Sir Darwin. And dito na po ba si Sir Anthony? Sir Anthony, good morning po. I think Sir Anthony is not yet around po. Hintayin lang po natin ang ating mga pre-tests. Dalawa na lang po ang hindi nagsasabi. And 
And then kung nakapagsabit na po kayo ng inyong free test, pwede na po tayo magkaroon ng uh, health break at balik po tayo ng 9.30 para sa ating uh, training proper. Pwede na po muna mag-off ng camera at makapagpahinga po ng uh, sandali po at mag-inat. At balik po tayo ng before 9.30. Thank you po.
Ayan. Good morning again, mga ma'am and sir. Pwede na po tayong magbukas ng ating mga camera nang tayo po ay makapag-start na sa ating training. Ayan. Open na po tayo ng ating mga camera para ma-recognize po namin kung nandito na po talaga kayo sa ating training. Oras po natin ay 9.21 na po ng umaga. Balikan po natin maya-maya yung ating mga participants na hindi po nakapag-introduce ng kanilang mga sarili. Ayan. Uh, balikan po natin si Sir Anthony. Sir Anthony, good morning po. Nandito na po ba kayo? Nakita ko po kayo kanina, Sir. Okay. Busy si Sir. <laughs> anyway, uh, bag- Ayan. good morning, Sir Anthony. Please introduce yourself po para marakagin na yung stamina kayo. Pa-unmute na lang po. Yan, sir. Pamensyon na lang po ang inyong name at ang inyong company kung saan kayo affiliated at ano po ang inyong expectations sa ating training. Okay, mukhang may problema si Sir Anthony sa kanyang uh, audio. Okay, balikan po natin siya later on. For the time being po, since tapos na po tayo sa ating pre-test at nakapag-health break na rin po tayo, uh, I would like to introduce to you our speaker for this morning. Okay, so ang ating pong speaker ngayong umaga ay uh, siya po ay isang nurse by profession. Nagtapos po siya ng course ng Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Master of Arts in Nursing. Siya po ay isang uh, EMT, B, CSP, CSMS at isa po ang uh, DOLE Accredited Occupational Safety and Health Practitioner, DNREMB Accredited Pollution Control Officer, Certified Internal IMS Auditor. Ang ating pong speaker, Sir Domingo Riemuso. Good morning, Sir. Hello, Sir. Uh, good morning, Sir Lucky. Good morning as well. Good morning, Pop. To our participants. Okay. So, uh, uh, in behalf of uh, RBA, Uh, I would like to uh, welcome everybody uh, to uh, your first day of uh, basic occupational uh, safety and health SO2 training. Welcome po sa lahat. Okay, so uh, I am I will be your no your uh, instructor. Uh, this morning up until 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, kasi uh, by 3 p.m., uh, another lecturer will take over uh, to discuss the last topic for this afternoon. Okay? So, uh, yung course natin, this is a uh, 40-hour uh, training course uh, which will run from September 20 up until 24. So this is good for five days, no? So uh, since you're done with your health break, uh, mamaya, uh, just some few reminders, our uh, lunch break, mm-hmm. 
will be from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Uh, one hour po yan. Uh, di natin babawasan yan kasi <laughs> that's uh, one hour lunch break. And of course, this afternoon, uh, we're going to have also our uh, your uh, afternoon break. That is good for 15 minutes. So kanina, I was told by Sir uh, Lucky that you were able to introduce yourselves already. And uh, hopefully, uh, wala nga absent <laughs> all throughout the uh, uh, five-day training course. Because if you will, uh, uh, if you cannot make it, or if you uh, will be absent for a day or more, uh, unfortunately, we cannot provide you with your certificate. Because uh, it's a requirement that you need to uh, comply. You need to complete uh, the five-day training course as a requirement before you can finally take your certification. Okay, so sumamaya, so mayroon pa palang hindi nakapag-introduce. Okay, uh, to make it fair and square for everybody. Okay, so uh, siguro mamaya, uh, before we start with our lecture, we will uh, uh, let those who haven't yet introduced themselves to uh, at least share uh, their name, uh, the company where they are currently affiliated, and siguro your expectation from this training. Uh, yan. Sige. Uh, sir Lucky, sino pa po sir ang ating participant na hindi pa nakakapag-introduce? Hello sir, good morning po. Si Sir Felix. Sir Felix, good morning po. Ayun po. Uh, ayun, sir, medyo nagkakaroon yata ng technical difficulty sa mark niya. Wala po siya sa ating link. Okay. Uh, other than Sir Felix, sir, uh, do we have any more ano, participant na hindi pa nakapag-introduce? So far, sir, na. wala na po siya na lang, sir. Ah, si Balik. Sir Felix na lang. Balikan na lang. Okay. Alright, so uh, uh, we'll just get back to you, Sir Felix, later. Sige. So, uh, a gentle reminder pala na uh, Sir Ma'am, you need to uh, make sure that your cameras are turned on. Uh, all throughout the training course except during break time or lunch break. Uh, kasi po, itong training natin, this is recorded. Ayan, uh, to set your expectations, this training is recorded. And uh, we expect that you uh, turn on your cameras all the time so that we can see you for attendance monitoring purposes. Okay? And uh, please make sure, sir, ma'am, that uh, yung full legal name ninyo uh, should be the one reflected on your Zoom screen. Yeah. So let me check if uh, everybody have entered their full legal name. Okay. Okay. Ayos. Okay. Uh, just to make sure na kayo talaga yan, no? Okay, kasi baka may maglagay diyan ano eh uh, baka may maglagay Cardo Dalisay oh nako iba yun <laughs> baka may maglagay Cardo Dalisay nako baka oh, may artista tayo dito ang participant okay <laughs> so dapat your full legal name should be the one reflected on your screen okay uh, ano pa you can take down notes uh uh, may mga sasabihin ang mga lecturer that are uh, a sort of additional information that you might want to uh, uh, jot down notes, no? So, yan. You can have your pen and paper. Uh, what else? Now, we expect everybody uh, to uh, give your full participation and of course sa mga workshop we expect that everybody will actively participate ayan may mga workshop tayo ah uh, this is not uh, 
uh, a pure lecture-based discussion. No? So we're going to have a sort of workshops in between the lecture. Okay? Para makapag-participate po yung lahat. Uh, in an event na mag-CR and if you need to be away from uh, the discussion, uh, magpaalam po ha. Mag-chat lang sa ating uh, moderator, kay Sir Lucky. So that uh, alam namin if saan kayo pupunta or if there's any emergency for attendance monitoring purposes. Uh, yan. So uh, if ever man nagkaroon kayo ng technical uh, issues uh, related to uh, Zoom, like your audio, like your... Uh, you suddenly got disconnected for some technical reason. So we hope that you uh, reach out to Sir Lucky for us to uh, do the necessary action, no? uh, the appropriate, uh, so that we can extend appropriate assistance to everybody. Okay, uh, Sir Lucky, may mga additional ka pa po bang uh, idadagdag before we start the lecture? Sir, nandito na po ang ating participant na isa, si Sir Kevin Prima, Prima Bell. Ayun, okay. Sir, Sir Kevin, good morning. Good morning mo. Ayun. Uh, sir Kevin, uh, konting ano lang sir, introduction, uh, pangalan, uh, yung company, kung saan ka po affiliated ngayon, Ako. at yung expectation mo po sa training natin. Okay. Uh, my name is Kevin Primavera. I'm from Hudson Company, po. Hudson Outdoor. And uh, expectation ko po, uh, sana po, ano, um, kayanin ko yung, ano, yung pagiging uh, safety. Kasi po ako po itinalaga lang. Uh, dati po ang warehouse, warehouse uh, staff po. So uh, ito pong binigay na to is opportunity po to. Although medyo uh, kabado ako kasi nga siyempre first time wala po akong wala po akong ano uh, uh, alam talaga sa ganitong ano. So inexpect ko po na sana ayan ko. Yun po. Yun, uh, maraming maraming salamat Sir Kevin. Okay. Uh, don't worry sir kasi uh, we are here, no? Uh, yes, the uh, the training staff, the lecturers of RBA uh, nandito kami to uh, guide you all. No? Kasi ang objective natin after this training is maging ano kayo, uh, knowledgeable in terms of your functions, in terms of your roles. Okay. And uh, what are the responsibilities no, that you need to uh, be aware of uh, being as a safety officer? So... This is a five-day training course. Mar uh, rest assured na marami kayong malalaman. Okay. Oh, thank you ulit. So, uh, Sir Kevin. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sir Lucky, balikan po kaya natin si Sir Felix. Sir Felix, nandiyan ka na po ba? And sorry, sir. Nagkamali lang ako ng tingin sa pangalan si Sir Kevin po pala. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, no, no problem, sir. Okay, sige. So, sige. Uh, without further ado, siguro we can now start with the uh, formal discussion with our first topic for today. Okay. Uh, by the way, pwede kayo mag-coffee, ha? Baka, uh, yung, baka meron ditong may mga if ever man medical conditions that you need to uh, take food from time to time. Okay, pwede yun. Uh, oh. If you can take coffee, water, pwede. Oh, wag naman sana ang daladala -dala kaldero tapos kumakain ng rice. <laughs> Para magutom yung mga, mga kasama natin na participants, no? Okay. Okay, so yung ano lang, mga uh, coffee, 
siguro bread, biscuits, or crackers, that will do. Okay. Uh, baka may participant na no, kumakain ng rice na tapos may lumpia. <laughs> All right, so sige. So let's uh, uh, proceed to the first topic. Sa saglit lang po, sir, ma'am, ha? Uh, share screen lang ako. Teka lang. Window. Uh, for a while po ha, nahanap ko lang ng ano. Yun, nahanap din. Ayos. Ayan. Okay, uh, sir, ma'am, uh, can you see my screen now? Isang malutong na uh, virtual thumbs up naman dyan, kung nakikita na. <laughs> Ayan. Yun, ayos. Uh, virtual tayo, by the way, ha? Kasi uh, alam nyo naman, we are still in a pandemic situation. And uh, uh, doing the training virtual is something that we can uh, do to protect ourselves against COVID. So that's why we shifted from face-to-face uh, -to, -face to uh, uh, online training. Okay, so because this is the mandate of the O Center of the Philippines, okay, until the pandemic situation improves. Okay, yeah. We're uh, using the online or the, the online training platform for now. Okay, bawal mo lang face-to-face. -face. Okay? So, ayan, I'm Dom. I was introduced by Sir Lucky a while ago. Uh, you can call me Dom na lang, no? Dom for short. D-O-M. Uh, D-O-M. Uh, Dirty old man. D-O-M. <laughs> okay, joke lang. Okay. So, uh, I'm Dom. I'm one of the uh, trainers of RBA. I've been with RBA since 2016 as, the, as one of the trainers for OSH. And uh, gusto ko lang i-motivate kayo, no? That uh, ang pagiging safety officer is very in demand nowadays. And uh, being a safety officer is a fulfilling job, no? Okay, so kung ang mga nurses uh, ay tinatawag na angel of the sick room, uh, tayo namang mga safety officers, we are the warriors of our workplace. Uh, because we protect our employees against accidents, Injuries and illnesses. Okay. Uh, sabi nga sa meme, sa FB, di ba? Uh, pag safety officer ka, 1,000 points ka sa langit. <laughs> uh, why? Because our job is to protect and safeguard the safety of our people, uh, of our employees. No? Making sure that our workplace is uh, safe and helpful for everybody. Kaya sabi sa meme, uh, 1000 points ka sa langit <laughs> if you are a safety officer. Okay. And besides safety officer is uh, in demand nowadays because of the uh, new Oslo, the new occupational safety and health law that we're going to discuss later on. And ang pagiging SO is marami kang pwedeng puntahan, no? Uh, someday, uh, you might want to uh, become an OS trainer, just like us. Someday, you might want to specialize in the field of uh, food safety. 
Yung iba naman nag specialize in the field of uh, radiation safety. You can also try to become an OS trainer just like us. Okay. Maging safety supervisor, safety manager in the future. Just like us, malaki yung chances ninyo, no? To become uh, safety consultants also someday. Uh, once you uh, satisfied all the requirements needed to become an OSH consultant someday, just like us. Ayan. So, uh, this is a very fulfilling job. Uh, kaya, itong training ninyo, uh, I'm pretty sure this is not, hindi to tapon, no? Uh, because this is something na magagamit ninyo in the near future. Lalo na sa mga, uh, most especially to those who are aspiring to become safety officer someday. This is a very uh, in-demand, fulfilling, and uh, at the same time, profitable job. Ayan. But sana maging, ad maging advocacy natin uh, in the very first place is hindi lang about profit, but of course, uh, how to protect our workplace against uh, accidents. So again, I would I would like to welcome you all sa ating training. So I'll start my lecture with the introduction to OSH. Okay. By the way, pag naririnig nyo yung uh, acronym na OSH, uh, O-S-H, yan. Uh, that stands for Occupational Safety and Health. Yan. OSH. Uh, that's what OSH stands for, no? Occupational Safety and Health. So, so this is going to be the uh, uh, this is going to be our program timeline for the first topic. Uh, th these are the uh, subtopics that we're going to uh, go over. Okay, from element number one down to element number four. Okay, alamin natin ano ba yung situation ng safety sa Pilipinas, uh, locally and abroad, no? And for element number two, we will discuss your uh, roles and responsibilities as a safety officer. Okay, uh, sino dito nakakaalam? Ano ba ang role ng isang safety officer? Ah, sorry, balik na din kong question ko. Okay. Sino dito nakakaalam? Ano ba ang motto ng safety? Uh, sino? Uh, any volunteer? Uh, sige, chat kayo ha. Uh, let, let's make this training interactive, no? Ano sa tingin niyo ang motto ng safety? Okay, ah, sige, any volunteer? Ah, chat lang kayo ha. Babasahin ko yung chat niyo. Ano ang motto ng safety sa inyong palagay? Okay, sabi ni uh, Sir Anthony to protect uh, to prevent accidents. So yan, mga ano yan, no? Mga Objectives, goals ng safety. Correct? Pero yung moto, uh, sino ang nakakaalam ng moto ng safety? Ayan, safety first. Sabi ni Sir John. Okay, to prevent accidents, save lives. Okay. Okay. Hindi nyo alam yung moto ng safety? Uh, sirit na? <laughs> okay. Uh, ang moto daw ng safety ay... Basta safety officer, sweet lover. <laughs> tama, tama ba? Di, joke lang ha, joke lang. Okay. <laughs> Hindi yun ha. <laughs> Sabi kasi nung isang participant dati, basta safety officer, sweet lover. Hindi po. Dati ano yan, uh, safety is a priority. No? But now, uh, we shifted to uh, safety is everybody's responsibility. That's correct, no? Tama, uh, we, we need to put priority on safety. No? But it, it is also uh, crucial that everybody should know that safety is 
everybody's responsibility. Hindi lang yan responsibility ng safety officer, no? Kasi ang mindset ng iba, or kit safety officer ako, ako nang gagawa ng lahat mali yun. Uh, that's the, uh, that is something like a misconception, no? Uh, kasi pag sinabing safety, it's not just the safety officer responsible for it. Uh, safety is everybody's responsibility. The top management, the managers, the supervisors, the uh, even the employees themselves. Uh, meron silang responsibility for safety. Okay. Uh, mamaya, i-discuss din natin yung hierarchy, uh, element number three, and unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. O, yan, okay? Ayan. Si ano, si uh, Bureau of Labor natin, uh, si Dole, no? Oh. May tinatawag tayong Bureau of Labor and Employment Statistics, no? Uh, this is the bureau that is attached to Dole, no? Sila yung responsible bureau for conducting surveys, conducting uh, statistic, uh, st statistical uh, studies related to employment, re related to accidents. Uh, yung ginawa nilang study sometime in January 2018, ito yung lumabas. Okay, more than 60% of the population are 15 years old. And over. So, 60% pala ng ating uh, labor force ay uh, 15 years old and above. Uh, three years ago, umabot na pala ng 44.1 million yung ating total workforce, no? total labor force. Uh, that's how uh, high the number is ng ating labor force. 44 point million. That was way back in 2018. Mas marami daw yung lalaki kaysa sa babae. 61.7% males and 38.3% females. Kaya yung mga yung mga male na mga employed, uh, wag kayong magalala yung mga wala pang jowa. <laughs> kasi, kasi mas marami kayo <laughs> kaysa sa mga babae. Uh, kaya uh, wag magalala. Okay. E joke lang ha. Okay. Employment situation in the Philippines. Ayan. Uh, ito, uh, breakdown ng ano, no, age range, no? Ang mas marami dyan is 25 to 34 years old. Uh, that, uh, that accounts for a total of 26.6%, followed by 35 to 44 and 45 to 54 year old. Yung mga matatanda na, mas konti yung percentage nila. No? As compared to uh, the um, mid-range mid or mid-age groups. Okay, mas marami daw ang employed sa services sector. Yan. 55.9%. Uh, ano ba tong mga services sector na to? Mga call center companies, mga recruitment firms, agencies, travel agencies, ano pa, mga uh, servicing companies. O yan. Yan ang mga tinatawag natin ng mga services sector. Uh, ito yung mga companies that offer services as the nature of their job. Okay? Followed by 26.0% agriculture. Marami din pala sa agriculture, no? Uh, pag sinabi naman agriculture, ano yan? Mga livestock, mga... Uh, nag-aalaga ng mga kasama na dyan. Mga poultry. 
itatanim. No? Uh, 18.1% industry sector. Ano tong industry na to? Industry sector. Uh, ito na yung mga manufacturing, uh, power plant operations, mining. Uh, ano pa bang sample ng industry? Uh, yun. Uh, those are the companies that belong to industry sector. Okay. Base naman sa sinagawang pag-aaral ng uh, ILO, uh, this is the International Labor Organization. No? Uh, I am speaking for international data, ha? Kasi pag sinabing International Labor Organization, ang focus ng kanilang study, it's the uh, wor worldwide, no? Worldwide. It's not just the uh, local, no? But the, uh, ang focus ng kanilang study is the uh, worldwide statistics in terms of OSH and accidents. Okay, sabi ng ILO, every year 2.78 million workers die from occupational accidents and work-related diseases. Oh, imagine, no? That's how alarming the situation is. Every year, 2.78 million workers die dahil daw sa mga work-related accidents and uh, diseases. Okay, 2.4 million are disease-related. Pag sinabing disease-related, ito yung mga sakit na nakukuha sa trabaho. No? Uh, tuberculosis, pneumonia, uh, uh, anemia, yan. Idagdag na natin, COVID. No? 374 million workers suffer from non-fatal occupational accidents. Pag sinabi natin non-fatal, uh, non-serious injury. Pag sinabing non-fatal, uh, I am pertaining to minor injuries only. Uh, that's non-fatal. Uh, pag sinabi naman fatal, uh, something that results to serious injury or death. Uh, namatay. That is fatal. Pag non-fatal, uh, that refers to the minor injuries. Nagasgasan, nagkabukol, ano pa ba? Uh, mild fracture, mga ganun. No? Uh, yan ang ating statistical data dito. Uh, sa Pilipinas, ito yung mga common na uh, mga injuries. Uh, superficial injuries or open wounds. Uh, ito yung mga ano, mga sugat, no? laceration, uh, nahiwa, or incision. No? Uh, pag sinabing incision, walang, walang, irregular, uh, walang irregular edges yung pagkakahiwa. Pero pag sinabing laceration, Ito yung pag iniwa medyo irregular yung mga yung buka ng sugat. No? Ano pa ba yung mga superficial? Natusok, punctured wound, uh, abrasion, nagasgas. O oh, yan, ang tawag dyan mga superficial injuries, open wounds. Uh, accounting to 56.2%. Imagine no? Ganun, para, ganun pala kala, karami, no? More than half of the accidents are associated to superficial injuries. 12.6%, ano yon Dislocation, sprain, strain. Okay, pag sinabing sprain, in medical, pag sinabing sprain, uh, nagkaroon ng... Nagkaroon ng ano... Uh, damage or na extend yung tinatawag natin na tendon no 
Yung tendon, yun yung nagko-connect sa muscle at sa bone. Yun yung structure na nagko-connect sa muscle at sa bone. O, pag na-stretch yun, naputol, ang tawag doon sprain. O, yung strain naman, ang damage naman yan sa ligament. O, yung ligament naman, ito yung structure na nagko-connect from one bone to another bone. O, dalawang buto, pinagko-connect niya. Ang tawag doon ligament. Pag naputol yung ligament natin, na-stretch, ang tawag naman doon strain. Uh, yan ang pinagkakaiba in medical, no? Sprain at strain. Uh, sprain, tendon, strain, ligament. Uh, yun ang mga bony structures na affected when it comes to sprain and strain. Okay, 8.8% fracture, burns, corrosion, scald, and frostbite. 8.4%. Foreign, foreign body in the eye, 6.2%. Ito yung mga... Ano, no? ah, pasintabi po sa picture. Ah. Medyo maselan, kagaya nung nasa picture sa ibaba. O, yan ang mga common sa Pilipinas. No? Followed by... Yan, top 3, most injured. Ano ba? Uh, wrist and hand. Ah, ito yung... Parte ng ating katawan that are mostly injured. No? Wrist and kamay. Accounting to 39.2% from the total accidents. Common daw yan sa mga manufacturing no? and other technical activities. Pangalawa is Lower extremities. Pag sinabing lower extremities, we are pertaining to the uh, uh, the feet, the leg. Okay? Yung ating thigh, no? Uh, yung thigh, yung leg, yung feet, or foot. Uh, that, uh, generally, ang tawag dyan, the lower extremity. Ayan. Uh, accounting to 19.7%. Uh, Komo naman daw yan sa mga yun. Uh, establishments engaged in water supply, sewerage, waste management, and remediation activities. Okay, pangatlo, shoulder. Yan. So, Ilang percent ba to? 35.6 common daw sa communication industry. Yan. Shoulders. Kasi di ba yung mga nagkakabit ng mga internet connection, no? O, kailangan nilang <laughs> kailangan nilang mag-stretch ng katawan, mag-overreach. No? And most commonly, ang ginagamit nila mga upper upper extremity, di ba? Kaya sumasakit sa kanila yung it's either likod or the shoulder, no? That is 16.7% from the total accidents. Shoulder, pangatlo, no? So again, number one is yung uh, wrist and hand followed by lower extremities and third, the shoulders. Okay, so dito naman tayo, leading cause of occupational injuries. Stepping on, striking against, or stri struck by objects. Ito yung mga types ng accidents, by the way. No? Pag sinabing stepping on, uh, nakaapa ka sa pako, alimbawa. No? Nakaapa ka sa any protruding material on the ground. Like pako. Uh, pag sinabi naman strike against, ibig sabihin yan, yung katawan mo tumama sa isang object. Alimbawa, tinula ka ng, tinula ka ng kasamahan mo. Eventually, yung katawan mo tumama dun sa wall, no? Ang tawag doon yung strike against the wall. O, yung katawan mo, yung tumama sa wall, strike against. Pag sinabi naman struck by, that's the other way around. No? 
Pag sinabing struck by, yung object naman, yung tumama sa iyo. Okay na Alimbawa, binato ka ng martilyo sa ulo. O, yung martilyo tumama sa ulo mo. You were struck by an object. O, yun ang difference ng stri strike against and struck by. Struck by, ikaw yung tumama. Ay, sorry. Struck against, ikaw yung tumama. Struck by, yung object ang tumama sa iyo. Okay. So that accounts for uh, 31.8%. Oh, commonly nangyayari daw sa agriculture, forestry, fishing, yan. Kasi di ba yung mga loggers, no? Mga naglalaging. Oh, malay mo pag chainsaw nung puno, tumama yung puno sa katawan niya. Oh, ang tawag doon is struck struck by Uh, followed by coat in or between objects at 22.7%. Uh, pag sinabi pong coat in, ito yung mga naipit ka sa mga makina. No? Uh, accidentally, yung kamay mo, accidentally, napahawa ka sa mga rotating object ng makina. No? Tapos bigla na lang yung kamay mo kinain sa loob, no? Ang tawag diyan coat in accident. Halimbawa naman dalawang roller na umiikot sa makina. Accidentally na napasok yung kamay mo sa, sa dalawang roller, no? Na umiikot. Ang ang tawag naman doon coat in between. Coat in between two rollers. Ayun. Pag Pag ikaw naman ay na ipit sa makina, ang tawag naman doon is spot in between. Uh, something na due to, real, due to uh, uh, rotating object. No? Uh, yan ang difference ng uh, coat in at ng uh, coat in between, by the way. Okay. Pag nahuli ka ni misis mo, na linike mo yung FB ni iba na Alawi, ang, ang tawag naman doon, quote in the act. <laughs> Natawa si mamo. Okay. Pinapatawa ko lang kayo kasi ang siseryoso nyo eh. <laughs> okay. Ah, kaya po huwag nyong ilalike yung FB ni ano ha? iba na Alawi kasi mahuli kayo ng mga asawa ninyo. Ah, ang tawag doon, quote in the act. Magkakaroon ka ng sarili mong injury due to struck by <laughs> struck by accident. Bubugbugin ka ng asawa mo. Okay. Okay, next. Exposure to contact exposure to or contact with electrical current. Ayan. So, alam mo naman mga Pinoy, di ba? Uh, nakakita ng ano? Nakakita ng outlet. Okay. Testingin ko nga kung malakas ang bultay nito. Hawa ka na. Matesting nga kung <laughs> nung hinawa ka na kuryente. O oh, yun. Ay, malakas pala. <laughs> no? uh, so, wag nating ano ha. Uh, always ano, uh, consider electricity as a hazard. Whether it's a low voltage or high voltage, we should always consider electricity as a hazard. Never ever attempt to uh, touch anything that is live, uh, that is uh, energized. No? Because that is something that can compromise your safety. Oh, Kaya tingnan nyo, maraming na-accident, no? 1.5%. So, sobrang dami. Okay. Ano ba yung mga agents that contribute to injuries? Uh, pag sinabi natin agent, I am referring to uh, the, uh, the the 5M, 5Ms. Uh, ano ba ang meaning ng 5Ms? Okay. 
Sabi nung isang participant, ano yan, sir? Ah, matandang mayama na madaling mamatay na may mamamana. <laughs> okay, iba yun, ha? Ah, ang, ang meaning ng 5Ms, ano yan? Ah, number one, material. No? Ang aksidente ay pwedeng mangyari because of exposure to a raw material. No? Alimbawa, chemical, no? When you uh, come in contact with a chemical, you might suffer from burn. Diba? Uh, material, number one. Number two, ano pa yung second M? Machine. No? Pwede tayong maputulan ng kamay, pwede tayong ma, uh, mabalian because of machines. Okay? Material, machine. Uh, ano pa yung third M? Okay, mother nature or the environment, no? Mother nature or the environment. Yung yung physical working environment itself can lead to illness. Alimbawa, sobrang init ng panahon, no? Oh, that is something that can lead to heat stroke, di ba? Heat stroke. Oh, pwede kang ma-heat stroke. So, environment is a factor, no? Okay, number four. Ano yung pang-apat na M? Man. Okay, huwag niyong kalimutan na man. Tayo mismo. Yung tao mismo, uh, due to unsafe acts that we commit, uh, that is something that can pre predispose us to accident. Yung mga maling gawain ng tao is something that can predispose us to accident. Man. Okay. At yung panglima is method. Method. No? Uh, meron tayong mga standard operating procedures no, na tinatawag SOPs. Mga mechanism of procedures, standard operating procedures. Uh, if, if we fail to uh, follow what these rules are, uh, if you fail to comply, okay, this is something that can also lead to injury. Oh, nakalagay sa SOP. Where PPE, oh, ginawa mo, hindi ka nag-comply, pumasok ka, oh, na natapunan ka ng martilyo sa ulo. Oh, nagka nagkaroon ka ng injury. Bakit? Kasi hindi ka nag-comply sa method sa standard operating procedure. Okay? So ulitin ko yung 5Ms na agents ha. Material. Uh, first is material followed by uh, machines. Number three, the mother nature. Mother nature or also known as the environment. Uh, number four is the uh, the man. The people or the men. No? And number five is the method. Oh, yan ang mga agents no, na tinatawag natin. Okay, sa, sa manufacturing, sa construction, entertainment and recreation, ito. Oh, yan ang mga percentage nila. Uh, due to machines and equipment. Uh, example, yung nasa picture. No? Okay, followed by materials and objects, uh, 25.7%, uh, which are common in mining and quarrying. O oh, yan, nagtrabaho din ako sa mining before, uh, sometime in 2014. Yan. Education, grabe no? Kahit pala sa akadim, nagkakaroon din ng aksidente. No? Sa schools, no? 36.5% uh, for water supply, sewerage, what waste management and remediation activities. Uh, hand tools. Uh, ano tong mga hand tools na to? Yung mga ginagamit natin like uh, hand drill, ano pa bang mga hand tools? Polisher, chainsaw, uh, jackhammer, ano pang mga ano natin? Grinder, o oh, yan, mga hand tools ang tawag dyan. Okay, uh, ang tawag natin dyan is uh, hand tools. Alright? 
Uh, example, yung hand drill, no? Uh, hindi mo nalagay properly yung drill bit. No? Yung parang gano'n, no? Hindi mo nalagay properly yung drill bit. Nang pagbarena mo, biglang tumalsik yung drill bit, tinamaan ka sa ulo, tinamaan ka sa mata. O, yan ang mga example ng mga accidents related to hand tools. Uh, alibawa, yung ano, yung yung sa yung sa ano, sa grinder, no? Yung yung disk. O, mali yung paggamit mo, biglang nagbitak. Ayun, tinamaan ka sa muka. O, yan mga ganun na aksidente, no? Uh, 19.5%. Oh, ito. Uh, sa illness naman tayo. Ano daw yung top na illness among workers according to the study conducted by the Bureau of Labor and Employment Statistics? Oh, in 2015, the top illness was ano, back pain. O, oh, yan. Kaya Kaya sabi doon sa meme sa FB no. Nung high school pa daw tayo, ang mga binibili natin mga pabango no. Mga pabango. Pero daw nung tumatanda na daw tayo, ang binibili na natin, alam niyo na kung ano? <laughs> Pau. <laughs> Pau di arco o kaya ano, ano yung yung mentholated na ano? Oh, ayan. Uh, ointment no. Liniment. Okay, so, yan. Yan na daw ang binibili natin habang tumatanda tayo. Part ng ano, adulting. Okay. So, minsan, Bix. Minsan, Katingko. No? Uh, Katingko is life. <laughs> uh, agree ba kayo? No? Pag tumatanda na tayo, more on na tayo. No? Back pain is real. Alam nyo ba ng back pain that is also related to the work we do? Uh, kasi it is something related to ergonomics. Uh, it is something related to your uh, positioning while at work. It's either you do uh, prolonged sitting, prolonged standing, awkward posturing that contributes to back pain. Okay, mamaya... As we go along with our discussion, ituturo, ituturo yun sa inyo, no? yung ergonomics. Back pain. O, ito naman, in 2015, okay, 11.5% essential hypertension. Yan. Uh, sir, ano bang ibig sabihin ng essential? Uh, pag sinabing essential, that is something related to stress. Uh, something that is related to psychosocial, no? Something related to the job that you do. Uh, yan ang tinatawag na essential, no? Okay. So, essential hypertension. Something related to chemicals. Something related to the work or workload that you do. No? Essential. Ibig sabihin, may external factor, no? May external factor that contributes to hypertension. Halimbawa, lagi kang ini-stress ng boss mo. <laughs> no? Oh. Oh, ini-stress ka ng boss mo. Oh, sabi ng isang participant dati, uh, Sir, totoo yan na yung boss ko lagi akong ini-stress. Uh, sabi niya, kaya nga sir, ang tawag ko dun, ano eh, hindi boss eh. Uh, ang tawag ko dun, hazard. Sabi niya. <laughs> Hazard daw ang tawag niya sa boss niya. Kasi daw yung yung definition ng hazard kasi is something that can lead to injury or illness. Diba? O, sabi niya, tamang-tama sir, yung boss ko talaga. Ano yun? Something that can lead to illness and injury. O, kasi lagi akong ini-stress. Kaya hazard daw ang tawag niya. <laughs> okay, so what else? Neck and shoulder pain, 11.4%. Other work-related musculoskeletal diseases. Ano ba to? Yung mga shoulder pain, uh, low back pain, ano pa? Shoulder pain, neck, neck pain, yan mga ano yan? Musculoskeletal diseases. Excuse me. 
Asthma, no? Pati asthma. Uh, kasi yung mga, may mga chemicals, may mga airborne contaminants that can trigger asthma in the workplace. Kagaya ng mga dust, no? Dust. Mga fumes, mga mists. Vapor, no? That once you get exposed to this airborne contaminants, that can trigger the occurrence of asthma. Ayan. Kaya di ba, pag nagtrabaho kayo, may tinatawag tayong uh, fit work certification. I-discuss ko yan sa inyo if not tomorrow on the fourth day. Ayan. According to the World Health Organization, no, two two million work-related deaths per year due to occupational diseases. Grabe no, alarming, masado. We are not just talking about hundreds, but millions of people die due to occupational diseases. 386,000 deaths each year from exposure to airborne particulates. Yan. Oh, yan. Pag sinabing COPD, ano yan? In medical, uh, cons- uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. O oh, yan ang COPD. Oh, maraming causes niyan. Uh, number one cause niyan is cigarette smoking, no? COPD. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Ang pneumoconiosis naman that is caused by asbestos, no? Okay. Pag naka-inhale ka ng mga fiber-like substance coming from asbestos, okay, it will uh, enter your body through your uh, respiratory system and then it will affect the elasticity of your lungs, no? To expound and at the same time to uh, bring back your ano yung size ng lungs to normal no so parang mahihirapan ka huminga pag may COPD ka nagkakaroon ka ng barrel chest yung itsura ng chest mo parang lumulobo no gumagano no o, yan ang COPD pag pneumoconiosis naman due to asbestos Okay, 152,000 deaths per year no? from carcinogens in the workplace. Pag sinabing car- carcinogen, ito yung mga substances that can uh, lead to cancer. No? Uh, carcinogens, no? substances that can uh, lead to cancer. Okay, so yan. So, yun ang ating mga ano no mga ginawang pag-aaral locally and internationally o, kaya kaya it's very uh, crucial that employees must be trained about the importance of promoting occupational safety and health in the workplace okay kaya This is the reason why the uh, roles of a safety officer should be discussed. No? This is the reason why the uh, appointment of a safety officer is important in the workplace. Uh, kinakailangan, there has to be somebody in the workplace that will help the top management Okay. Uh, promote or drive safety consciousness to the people in the workplace. No? O, tayo yun. O, dito ngayon papasok yung role natin. No? This is where our roles come in no? as a safety officer. Okay. O, this is how critical our position is. Uh, our profession as a safety officer. So pag-usapan natin ano ba ang mga role ng isang SO. Okay, ano bang ginagawa ng isang safety officer? O sige, uh, any idea guys? Okay, so 
Uh, let's make this discussion interactive, no? Para hindi kayo ma-board. Uh, though may mga workshop kayong gagawin <laughs> later or tomorrow, no? Okay, sa, sa, sa inyong sariling palagay, uh, sa inyong sariling opinion, what do you think the responsibilities are or the roles that a safety officer assumes in the workplace? Ano lang? Uh, sariling opinion lang. Sige, uh, can you share yung mga opinions ninyo? Ano bang ginagawa ng isang SO? Sa, sa, sa inyong sariling palagay. Uh, bago natin i-discuss mamaya yung mga roles. Uh, you may want to chat, no? Chat your answers. Uh, sige, I'll give you uh, time. Okay, ano nakalagay dito? Constantly reminding the employees about... Yan, okay. Thank you. From uh, total uh, bulk preparation. Yan, sige. Constantly reminding the employees about the safety protocols of the company. Tama yan. No? Enforcement. Uh, enforcement. Uh, reiteration ng protocols. Kasi yung mga employees minsan, they tend to forget what the protocols were. No? So it's our job to uh, keep them reminded no? what their responsibilities are and what are the protocols in the company that they need to follow. O, yun. Thank you, sir. Okay, so i-discuss pa natin. Ano pa ba? Okay, so, uh, from METS Logistics Inc., O yun, uh, malayo pa palang pinanggalingan niya na sir, no? From Cebu, o yun. Spot potential hazards, o yun, tama. Uh, kasi as a safety officer, gumagawa tayo ng uh, inspection, no? So that we can proactively assess the hazards in our workplace. And at the same time, for us to uh, instigate correction at the soonest. No? So that so that these hazards will no longer turn into an accident. Okay? Correct? O, nag spot ng hazards. Ano pa? Sa tingin ninyo ang ginagawa ng isang SO. O, let's hear it from the other participants. Ano ba ang ginagawa ng isang uh, safety officer sa company? Sa tingin ninyo. There's no wrong, there's no right answers. Ano lang to? Sharing lang tayo ng, ano, uh, sharing lang tayo ng thoughts, ng opinions. Ayan, sige. Wala na? Okay, so mukhang nahihiya yung iba. Ah, ito, meron pa. Pahabol from Sir Donato. No? Keeping, keeping safe for every worker. So, yun, ayos. Okay, uh, yan, yan ang number one ano natin, uh, role, no? Making sure that everybody is safe in the performance of their duties and responsibilities. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat mga sir, ma'am sa inyong sharing. So ngayon, let's discuss uh, let's discuss what the roles are that the uh, safety officer assumes in the workplace. Ano nga ba ang definition ng isang safety officer? Okay. So, so bago, bago ang lahat uh, according to uh, according to uh, Rule 1030 of Dolly O standard, no? Uh, Dinefine nila ang SO. Uh, ang, ang safety officer is also known as your safety man. And and pag sinabi natin na safety officer or the safety man, we are pertaining to the position itself, no? Okay, we, we are talking about the position, no? Yan. So, ang, ang safety officer, it can be hired or the top management may appoint somebody, an existing employee, to function as a safety officer. So pwede kayong ano ha, mag, it can be appointed, no? It can be appointed 
or ginagawa talaga in common, they hire uh, a person to fill in the position, uh, to function as a safety officer. Another definition, this is the person engaged in the prevention of accidents, incidents, and events that harm people, property, or the environment. Okay, so, so tama si Sir Donato kanina, no? Sabi niya, to make sure that everybody is safe no? in the performance of the employee's duties and responsibilities. So tayo ang may responsibility nun, no? Okay. Safety officer is the one who applies the expertise uh, gained from a study of safety sciences, principles, and practices, and from professional safety experiences. Uh, one time, my participant nagtanong, Sir, sabi mo, safety officer is also known as the safety man. Correct. Sabi niya, sir, paano kung babae ang safety officer? Ano ang tawag? <laughs> Sabi niya, ang tawag ba sir, safety woman? Sabi ko, kasi sir, ang, ang safety officer, it's the position, no? Okay. Babae ka man, lalaki ka man, whatever your gender is, the position itself it's, is called the safety officer or the safety man. O, wala tayong safety woman, ha? <laughs> ano lang, ang, ang term lang na ginamit sa Rule 1030 ng Dolly O Standard, safety officer or the safety man. So whatever your gender is, or, or regardless of your gender, the position itself is called safety officer and, and or safety man. And walang safety woman. Oh, yan. Sabi naman nung isang participant, Sir, paano kung Becky? May, an ano ba ang tawag dyan? Safety Becky? <laughs> Sabi ko, walang ganun. Uh, ang tawag lang dyan is safety man or safety officer. That's the position identified under Rule 1030. Okay? okay. Nagkakadiferensya na lang yan sa mga job title sa company. Uh, kasi sa ibang mga companies, ang ginagamit na job title, safety, safety engineer, uh, Safety specialist, yun yung mga job title na nakikita ninyo sa job street or whatever uh, uh, mga, mga hiring companies. Yan. Uh, LinkedIn, no? That's the job title na sinet ng company for that position. But the position itself, it's the safety man or the safety officer. O, yan. Marami kasing nalilito dyan eh. Sir, bakit sa Rule 1030, safety man ang sinasabi? Tapos may nabasa akong company ang hire nila. Uh, safety specialist. Safety coordinator. Ayun. Nagkaiba lang dahil yun yung set, sinet ng company na job title for that position. Pero ang position na tinutukoy natin is the safety officer or the safety man. So may... Iba yung term na sinet ng company, pero yung roles na ginagampanan, parehas lang as a safety officer. Kasi yung safety officer is the position, samantala yung safety specialist, safety engineer, yun naman yung job title lang. Okay? So yun ang pinagkakaiba ng dalawa. So, so what are the roles of a safety officer? Okay. Control human performance, machine performance, and physical environment. Okay, so pag sinabi natin control, ang focus natin, it's more on the prevention and the correction of unsafe conditions and actions. Okay. I discuss ko yan later on. No? Uh, that's, that is included in the, uh, in the last Part of my topic this morning. Ano ang difference ng unsafe acts, unsafe conditions? Didiscuss natin yan mamaya. 
Okay, market safety as a management responsibility. Ang role natin po as a safety officer, ideally dapat directly reporting tayo sa president or to whoever is the highest ranking official of the company. Ang safety officer must be directly reporting to that top management representative. Ideally, ha? So, pero nagkakadiferensya yan sa mga hierarchy, no? Or organizational structure ng company. Sa safety officer, directly reporting to the safety manager. May mga safety officer that is directly reporting to the project manager. So, depending on the hierarchy, no? the organizational structure of the company. But sinasabi sa Rule 1030 of the Dole O Standard, ideally, ang safety officer must be directly reporting to whoever is the uh, highest ranking official of the company. May it be the president, the vice president, or any authorized representative of the company. Okay? So, kung baga, ang safety officer, you are the uh, representative of the top management. Okay. In the execution ng safety role. Kasi po, ang number one na may primary responsibility sa safety, top management, sa bawat empleyado. E, alam nyo naman, si top management, busy yan. Ang mga, <laughs> ang mga ginagawa niyan, more on mga strategic planning, uh, budget forecasting, marketing strategies, hindi na kayang gampana ni top management ang pagiging safety. O, kaya nag appoint sila ng safety officer to uh, assume the job. Okay, kaya ang SO, tinatawag yan na management representative. Uh, to function or to execute the roles of a safety officer. Okay? O, tayo ang tumutulong sa top management magsagawa ng mga policies, uh, procedures, yan. and mga standard operating procedures, mga dole mandated policies, like mga drug-free workplace policy, family uh, welfare policy, Uh, TB prevention and control policy. Uh, lahat ng mga mandated policies ng DOLE. Uh, tayo yung uh, appointed person or hired person that would help the top management comply with the DOLE mandated policies. So, yan ang ginagawa natin. Okay, paano ba maging SO? Okay na, kailangan trained ka muna. Sa Pilipinas, mamaya i-discuss ko yung section 14. Ano ba yung mga qualifications to become SO1, SO2, SO3, and SO4? Kasi dahil sa bagong batas natin ngayon, ang safety officers ay nahahati na sa apat na categories. SO1, Safety Officer 2, SO3, Safety Officer 4. Kayo po, mga Sir Ma'am, pag nagka-graduate kayo dito sa Bosch SO2, 40-hour training, automatic, you are now qualified as a SO2, Safety Officer 2. O, oh, yun, no? Kaya sana, walang absent. Sana makumpleto natin yung ating uh, training. Uh, Five-day training course. Okay, educated. Okay, kinakailangan. Actually, ang pagiging SO, wala tayong discrimination when it comes to educational attainment. No? Alam nyo ba, Sir Ma'am? Even a high school graduate. Uh, gusto ko kayong i-motivate, Wala tayong discrimination when it comes to educational attainment. Even a high school graduate can function as a safety officer. 
as long as he is trained or as long as he is a graduate of the uh, required trainings. Yeah. In fact, meron nga tayong uh, safety consultant sa Pilipinas na high school graduate. O imagine, uh, imagine yung extra mile, yung effort na ginugol niya, no? A high school graduate pero naging OSH consultant. Uh, ganun ang kagandahan sa safety, no? We do not discriminate uh, people in terms of educational attainment. Yan. Yun nga lang, nagkakaiba-iba lang. Nag na ang nagiging challenge lang is sa hiring. Kasi yung mga kumpanya, nagsiset din niya ng expectations, eh. nagsiset din niya ng qualifications. Kinakailangan engineering graduate, kinakailangan PRC license, oh, doon do lang yung challenge. No? Kinakailangan may at least five years working experience as a safety officer, ganun. Yun ang, yung kasi yung power, no? yun yung authority ng companies, they have their own right to set the standards, the qualifications. But pagdating sa training, we do not discriminate people regardless of their educational attainment. No? Pwede. High school graduate, mag-training ka ng Bosch SO2, automatic SO2 ka rin. Ayan. So that's how good safety job is. No? Wala tayong discrimination. Okay, ano pang sinasabi dito? With fundamental knowledge on physical, chemical, biological, and behavioral sciences. Alam nyo ba guys? May mga engineers na hindi na nag-practice ng engineering. Although mga ano sila, mga board passer sila, mas nagustuhan nila yung safety. Uh, yung mga construction safety officer, malaking advantage kapag civil engineer ka. No? Kapag magpa-practice ka naman ng industrial, malaking advantage kung... Ano ka, graduate ka ng industrial engineering or mechanical engineering, electrical. Napakalaking advantage because because you have the technical know-how of the operations. No? Just like us, I'm a nurse and emergency medical technician. Ako naman, medyo may edge ako when it comes to medical. The, the medical part of OSH, no? O, yan. So, kanya-kanyang specialization, no? So, the more the knowledge that you know, the more the more the uh, learning that you have, no? Mas advantageous if you will function as a safety officer. At syempre, dapat bilang isang safety officer, may alam ka sa batas. Uh, any, uh, Mga, mga laws uh, related to occupational safety and health. Uh, kasi po, paano ka makakapag-function as a safety officer if in the first place you don't know what the rules are? So, yan ang tip na may, may, may bibigay ko sa inyo. No? Uh, kung gusto ninyo maging isang competent na safety officer, keep on Training, keep on reading. Oh, kasi the more the knowledge that you have, okay, the more na skilled ka, the more na competent ka, dun, oh, pag-aagawan ka ng mga companies. <laughs> that makes you uh, indispensable. no? That makes yourself marketable. no? Ayan. So, dun tayo nagkakadip. Yun ang... Yun ang ano, yun ang uh, challenge dito. Uh, parang ano yan, parang iPhone yan. Parang iPhone. Uh, from time to time, nagkakaroon ng iPhone 10, iPhone 11, iPhone 12. Uh, mayroon na nga iPhone 13. So parang tayo yan, parang isang safety officer. Huwag, huwag kang titigil mag-aaral. Uh, huwag kang titigil, uh, huwag, mong, huwag mong titigilan ni challenge yung sarili mo. Uh, dapat continuous ang learning. Kasi the more na mas marami kang skill, mas marami kang alam, uh, para kang iPhone 13. 
ikaw ang gustong bilhin ng mga kumpanya because of the knowledge and the technical know-how that you have as a safety officer. Okay? So, yan ang uh, important thing that I want you to know about this job. Okay, next. Okay, scope and functions of a safety officer. Anticipate, identify, evaluate hazardous conditions and practices. Pag sinabing mga hazardous conditions, ito yung mga uh, unsafe conditions that we see in the workplace. Uh, may mga fumes, uh, poor housekeeping, no? ano pa, uh, confined space, yung mga mga equipment, mga machines, walang machine guard. Okay, ano pa, yung accumulation ng dust, oh, yan, mga hazardous conditions yan. No? Storage ng mga toxic chemicals, oh, yan, mga hazardous conditions yan. No? So tayo yung nag assess uh, tayo yung gumagawa ng controls in order to safeguard our employees from these hazardous conditions. So, ito yung mga ginagawa natin. Gumagawa tayo ng mga SOPs, HIRAC. Meron kayong workshop dito about HIRAC. Gagawin nyo yan. Nagre-review tayo ng mga operational processes. Gumagawa tayo ng mga study and surveys. Everything. Yan ang ginagawa ng isang SO. Okay? So pag may nakita kang mga hazard... Uh, tayo rin yung nagpaplano. Ano ba yung mga appropriate na control na dapat natin i-implement to address these hazards? Ano ba yung gagawin natin na action plan to make sure that these hazards are abated? No? To make sure that these hazards are controlled or reduced if cannot be eliminated. Uh, implement, administer, and advise others on hazard control and hazard control programs. So, nakikipag-coordinate tayo sa mga foreman, mga supervisor, top management, para sa pag-come uh, up uh, ng mga programa na kinakailangan ng company. Halimbawa, COVID. O, tayo yung nagpo-propose sa uh, top management, sir. Mukhang kinakailangan natin mag-organize ng uh, COVID vaccination program in order to safeguard our employees against the deadly Delta variant. Mga ganun, no? So, so ikaw yung mag, magpo-formulate, magka-come up ng program depending on the needs of your operations. Sir, Noong 2020, dumami po yung uh, flu cases natin from 50% naging 70%. So that's why, sir, I uh, propose that we need to formulate a flu vaccination program by next year. So in that way, that could help minimize or uh, reduce the cases of flu in our company. O, yan. yan ang ginagawa natin, no? Nag-iisip tayo ng mga programa uh, that is something that could uh, help address uh, whatever injuries or illnesses that our employees encounter. O, yan. O, yan ang mga programs na tinatawag. Uh, sir, sir, nung, nung nag-annual medical physical, physical exam tayo, napansin po namin, almost... 45% ng ating workers are ay overweight. No, mga gano, no? Walang walang discrimination na. Example lang, uh, 45%. Oh, ano bang sinasuggest mong program that that is something valuable, that is something that could uh, deal with that problem, no? Ah, sir, ganito. Mag-organize tayo ng physical fitness program. Uh, Mag-invite tayo ng mga Sumba instructor. Para yung mga gustong magsumba, especially those that are overweight, they can actively participate. O magsumba kayo dyan. 
Sir, every summer, magpa-sports fest din tayo. Para yung mga sports enthusiasts natin ng mga employees, they can uh, participate in basketball, volleyball. Uh, sir, that is something that can promote physical mobility. Therefore, we can address the overweight concern. Oh, mga ganun, no? Ganun ang ginagawa natin. Nag-iisip tayo ng mga programa uh, to address or to deal with the problems that the employees encounter. Oh, halimbawa ako, i-share ko lang yung experience ko. Ha? Ako, ang full-time job ko, uh, I'm, uh, I'm working as a full-time uh, safety and security manager in a BPO company. Oh, sabi ng top management, ng boss ko from Canada, sabi niya, Sabi niya, yung, yung agents natin, they are uh, exposed to noise every day because they need to take in calls. No? Sabi ko, sabi niya, what, 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 what can we do to deal with that problem? No? Sabi ko, sir, we can uh, organize or implement a hearing conservation program. So sabi niya, how that program will go? Sabi ko, uh, sir, uh, Every year, we can subject these people to undergo audiometry testing uh, so, that, so that we can monitor yung kanilang hearing acuity. No? Okay pa ba yung pandinig nila o hindi na? Sabi ko, sir, uh, gagawa kami ng checklist. What are the items that their team leaders need to inspect? Okay ba yung sound ng headset? Baka kasi nabibingi yan kasi sobrang lakas ng headset. Baka kasi yung headset walang preventive maintenance. Hindi linilinisan. Okay, so in terms of treatment, meron ba tayong mga tie-up na mga doctors na pwede natin i-refer yung mga employee? Meron. O yun, pag, pag nabuo mo yan, you can come up with a hearing conservation program. Uh, you know, that's how that's how it works. Uh, Mag-organize, parang ano tayo, program manager tayo. <laughs> Yan ang ginagawa natin. Okay? Uh, measure, audit, and evaluate the effectiveness of the hazards. Okay, nag-organize ka ng physical fitness program. Tapos next year, uh, 2021 na limbawa, ngayon. Nakita mo sa data ng APE Parang walang pagbabago 45% pa rin ng employees are still overweight Despite of the uh, physical fitness program that you have implemented Ano kayang pwedeng gawin natin? So, ini-evaluate natin yung program To check whether the program was effective or not Hindi porket nag-implement ka na, tapos na. So, you need to evaluate how effective the program was all throughout the implementation. Ah, okay sir. Mukhang hindi effective. Kailangan natin i-revise yung program. Okay. Uh, sir, bukod sa, bukod sa Zumba class, ako ang ginawa ko sa company, kasi almost 15% to, to 15 to 20% ng employees namin, mga bagets. Mga 18 years old to uh, 30 years old. Sabi ko, sir, why don't we organize a hip-hop class? Kasi nakikita ko yung mga kabataan natin, mahihilig yan sumayaw eh. So, pumayag yung top management. Ang ginawa namin, may kinuha kaming mga hip-hop dance instructor na every Saturday, May tinatawag kaming program na uh, Hip Hop Saturday Class. O oh, yan. Yung mga kabataan, every Saturday, nag-join sila. Uh, hip Hop uh, Training uh, Dance Class. O oh, yun, meron. Uh, tapos, nag-hire kami ng ano, gym instructor kasi may gym kami sa company. Oh, yun. So, nag-organize kami ng weight, manage weight management program. 
Oh, yun, yung instructor, tuturuan sila ano ba yung mga gagawin yung mga program. Yun. So, uh, that's how we, ano, that's how we evaluate the program. No? Kung maganda yung takbo, maintain. Improve. Pag medyo hindi maganda yung takbo ng program, revise. No? Oh, ganun lang, no? Ganun lang itong ibig sabihin nito. So, as a safety officer, dapat you should be a communicator. Uh, kasi, uh, kasi you uh, talk to the management. You talk to the middle management, no? Supervisors, managers. You uh, interact with the employees. Kaya dapat, uh, as a safety officer, must be a good communicator. Oh, yeah. Dapat, uh, we should be a good communicator. No? Uh, trainer. Uh, kasi, uh, base sa ating bagong batas, kayo ang mag-organize ng 8-hour uh, mandatory training course. Uh, Didiscuss natin yan. Okay. Negotiator at the same time. Okay, duties and re duties, requirements and qualifications. Dito na tayo. Okay? So uh ito yung history ng batas natin, no? Uh, kanina I was able to mention about the Dole O standard, no? Ito yun, yung yellow book. Yung nasa left, no? Yung uh, Dole O standard Meron yan mga provisions na tinatawag. Mga rules. O, dyan yung makikita yung mga rules that we adapted from different legislations. Nag-adapt tayo sa US, OSHA. No? Nag-adapt din tayo sa mga British standard. No? Um, may mga locally legislation din tayong inadapt, no? Mga sa Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, Philippine Electrical Code, Building Code, RA9514, Fire Code, o yun. Kinonsolidate yun. Lahat. Kinonsolidate. And in, in 1974, I sorry, in 1978, nakapag-come up tayo ng uh, standard. Na tinatawag natin na Dolly O Standard or the Yellow Book. Or the standard standard itself. Huh? Yan. Sobrang tagal. Okay, ginawa yan 1978 na amend noong 1989. And just recently, in 2018, dun, okay, lumabas yung ating batas, no? Yung RA 11058. Ang layo, no? <laughs> Mula 1989. Kasi na-revise to 1989 na amen yung yellow book. Tapos, ano lang, three years ago? Ilang years bang lumipas? Sobrang dami, no? Just in 2018, saka lang nagkaroon ng uh, legislation to, to strengthen the implementation of the Dole O standard. Uh, yun na yun, yung RA 11058. What is RA 11058? Uh, that is the act strengthening compliance with occupational safety and health standards and providing penalties for violations thereof. Okay, so good news. Yung mga yung mga violations pagdating sa OSH uh, if you fail to uh, comply on, uh, nine, uh, after 90 days, no? may tinatawag na tayong monetary penalty. Mamaya, i-discuss ko rin yan. I will elaborate that later on. Dati kasi walang violation eh. Dati walang monetary penalty. But now, meron na. Ayan, no? Providing penalties for violation thereof. Dati, there's no such thing as monetary penalty, but now, because of this law, okay. 
So, meron na tayong monetary penalty for uh, violations related to OSH. So, that, uh, that was enacted in 2018, yung RA 11058. Okay? And of course, meron din tayong mga subsequent issuances pagdating sa COVID. No? Yan. Yung uh, Joint Memorandum Circular 2004 ng DOLE DTI. Y yun naman is for COVID. Uh, by the way, my good news ako sa inyo, Sir Ma'am, kasi meron kayong special topic about COVID. O, yun, no? Okay? So, hindi ko na elaborate yung COVID further because meron kayong special topic about COVID prevention. Okay, so kung meron kayong mga questions related to COVID, you might just want to ask your trainer uh, who will uh, who is assigned to discuss the uh, COVID topic. Ito, wag na to. Outdated na to. Hindi ko na to didiscuss kasi baka ma malito lang kayo. Ang, ang Rule 1030, outdated na yan. Uh, superseded na yan ng Section 14 ng DO19818. Okay, uh, wag, hindi ko na didiscuss yan. Okay, duties. Uh, to assist, advise, or guide the employer in complying with the provisions of the standard. Uh, Kung baga, Sir Ma'am, ikaw ang ano? Ikaw ang uh, principal internal consultant ng company pagdating sa compliance. Si uh, si President, may tanong pagdating sa safety, walang ibang tatawagin dyan kundi ikaw. <laughs> because you are the safety officer of the company. Hindi niya dyan tatawagin si, si accountant. Hindi niya tatawagin si HR. Hindi niya tatawagin si auditor, hindi niya tatawagin si uh, yung mga operator. Of course, the uh, top management will touch base with you because it's your primary responsibility as a safety officer to guide the company comply with the provisions of the standard. Kasi nga ikaw yung Kumbaga ikaw yung primary uh, person responsible to guide the, emplo the employer comply no, with this standard. Okay? To make at least quarterly appraisal of the program and safety performance of the establishment, including the activities of the safety committee. So, pag sinabing appraisal, ini-evaluate mo yung mga programs, no? Okay. How are your programs doing? Maganda ba yung implementation? Uh, maganda ba yung acceptance ng mga employees? Okay ba yung outcome? Okay. Meron bang mga challenges sa program? Financial-wise? Operational-wise? O titingnan mo yan, no? You will evaluate how the program goes. As much as possible, you do it quarterly. No? So, dapat meron ka ditong mga tinatawag na mga KRAs and KPIs. No? Key result areas, key performance indicators. Para ano? Para reliable and at the same time quantifiable ang gagawin mong implementation. Ang gagawin mong evaluation. No? So, dapat meron kang mga leading and lagging indicators when you evaluate the program. Okay. To be present during the scheduled safety inspection by authorized government agents. O, yan. Sabi nung isang participant dati, ah, Sir, ano pala tayo? Ang safety officer pala ay Julalay. Sabi ko, anong Julalay? <laughs> Ano word na julalay? Yung pala alalay, sabi niya. Uh, uh, sir, julalay pala tayo. Kasi pag may inspector from BFP, DOLE, DOH, tayo yung umaalalay. Sabi ko, ah, okay. <laughs> sabi ko, Akala ko anong julalay na sinasabi mo. Yung pala alalay. 
Sabi ko, sabi ko, sir, not necessarily na alalay. Ano lang tayo? Uh, nagbibigay tayo ng assistance. Uh, in an event na mag si Dole sa company, magsasagawa ng uh, inspection, no? Parang, parang ano lang tayo? Ano bang magandang term dyan? Hindi kasi yan alalay eh. <laughs> Ang magandang term dyan is uh, assistance, no? Uh, or a company, a company, no? Like we, uh, we just accompany the uh, inspector. But not necessarily, hindi tayo alalay nila. Uh, tayo yung representative ng company uh, during the audit o during the assessment. Kung baga tayo yung frontline, tayo yung personnel assigned to accompany the inspector. But we are not alalay. <laughs> uh, yan ha? So, yan ang ibig sabihin nito. Uh, sa sabi nung kaibigan ko dati, ako pre, gusto ko lagi may inspection. Sabi ko, bakit pre? Sabi ko, stressful yan, inspection eh. Sabi niya, kasi pre, pag may inspection, lagi akong damay sa snack. Pati libreng lunch. <laughs> kasi, kasi daw, pag may mga bisita, no, may mga auditor, lagi daw may snack. Sabi ko, pambihira ka talaga, ang habol mo lang pala yung pagkain eh. So, yan. That's how we do, no? And that's uh, our role, no? Pagdating sa mga inspection. Okay. You are also the secretary of the committee. Uh, mandatory po sa establishment ninyo, sa company ninyo, uh, in conformance to uh, Rule 1040, of the Dolly O standard that you need to organize your own safety and health committee. Ayan. So, kung mga wala pa kayong safety and health committee, actually, ang requirement niyan is dapat uh, 30 days or within 30 days after the start of the operations, dapat meron na kayong committee, safety and health committee. So, dapat noon pa. So halimbawa, nag-start yung operations ng company ninyo January 1, 2020. Dapat bago mag-January 30, ba mayroon na kayong Safety and Health Committee. And that is in accordance to uh, Rule 1040 of Dolly O Standard. So ngayon, yung committee, yung committee na yun, uh, buwan-buwan kayo, every month kayo magsasagawa ng meeting, pag-uusapan nyo lahat ng... Lahat ng concerns related to occupational safety and health. No? Any item, any concern, any uh, matter related to occupational safety and health. So, yung meeting, it should be conducted monthly. Should in case you, are, you don't have yet your committee, safety and health committee. So, automatic na ang safety officer uh, serves as the secretary of the committee. O, yan, Whether you like it or not, you have to like it. <laughs> yan talagang role natin. No? Automatic yan, matik yan. If you are the safety officer, you are the secretary of the committee. Ano ang ginagawa ng secretary in a committee? Ikaw yung gagawa ng minutes ng meeting. Oh, kasi isusubmit mo yan kay Dole every quarter. Yung minutes ng meeting ninyo. Again, it has to be submitted to Dole every quarter. So, so kung buwan-buwan kayo nagsasagawa ng safety committee meeting, ibig sabihin nun sa isang quarter, dapat tatlo. Tatlo na minutes of meeting ang isusubmit ninyo kay Dole. Kasi for every quarter, there are three months, di ba? So, given that you are required to uh, conduct safety committee meeting monthly, so that entails that you need to submit three, uh, three minutes of meeting for each quarter. No? January, February, March, 
tatlong minutes, isang quarter. April, May, June, second quarter, tatlong minutes, tatlo ring minutes ang susubin mo kay Dole. Okay? Ano pang ginagawa ng SO? As a secretary, report, status of recommendations made. Okay. Kasi pag may mga napag-usapan ng mga concerns sa meeting, hindi naman yan automatic na ko-correct outright. So, magsiset kayo ng timeline uh, with the concerned business unit kung kailan ninyo i-address yung concern. Okay. Okay, motor pole department, halimbawa. Ay, sorry, uh, operations department. Oh, supervisor, nakita namin yung yung cutting machine or uh, shearing machine. Walang machine guard. No? Mga ganun, no? Oh. Pwede mo pa ba kaming bigyan ng, ano, ng uh, exact timeline kung kailan natin ma-address yung problema? Ah, SO, kasi ano yan eh. Yung machine guard kasi, papabricate pa eh. Bigyan nyo kami ng two weeks para ma-address natin yung problema. O, ilalagay mo yun sa minutes ng meeting. Uh, uh, recommendations, action taken. No? So, ilalagay mo doon na supervisor committed to deal with the concern in two weeks' time. Oh, yan. Just waiting for the machine guard to be fabricated before installation. Okay. So ngayon, pag nag-meeting ulit kayo ng, sa susunod na buwan, oh, ipapalow up muna naman. O, oh, obisor, usapan natin dito two weeks. O, oh, lumampas na. One month na. Ano nang status nito? Oh, yun. Ganun ang ginagawa sa, mini, sa committee meeting. No? Lahat ng mga concerns, you need to put that into writing. So that uh, in the next or subsequent meeting, you will be able to follow up the status of the recommendations. Oh, Nag-reply yung supervisor. Ay, sir, okay na yan. Uh, nagawa yan namin ganito. Noong uh, September 17, 2021. Sir, can we now close that item? Yes, of course. So ilalagay mo doon sa minutes, item closed. Uh, corrected by supervisor last September 17, 2021. Okay. Machine guard installed as agreed upon. Uh, yun, no? So ibig sabihin, na-address nyo na yung concern. Uh, ang problema dyan, sa bawat meeting, May mga nare-raise na mga bagong concern. O, yun naman yung magiging new matters mo. Uh, new matters for correction mo. O, ganun lang umiikot ang ano? Ang, uh, mini, ang uh, committee meeting. No? So, secretary tayo. No? At the same time, we are the advisor ng company. Pag sinabing advisor, ikaw yung taga ano? Para kang, uh, para kang consultant. No? Consultant, ha? Hindi, hindi sol-sultant, ha? <laughs> Kasi baga, baga gawin nyo sol-sultant kayo, ha? Pag sinabing sol-sultant, nagsusol-sol, no? Huwag tayong gano'n, no? Dapat, we, we should act like a consultant, not a sol-sultant. Okay. Uh, conducts investigation. Kung may mga work-related accident, it must be investigated within 24 hours. Wag nyo nang patagalin, sir, ma'am. No? Should you come across with any work-related accident, it must be investigated within 24 hours. At kung may namatay, wag naman sana, ayaw natin mangyari yan. No? We don't want that to happen. If ever nagkaroon ng fatality, dapat manotify ninyo si Dole within 24 hours. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yan, ha? Mga fatality or, or dangerous occurrences. No? Nagkaroon ng sunog. Ano pa ba? Sumabog yung boiler ninyo. Yung mga compressed gas cylinder ninyo, sumabog. Nag-collapse yung scaffolding. 
nag-collapse yung tower crane. O yan, ang tawag dyan, mga dangerous occurrences. No? Nagkaroon kayo ng power interruption for more than 24 hours. I-report nyo yan kay Dole within 24 hours. Okay? Okay, may topic kayo dyan. Don't worry, ha? May topic kayo about investigation. How to conduct accident investigation. Uh, coordinates all the health and safety training programs for the employees and employers. Uh, training coordinator din tayo. Okay, what else? We also conduct inspection. Ayan, health and safety inspection. Maintains or help in the maintenance of an efficient accident record system. O yan. So, so, lahat ng inspection report ninyo, lahat ng investigation reports, huwag nyong itatapon. O, dapat may retention period kayo dyan. O, kasi dapat everything that we do, it must be documented. So that whenever Dole will visit your establishment for audit or assessment, you have the black and white that could be presented to Dole to justify okay, that you really conducted inspection or investigation. No? Example, pumunta si Dole. No? Uh, SO, uh, nag-training nag, nag ba kayo? Nag-conduct na ba kayo ng 8-hour mandatory OS training sa mga empleyado ninyo? Yes, sir. Opo, tapos na. Okay. Can you show me an evidence justifying that the uh, training was indeed completed? Ah, ito sir, oh. Gumawa ako ng gumawa ako sir ng accomplishment report, oh. May mga picture pa, oh. Ah, ito sir, meron din akong attendance sheet. O yan, oh. Ah, kung hindi ka pa dyan, sir satisfy, ito, oh, na may mga videos kami dito, oh. O, oh, yun. Pag nakita yan ni Dole, okay. Wala yan masasabi because meron kayong uh, document in place that serves as your uh, proof. That serves as your evidence. Oh, ganun yun, no? Kaya meron tayong accident record system na tinatawag. Make sure that you have, make sure that you put this, uh, these things into documentation. Okay. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng uh, record system natin. Okay. Uh, provides assistance to government agencies in the conduct of safety and health inspection, investigation, or any other related programs. O, yan. Uh, for the purposes of effectiveness in the workplace, where full-time safety man is required, they shall... He shall report directly to the employer. O, oh, ayan ha. Uh, preferably, ang safety officer directly reporting to the employer or the top management. Oh, yan. To make the implementation effective. Kasi, the more na independent ka, parang set up sa abroad. Alam nyo sa abroad, ang safety department, ano yan eh? Separate entity yan. Hindi yan organic yung iba. No? Kasi pag pag organic yan, ang parang ang tendency, yung mas mga matataas na mga posisyon, inamaliit lang. Eh. Pero sa ibang setup, sa ibang companies like in abroad, third party ang safety department. Tapos directly reporting sa top management. So, whether you are the uh, division chief, you are the operations manager, wala. Pag nag-violate ka, violation yan. Kasi nga, separate, separate entity ang SO eh. Wala silang kinikilingan, kumbaga. Regardless of the position, your job title, as long as you violated, you, you will be subjected to disciplinary action. No? Kaya, Magandang setup ng SO dapat directly reporting sa employer. Yan ang ibig sabihin nito. Okay, RA 11058, diniskas ko kanina. Ito yung kanyang definition. No? An act strengthening compliance with OSH standard 
and providing penalties for violations thereof. Okay. Uh, eh, sir, ano yung DO-198-18? Ano ang kinalaman niya sa RA-11058? Uh, yung DO-198-18, this is the implementing rules and regulations of your RA-11058. Okay? Kumbaga, ito yung batas, yung RA-11058. O, ayan. Alam nyo naman, di ba, yung mga batas, meron yan mga implementing rules and regulations. Uh, so, yung IRR ng RA-11058, it's the DO-19818. O, ito yung IRR, implementing rules and regulations. DO, Department Order 19818. O, oh, ito, no? Uh, the number and qualification of a safety officer shall be uh, proportionate to the total number of workers and equipment, uh, size of the work area, and such other criteria as may be, as may be prescribed by the DOLE. So, mamaya, i-discuss natin tong table. Uh, in case of a contractor or subcontractor, a safety officer must be deployed at each specific area of operations to oversee the management of the safety and health program of its own workforce. Uh, ito sir ha, halimbawa meron kayong uh, security agency na kinuha as a third party providing security services for your company. Kinakailangan po, meron din silang sarili nilang safety officer. Maliwanag o. Oh. Uh, safety officer that is also assigned doon sa company ninyo. Uh, kasama, kasama siya doon sa third party na kinuha ninyo na naka-assign doon sa inyong establishment. Oh, yan, yan, maliwalag na nakasaado. Dapat meron din silang sarili nilang safety officer. Halimbawa, kumuha kayo ng housekeeping company or housekeeping, nag-outsource kayo ng housekeeping vendor. No? Halimbawa, ang housekeeping team ninyo, 30. Oh, dapat sa 30 na yun, oh, dapat meron kayong isang safety officer man lang. I mean, safety officer nila na, na galing sa housekeeping team na nakadeploy sa company ninyo. Ayan, no? O yan, mandatory yan. Ha? So, that's under section 14 of uh, DO19818 uh, safety officer. Okay, so ito na. So, discuss natin yung table. Yan. Yung establishments, uh, these are categorized into three. Low risk, uh, medium risk, and high risk. Uh, sir, uh, sir paano ba namin malalaman if our company belongs to either low risk, medium risk, or high risk establishment? Uh, ma malalaman nyo po yan through HIRAC. Uh, that's the workshop that you're going to do, uh, I guess, tomorrow, third day, and fourth day. Oh, yan. Uh, yung HIRAC, Hazard Identification, Risk Assessment, and Control, yun yung tool, yun yung template that would help you out determine kung kayo ba ay low, medium, or high. O, kaya, wag na muna natin pag-usapan yun ngayon because that will be tackled during your workshop. No? Another consideration is yung number ng workers ninyo. Ilan ba yung existing na headcount that our company has? O, yan, may mga range tayo dyan. No? 1 to 9, 10 to 50, 51 to 99, and so on and so forth. 
So, okay, tulungan nyo ako mag-interpret ha, para may ano kayo, uh, para may participation naman kayo. Okay? Halimbawa, yung number ng employees namin is 150. 150. And based on the high rack, based on the high rack that you conducted, uh, your company falls under the low risk establishment. O ngayon, uh, sabihin nyo sa akin, ilan at anong qualification ng safety officer ang dapat i-hire ninyo? Uh, sige, you can shut your answer. Uh, ito na yung ano natin, simple ano, short activity natin. 150 yung bilang ng employees. Tapos, based on your high rack, lumabas na your risk category is low risk. O, ilang, ilang safety officer i-hire ninyo or i-appoint ninyo? At anong qualification nito? Ito ba ay SO1, 2, 3, or 4? O, sige, interpret natin yung graph, yung table. 150, low risk. O, ilan? Ayun, uh, correct. Ayan. Uh, you can chat your answers ha, para may participation naman kayo. Ayan, okay. Very good. So that means the uh, safety officer that you need to hire is isa lang. Isa lang. One. No? However, uh, the qualifications of the SO that you need to appoint or hire, he or she must be SO2. Safety officer to kayo yon, no? Uh, pag 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 pagagraduate niyo, automatic you are now qualified as SO2 upon completing all the requirements set by the RBA. Uh, yan. Uh, yan. Okay, that's correct. Uh, that's how we interpret and analyze the the table. Uh, isa pa, isa pa. Uh, what if What if 200 naman? Uh, 200 yung number ng employees ninyo. Uh, ngayon, based on your high rack, nako, high risk pala kami. Uh, kasi yung company namin is ano, uh, pagawaan ng explosive. <laughs> no? Tapos lumabas sa high rack ninyo, high risk kayo, no? Tapos, ang number ng employees ninyo is 200. Okay, 200 ang headcount and the category of the establishment is high risk. O, ngayon, uh, help me. Uh, ilang, ilang safety officer ang i-hire ninyo at ano ang qualifications niya? Okay, high risk, 200 employees. Okay, sige. Okay, uh, wait lang, may tanong. Sir, paano po natin malalaman kung high risk or low risk po ang isang company? Okay, uh, malalaman nyo to sir, ma'am, through high rack. Okay, hazard identification, risk assessment and control. Okay. Ito po yung workshop na gagawin ninyo tomorrow. Okay, kasi meron tayong gagawin na template. Ito yung tool na tutulong sa inyo. To determine if what risk category level your company will fall under. O okay lang, skip muna natin yon, kasi that will be discussed to you tomorrow. Alright? So wag kayo magalala. Tuturoan kayo kung paano pag-determine kung kayo ba ay low, medium, or high. Alright? Alright, sige. So the correct answer is dalawang SO3. Ayan, dalawang safety officer 3 ang kailangan. Yeah, very good. Okay, so nakuha nyo, no? Uh, that's how we ano, uh, interpret and analyze the table. Uh, eh, sir, ano bang ibig sabihin ng SO1? Uh, sir, what does it mean if you are qualified as, as SO2? Sir, for SO3, ano ba yung qualifications that we need to uh, comply? The same goes to your SO4. Oh, ito pag-usapan natin, no? 
Sir, paano maging SO1? Simple lang. Mag-undergo ka lang ng 10-hour OS training. That can be completed in a single day. That can be, that can be completed in a 10-hour period. No? Ano ba yung composition ng ano ng uh, training. Yun, yung 8-hour OS mandatory training course, may template niyan, huwag kayong magalala, may template niyan. Uh, plus the 2 hours TOT, training of trainers. So 8-hour plus 2-hour uh, TOT, that is equivalent to 10 hours or 10 hour OS training. So once you have completed the 10 hour OS training, uh, automatic SO1 ka na. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's how, that's the requirements that you need to comply to become SO1. Eh sir, paano naman ang SO2? Ito medyo mahaba-haba, 5 days to. <laughs> Yung SO1, 10 hours lang. Samantala sa inyo, 40 hour kayo. Tapos yung training ninyo dapat specific to the industry where you belong to. Uh, sir, nagtatrabaho ako as safety officer sa construction. Ano bang dapat ang kukunin kong basic? Uh, dapat construction, occupational safety and health ka. Kosh. Kasi nga yung industry mo, construction. Eh sir, paano kung nasa services ako? Manufacturing, mining. Okay. What type of basic training that I should take? Uh, Bosch ka. Basic Occupational Safety and Health Training for SO2. O itong tinitake ninyo ngayon, ito yung Bosch SO2 for General Industry. Sana walang naligaw ha. <laughs> Baka may nagtitake dito ng safety tapos sa construction ng trabaho. Hindi yun i-accept ni Dole. Kinakailangan mo ulit mag-take ng Bosch kung ikaw naman ay mag- ang uh, industry mo, construction. Okay? So, dapat specific to the industry where you are presently connected with. Alright? Uh, okay, sir, gusto ko mag-upgrade. Ano, mag uh, paano ba mag-upgrade from SO1 or SO2 para maging SO3? Ayan, pag-usapan natin. So, para maging SO3, oh, on the top of the uh, on the top of the uh, 40 hour basic, kinakailangan ninyo magtake ng additional uh, 48 hour advanced OS training. Oh, yan. So magiging ilan yan? 88, no? 88 na dapat. Sir, bakit naging 88? Kasi yung 40 hour that, that was the basic training that you have taken long time ago. When you uh, take the boss training. O, yun na yun. No need na mag-retake ulit kasi may, may, may basic ka na eh. May boss ka na, may cost ka na, or MOSH. Maritime Occupational Safety and Health. Okay, since may basic na ako sir, paano ko kukunin ngayon yung 48 hours? So yun. Yung 48 hour na yan, uh, dapat it should be taken from accredited safety training organizations ng DOLE. Uh, kagaya ng RBA. Eh sir, ano ba yung mga 48 hour advanced training na yan? Yan yung tinatawag na loss control management. Yan yung tinatawag na safety program or the training. O, minsan ginagawa yan, uh, may mga training center na ginagawa, ano yan eh, ginagawa ng 48 hour sa isang training lang. Yung iba naman, separate yan. Pagkatapos mo ng loss control management or safety program auditing training, kailangan mo pa ng additional 8 hour, 8 hours. Kasi 48 hours, di ba? So kulang ka pa ng 8 hours. So you can take the high rack training. Fire safety training, ergonomics training. As long as yung 8 hour na yon at yung base yung advanced na 40 hour dapat 
it should be taken from DOLE Accredited Safety Training Organization, like RBA. Yan. Medyo mabigat ang qualification maging SO3. Kasi kinakailangan mo muna ng two years OSH-related experience as SO1 or SO2 before you can get qualified as SO3. Okay? Sir, anong ibig sabihin? Alimbawa, SO2 na kayo. So, kinakailangan nyo munang maging safety officer as SO2 sa loob ng dalawang taon. <laughs> kinakailangan nyo munang mag-gain ng experience for at least two years as SO2. Before you can get qualified as SO3. So, habang, habang nag-acquire kayo ng experience as SO2, itake nyo na yung training, yung 48-hour course. Okay. So that, habang tumatakbo yung experience ninyo, may compliant na kayo sa 48-hour advance. Then once you have once you have completed the two years and the advance, yun. SO3 na kayo. O, magpapasertify kayo sa HR ng company. Okay. Basahin niyo yung ano, Labor Advisory 4-19. Yun yung guidelines sa compliance to RA 11058. Okay, sir. Na-meet na ko na. SO3 na ako. Ano nang next kong gagawin? Pupunta ka doon sa HR ng company na nag-hire sa'yo at magpapasertify ka sa HR na ikaw ay uh, na-meet mo na, na-satisfy mo na yung requirements sa pagiging SO3. Okay? Uh, this is to certify that, alimbawa, this is to certify that uh, Juan de la Cruz uh, satisfied the requirements as Safety Officer 3 upon evaluation and review conducted by the HR team. Oh, yun, no? So, bibigyan kayo ng certification ni HR na kayo ay qualified na as SO3 or SO4. Oh. Pag tinanong ng company, Sir, may batas ba nagsasabi na kinakailangan HR mag-certify? Oh, basahin nyo yun. Labor Advisory 4-19. Okay, yan yung guidelines for compliance to RA 11058. Labor Advisory 4-19. O yan, i-consult nyo si paring Google. <laughs> Nandyan yan kay paring Google. Check nyo lang ha, Labor Advisory 4-19. Alright? Eh sir, di pa rin ako contented. Gusto ko, maging SO4 naman ako. Yan, okay. So, uh, how to become SO4? Uh, yan ang tanong. Sa SO4, kinakailangan may basic 40-hour course. Depende sa industry where you belong to. On the top of the 40-hour training course, dapat meron kang 80-hour advanced training. Kung sa SO3, ang kinakailangan ay 48 only, advance. Sa SO4, you need to have 80-hour advance training. Ayan na. Ah. Uh, uh, sir, kinakailangan pala para maging SO4 ako. Kinakailangan kung i-take yung loss control management at yung safety program auditing training. Yes. Kasi 40 plus 40, that is equivalent to 80-hour advance. So, so, hindi ka magiging SO4 kung wala kang loss control management training and the safety program auditing training. Or not unless may other equivalent training na ikikredit ng DOLE. O, yan. Uh, hindi na banggit dito yung 320 hours. Itong medyo malupit guys sa uh, SO4. Kasi, kasi bukod sa 40 hour at bukod sa 80 hour advance kinakailangan meron ka pang 320 uh, 
OS related trainings. Sir, paano ba namin makukuha yung 320 na yon? Halimbawa, nag-training ka sa Red Cross. Pasok yun doon sa 320. Uh, OS-related trainings. Yung 320 na yon, it doesn't necessarily mean na taken only from safety training organization. Pwede yun, pwede yung kunin yun, no? Kahit saan. As long as yung training is related to safety. Nag-training kayo sa Coast Guard ng, alimbawa, ng water safety, uh, water search and rescue training. Pwede yun. Nag-training kayo sa MMDA ng Collapse Structure Rescue Training, pwede yun. Nag-training kayo sa Red Cross, pwede yun. Nag-training kayo sa BFP, no? uh, Fire Safety Practitioner Training, or Fire Brigade 40-hour training, pwede yun. Ipapasok nyo yun sa 320 hours. At ito pang isang mabigat. Kinakailangan mo muna mag-practice as SO3 sa loob ng apat na taon bago ka maging isang SO4. <laughs> Medyo pet malulodi ang requirement. No? So pag naging SO3 ka na, kinakailangan mo ulit mag-render for additional four years as SO3 before you can finally get qualified to become SO4. Pet malulodi, no? Kaka SO3 mo lang tapos 4 years pa automatic kung kailan ka naging SO3 sa company yun yung start ng first day ng 4 years <laughs> Kaya mahaba-habang inuman to guys <laughs> mahaba-habang inuman bago ka maging SO4 no mahaba-habang experience Kasi imagine bago ka maging SO3 Dating dalawang taon ang gugugulin mo, no? As SO2. At pag naging qualified ka naman ng, ng SO3, another four years. So six years all in all. <laughs> Para maging qualified ka as, 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 ano, as SO4, no? Yan, dyan gano kahaba, ganyan gano kahaba yung tinatahak natin na track, no? Para maging SO4. Eto, magandang tanong from Mets Logistics Cebu. Okay. Kasi sir ngayon RA 11058 yung accreditation ng OSH center as OSH practitioner or consultant it's no longer mandatory. Optional na lang siya ngayon, no? So kapag kapag na-qualify mo yung SO3 requirements, that means that you are now qualified to apply as to apply for accreditation as OSH practitioner. Ibig sabihin, pag naging SO3 ka na, yung qualifications mo, pwede ka nang mag-apply as OSH practitioner, but that is optional. No? Pag ang qualifications mo naman is SO4 ka na, qualified ka na mag-apply as OSH consultant. But then again, the application for accreditation as practitioner or consultant is no longer mandatory. Optional na lang siya. Kasi nga, ang pinapalo sa company, ito na, SO1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? So, wala ng practitioner or consultant na requirement. Not unless, pag consultant kasi, uh, pwede kayong mag engage ng consultant habang wino work out pa ninyo yung mga compliance ninyo. Pwede kayong mag-engage ng kontrata sa consultant. Habang wino work out pa ninyo yung mga compliances ninyo kay Dole. Pwede yun. But ulitin ko ha, hindi na mandatory ang uh, accreditation. That is already, that is optional nowadays. Okay? So I hope I was able to answer your uh, question, sir. From uh, Mets Logistics Cebu. Yeah. O yan. O, sana walang bibitaw ha. <laughs> ako dyan din ako nang galing guys. Nag-start ako mag-practice ng safety in 2010. So ngayon 11 years na ako sa safety. 
Ayan. So, uh, wag kayo magalala. Everybody starts from the scratch. There's no such thing as shortcut to uh, becoming an expert or consultant in safety. There's no such thing. So, everybody starts from the scratch. Okay, I want to motivate you. Kung gusto nyo maging SO, ano lang, ano lang tayo? Uh, step by step tayo. Uh, darating din kayo dyan. Someday, kung kinaya nga namin, mas kaya niya yan. Okay? Okay, so dito tayo. I guess this is the last uh, topic for this morning, the high rock. Hazard Identification, Risk Assessment, and Control. Okay, so... Uh, I-discuss muna natin. Pasintabi sa picture, no? Medyo maselan. Uh, what is accident? An undesired event that results in harm to people, damage to property, or loss to process. Uh, kailan nangyayari yung aksidente? Kapag yung tao nagkaroon ng interaction sa hazard... Nagkakaroon ng hazardous event. No? Eventually, pag may hazardous event, uh, it, it is something that can lead to accident. No? O, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng accident. Okay. So, what is reactive approach versus proactive approach? Ayan. Pag sinabing reactive, uh, we only take action only if an accident happened. Kumbaga, inihintay pa natin na magkaroon muna ng accident before we do something to uh, circumvent the accident from happening again. Yan ang reactive. No? We only take action once the accident is already there. Samantala, pag sinabi natin Proactive, we uh, we take action before the accident happens. So, sir, anong ginagawa natin? An example of the proactive approach. Yan, nag inspect kayo. Ini-inspect mo na yung workplace ninyo so that whatever the hazards that you have inspected, you can correct it immediately. No? So that those hazards will no longer turn into an accident. Kung baga, unahan mo na. Yung hazard, i-correct mo na. Para hindi na maging aksidente pa yan. O, that is an example of your proactive approach. O, yan ang difference ng dalawa. No? Reactive versus being proactive. So dapat as a safety officer, you must be proactive. So you do something before an accident happens. As much as possible, uh, do something so that the hazards will no longer turn into an accident. And so that the accident will not lead to an injury. And so that the injury will not compromise the safety of the victim. So, ito yung diniscuss ko kanina, no? yung mga agencies. Remember the 5M? Material, machine, Mother Nature, Man, and the Method. The same lang. Yun yung mga five uh, agencies. Ang hazard, it can also be classified as a safety hazard or health hazard. No? Masyadong mahaba yung definition dyan. Ang shortcut lang dyan is nag nagkakaiba yan in terms of the outcome. Pag sinabing safety hazard, ang result niyan is injury. Whereas, pag sinabi naman na health hazard, it is something that results to illness. Ayan. Uh, sir, ano bang example ng safety hazard? Yung, yung ano? Yung alimbawa, yung mga makina, yung mga rotating objects, rotating mga wheels, mga sprockets, walang machine guard. Pag, pag nahawakan mo, pwede kang maputulan ng kamay. O, safety hazard yon. Kasi pag naputulan ka ng kamay, injury yun. Di ba? Sir, ano naman ang example ng health hazard? Okay. Halimbawa, carbon monoxide. Uh, excessive concentration ng carbon monoxide 
pag na-inhale mo yan, is pwede kang mamatay. Loss of consciousness. So, pwede kang magkaroon ng uh, respiratory ailment. Ang tawag naman doon, health hazard yun. Kasi it leads to what? Illness. O, yan ang difference ng safety hazard at ng health hazard. Safety hazard results to injury, whereas health hazard results to illness. O, yan lang ang ano niyan. Okay? Ito, mga definition na lang to. What are the types of risk? Speculative, pure. Ano bang magandang example ng speculative? I-simplify ko na lang mga example ko ha, para mas madali niyong maintindihan. Speculative. Tumaya ka sa online sabong. Halimbawa, <laughs> on online sabong talaga example. No? Tumaya ka sa online sabong. Ibig sabihin nun, pwede kang manalo, pwede kang matalo. O yun yun, speculative yun. Samantala, pag sinabing pure risk, ano yan? Example niyan, mga natural disaster. No? Pag nangyari yan, walang advantage. Palagi yan loss. Kapag nagkaroon ng typhoon, may meron bang advantage? Wala. <laughs> Because that is a pure risk na tinatawag. Kasi pag nagkaroon ng typhoon, automatic it leads to destruction. No? So therefore, pag sinabing pure risk, it always leads to loss. Yan ang ibig sabihin niyan. O oh, yan, mga pure. Ito yung effects niya, no? Uh, property damage, loss from criminal criminal activities, kagaya ng theft, robbery, kidnapping. Yan. What is risk assessment? O oh, yan. A, a formalized process of identifying hazards, assessing the risk that they generate and then either eliminating on or controlling the risk. Wow. By the way, pag sinabi natin na hazard, uh, it is anything, no? Anything that has the potential to cause harm, no? Anything that has the potential to cause harm or injury to the person. Uh, hazard yun. Okay. Pag sinabi naman natin na risk, Ano ba ang pinaka-simplified na definition ng risk? Uh, pag sinabi natin na risk, ito yung chance, no? yung, yung probability na mangyayari ang isang hazardous event. At kung mangyari man ito, gaano kasibir ang impact na pwedeng mangyari? O, yan ang ibig sabihin ng risk. Halimbawa, Halimbawa, typhoon. No? In your locality, halimbawa sa amin, sa Albay, yung uh, province namin, sa Albay. So, in terms of probability, in terms of chance, gaano kadalas nagkakaroon ng typhoon sa Albay? Uh, ilalagay ko dyan, high. Uh, kasi it's low, medium or high. Pagdating sa probability, ang rating ko dyan high. Kasi ang albay, lagi nalang binabagyo. Okay. okay, so in terms of severity, ano yung rating natin? Kasi pag nagkaroon ng bagyo, o pag tinutukoy natin disaster, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin low lang ang severity dyan. Kasi pag sinabing typhoon, widespread yan. Hindi lang isang bahay pinag-uusapan dyan. We are talking about a certain locality that may be impacted by the typhoon. So ilalagay ko rin dyan, high. Kung ang rating natin, ang, ang rating scale natin is low, medium, high for probability and for severity naman, low, medium, high. So, ilalagay ko rin high ulit. Bakit nilagay ko high ang probability sa albay na nagkakaroon ng typhoon? Kasi based on the previous experiences, Nung nasa Albay pa ako nakatira, malaki ang damage. No? And ang Albay, it is frequently visited by typhoon. Almost every year. Doon ako mula kinder, elementary, high school, doon ako nag-college. Almost every year, guys, <laughs> Albay is always affected. Especially if the typhoon is spotted somewhere in, uh, ano bang lugar yon Late. 
Samar, Leyte, mga ganyan. Naku, <laughs> laging, da, laging ano, uh, da, damay ang albay. O, ganun yun, no? Gan, yun ang tinatawag na risk. Yung chance, no? yung chance or probability na mangyayari ang isang hazardous event. At kung mangyari ito, gaano kalala ang impact or in terms of severity. O, yan ang tinatawag natin na risk. So, sa ipapagawa sa inyong workshop, may template kayong gagamitan, huwag kayong magalala. I-identify ninyo yung, yung risk, okay? Yung hazards, yung mga effects ng hazards. Then, uh, later on, ilalagay nyo rin yung mga uh, controls, no? mga recommended controls to uh, address the hazard. Huwag kayong magalala, may template kayong gagamitin dito. Yan. So, sa, sa first part ng uh, template ninyo, may makikita kayo doon na uh, work activity. No? So, bibigyan kayo ng mga senaryo. Ano ba yung mga senaryo yung ibibigay sa inyo? Tapos, based doon sa picture, ilalagay ninyo, ano ba yung mga work activities na nakikita ninyo sa picture. Ano, housekeeping ba? Printing? Welding? Fabrication? Installation? No? Um, meron bang uh, operating a computer? Operating a machine? O, ilalagay nyo yun dun sa mga work task. No? Step 1. Okay, step 2. Who might be harmed? O, sino yung mga affected na personnel? HR ba? Operator? Manager? Okay. At gagawa kayo ng risk assessment. Uh, may matrix kayong gagamitin. 3x3 or 5x5. No? Yan. So, yan ang gagawin ninyong workshop. Kaya huwag kayong magalala. That will be explained to you by the trainer. O, ito, ang gagamitin natin ata, 3x3. Ito yun. Uh, kasi yung matrix natin sa risk analysis... It can be 3 by 3 or it can be 5 by 5, meron ng 10 by 10. No? Ito yung mostly na ano, ginagamit natin 3 by 3. Yung likelihood, ano yan, ang rating niyan, tatlo. Pag sinabing 1, low. Pag sinabing 2, medium. Pag sinabing 3, high. Likelihood or probability or chance, pare-parehas lang yan. Pag sinabi naman consequence, it's just the same as your severity or the impact. Parehas lang yan. 1 is low, 2 is 3. Ay, 1 is low, 2 is medium, 3 is high. Okay. So, ang gagawin ninyo, to get the risk level, imumultiply nyo lang. Imultiply nyo lang. Likelihood times severity is equal to your risk level. Halimbawa, sa isang hazard, uh, sorry, sa isang risk, ang rating ninyo halimbawa is 3 pagdating sa likelihood. Pagdating naman sa severity, ang rating nyo is 3. So, nakalagay doon sa workshop, probability, severity, risk level. No? So, in order to get the risk level, all you have to do is to multiply. Multiply the probability and the severity. So, paano? Uh, 3, Times 3, multiply nyo lang. 3 times 3 is 9. Oh. Eh sir, yung answer, ano, ano yung magiging answer niya? 9. Oh, that becomes your risk level na tinatawag. For that particular risk. Oh. Multiplication lang, no? Halimbawa, ang rating mo is 2. Sa likelihood. Uh, 2 rin sa consequence or uh, severity. Multiply lang. 2 times 2. Your risk level is 4. O, ganun ang ginagawa lang sa risk analysis. No? And then, uh, may color coding yan. Y yung mga risk level ninyo, i-color coding nyo yan. Uh, red, light red, yellow, light green, and green. Okay. Anong purpose ng color coding? Para po yan sa risk prioritization. Uh, risk prioritization, no? 
the more na malaki ang number ng risk level, ibig sabihin, mas kinakailangan i-prioritize natin yan. So, correct. So, yan. So, sa risk level ninyo, ang pinakamalaking rating dyan is 9. Kung 3 by 3 matrix ang gagamitin ninyo. So, pag lumabas 9, kulay pula yan. O, ibig sabihin, ang risk prioritization, ang pinaka-top priority yung mga pula. Second priority, light red. Third priority, yellow. Fourth priority, light green. And least priority is the green. O, yan ang risk assessment natin. O, ito naman, magulo. Kasi 5 by 5 uh, 3 by 3 na lang atang papagamit sa inyo. Okay. And the last part, of course, is the uh, control ng hazards. Pag mataas ang risk, dapat immediate control ang kinakailangan natin dyan. So, yan. so gagawa tayo ng controls. Okay, so... Okay, so... I will discuss this, no? Teka, konti na lang to. Okay, konti na lang. Teka. Okay. Few pages na lang. Di ba, le, yung iba, i-continue na lang natin after lunch. Uh, so, we still have time pa naman kasi ko uh, ano na lang to. Mga uh, siguro seven slides left. Okay, so we'll just continue after lunch. So later, I will discuss the uh, hierarchy of controls. Plus the remaining three slides about unsafe acts and safe conditions. So, uh, bago tayo mag-lunch, uh, any questions, uh, clarifications? Uh, you still have two minutes, no? Baka may, may mga katanungan pa from the, uh, from the group. Sure kayo ha? Basta mga sir ma'am, kung may mga tanong, huwag mahihiya po ha? Uh, Please feel free na kung may mga katanungan kayo para uh, para mas mabigyan namin kayo ng tamang mga kasagutan. Okay? So I guess uh, uh, I am now giving back the floor to uh, Sir Lucky. Baka may mga announcement pa si Sir Lucky ang papagawa. Uh, sir Lucky, Hello sir, good morning and good morning po sa ating participants. So kung wala na po kayong questions, uh, pwede na po tayong magkaroon ng lunch break at balik po tayo ng reform 1 or exactly 1 o'clock in the afternoon po para sa training natin sa hapon. Bye po, see you later guys, 1pm. Thank you.
Okay, good afternoon, sir, ma'am. Uh, let's now uh, resume. Okay, so uh, before we uh, resume, uh, we uh, would like to request again our uh, participants to please uh, have your cameras turned on. Yan. Uh, as part of the requirements for this training, maraming salamat po. Okay, nasa na kaya yung anim? Okay. Uh, we're still, lack, uh, we're still ano, uh, lacking six more participants. Ayan, so dumadami na rin. Uh, we're now 12. Okay. Sige, uh, request lang po ako dun sa iba. While uh, we are waiting for others, we can now uh, turn on your cameras. You can now turn on your cameras, please. Okay. Thank you. Ilan na ba tayo? 12? Kulang pa rin. <laughs> Nasaan na kaya ang iba? Okay, so... While we are waiting for the uh, few more participants to uh, join in, uh, sabihin ko lang na ang break time pala ninyo is uh, uh, 3 o'clock hanggang uh, 3.15 later. So, uh, before uh, Sir JP, uh, uh, before he will discuss the topic assigned to him, uh, may break time muna kayo ng 3 o'clock to 3.15. Yan. So, nakalimutan kong banggitin kanina. Apologies, sir. Ma'am. Okay. So, let's check again if ilan na tayo. Wala pa rin. Ah, 40 na. Ayan. <laughs> so, madami na rin. Ah, si ano pala, uh, apologies, the, uh, your trainer pala, this uh, afternoon si Sir Christian Tixon. It's not Sir JP. Okay. I stand corrected. It's Sir uh, Ian Tixon. Okay.
Okay? So, <coughs> siguro, uh, I will now be sharing again my screen. No? Wait lang po, ha? Hindi lang ako makapag-share screen. Wait lang po, ha? Yan, naka-disable lang yung uh, ano ko, uh, uh, screen sharing feature. Ayan, okay na. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, so siguro... Uh, we can now start while waiting for others, okay? So, ano na lang to? Few more slides na lang. So, let's discuss the hierarchy of control. Uh, kung mapapansin ninyo, ang hierarchy of control, it's an inverted triangle. So, what does it implies? Yung... Yung base of the triangle, uh, which is on the uh, uppermost part, uh, that's the uh, that that is the most effective control, no? And yung control naman that is located at the bottom or or at the apex of the triangle, yun naman yung pinaka least effective one. So it is arranged. From highest to lowest, from most effective to the least effective, no? from the top down to bottom. So, we discuss natin what is uh, elimination first. Pag sinabi po natin elimination, that is uh, removing the hazard physically, 100% physically. Okay. Uh, say for example, uh, safety officer ka ng Manila Zoo. Gagawa na lang ako ng mga example ah, for you to easily grasp the uh, meaning and definition what elimination is. Oh. Safety officer ka ng Manila Zoo. Alimbawa, yung hazard mo is yung lion. No? Almost every day, uh, almost every day, three people got beaten by the lion. No? Okay, sa araw-araw, tatlong customer nakakagat ng layon. <laughs> so, if you decided to uh, apply the uh, elimination control, anong gagawin natin? Yun, i-dispose mo yung layon. You kill the layon. So that the hazard is no longer existing. Oh, that's how, that's uh, how the principle of elimination works. No? Elimination... <laughs> Alright, so uh, unfortunately, ang uh, elimination is it's not cost effective, no? It is not all the time being applied because it is not cost effective. Pag tinanggal mo yung layon sa Manila Zoo, Matatanggalan tayo ng center of attraction uh, because that is something that attracts the uh, visitors, no? Why they go to the Manila Zoo? Okay, so now if the elimination is not is not feasible, you resort to the next control, which is substitution. Okay, anong pwedeng gawin natin sa layon if elimination is not doable? Okay. Okay lang ba yung layon? Palitan natin ang pusa. <laughs> uh, substitution ang tawag doon. You replace the uh, hazardous hazard with a less hazardous hazard. So so imbis na layon or uh, tiger ang ilalagay natin, what if we replace it with a cat? Uh, pusa na lang. <laughs> Para hindi masyadong hazardous, no? Ayan, parang gano'n ang principal lang substitution. You replace anything that is a sardus with a less a sardus one. 
Oh, yung layon, palitan natin ng pusa. <laughs> uh, but do you think that is applicable? Uh, Manila soup? Papalitan mo ng pusa yung layon? Hindi, no? So, that is not something applicable. So, let's just resort to engineering control. Okay, pag sinabing engineering control, you, as you isolate the people from the hazard. Uh, sir, what if lagyan na lang natin ng enclosure yung layon? Ilagay natin sa cage. Would that be applicable? Yes or no? Uh, ilagay na lang natin sa kulungan, sa cage. So that, that is engineering control, no? You put the layon inside the cage. Uh, that is a type of enclosure, no? Uh, uh, ang, ang tawag doon is enclosure method. Uh, you put the lion inside the cage so that the lion will not roam around and bite the customers uh, because the lion is enclosed inside the cage. That is engineering. Ang tawag naman doon is enclosure method. Uh, sir, uh, sir ma'am, paano kaya kung i-isolate na lang natin yung lion? Doon natin ilagay yung lion sa isang area that is medyo malayo doon sa mga customers. So that only authorized customers will be able to access the lion. Sabihin natin, ano lang, i-isolate natin. Huwag natin isama doon sa mga ibon. Huwag natin doon isama sa mga uh, peacock. O, mga ganun, no? isolation yun. No? You, uh, you, you put the hazard away from where the operations is. Ang tawag doon is uh, engineering, isolation principle. No? O, yun, engineering ang tawag doon. No? But if you think engineering control is not yet uh, sufficient enough to uh, reduce the risk into acceptable level, yan, pwede tayo maglagay ng admin control naman. Okay, we change the way the people work. Ah, sir, uh, gawin natin yung mga customer ng Manila Zoo. Bago sila pumunta sa layon, we train them. We orient them about safety. About observing proper distance. Do not feed the lion with anything. Training, no? Training and education. That is an example of admin control. Eh, sir, paano yung na mga nagpapakain sa layon? How do we apply admin control? Okay, we... We provide them with standard operating procedure. Paano ba ang pagpapakain sa layon? Ah, sir, meron kaming SOP. Standard operating procedure. That is admin control. Okay? So training, education, standard operating procedures, policies, directives. Eh, sir, paano kaya kung maglagay tayo ng signage? Okay lang ba yun? Yes. Signage is also your admin control. O, lagay kayo ng signage. Okay. Ano bang signage sila lagay natin? Tama ba? Uh, lion, do not eat me. Ganun ba? <laughs> Ang signage mo, lion, do not eat me. Or it's the other way around. Dapat ba? Uh, ano bang maganda? Beware. No? Or uh, observe uh, safe distance away from the lion. O, yun, mga signage. No? Yun, mga admin control yun. No? O kaya ilimit natin no? yung pwede lang mag-access sa lion yung mga 18 years old and above. For those who are below 18, dapat ang layo nila is nasa 10 meters. 5 meters. Ah, ganun, no? Admin control yon. Ang focus natin sa tao. Ang focus natin sa tao rather than dun sa hazard. At ang pinakamahina sa lahat, uh, the least effective one is the PPE. Mga personal protective equipment. Okay. Uh, sir, bakit pinakamahina ang PPE among the five? Pag nagsuot ba ako ng hard hat, ibig sabihin ba nun, hindi na ako kagagati ng layon? 
or ng tiger? Yes or no? <laughs> Pag naka-hard hat kayo, is that a guarantee na hindi na kayo kakagati ng lion? Hindi, no? It's just a protection. Okay, it, it is just a protection between you and the hazard. But it doesn't have the capability to uh, reduce or eliminate the hazard itself. Wala. It's just a frail barrier, no? Kaya siya yung pinakamahina among the five, the uh, PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. Mga hard hat, safety shoes, uh, ano pa ba? Uh, respirator, goggles, spectacles, yan. Mga PPE. Uh, you know? So, gumawa ako ng simpleng example para mas madali ninyong ma-adapt. You maintindihan how these principles work, how these controls work. Okay? So, last few slides. What is unsafe acts? What is unsafe conditions? Discuss natin. But bago yan, i-discuss muna natin ano ba ang accident. No? Ito, sobrang haba ng definition. I-shortcut ko na lang. No? Uh, pag sinabi natin aksidente, that is unplanned, unexpected, uninvited. No? Pag sinabing aksidente, that is something that we don't expect to happen. Uh, that is something that, that is not normal, no? Something that is unexpected that requires immediate action. No? Yun lang. Yun lang ang simple definition ng accident. No? No. Unwanted, uninvited, unanticipated event that requires immediate action. No? So, that is accident. What is safety? Uh, ang safety naman is freedom from accident. Kung baga, ano yan eh? Magkasalungat, no? Okay. Kapag sobrang dami ng aksidente sa kumpanya ninyo, it means that your safety implementation is not doing well. Samantala, kapag konti yung aksidente ninyo or wala kayong aksidente, what does it mean? It means that your safety implementation is doing very good. Kasi nga, wala kayong aksidente eh. So that's how we ano, compare safety versus accident. Okay? So yan ang pinagkakaiba ng dalawa. What is hazard? Uh, kanina, diniscuss ko na to. Uh, anything, uh, anything that has the potential to cause harm or injury to somebody. Ang hazard, kinakailangan mo na magkaroon ng interaction sa tao bago mangyari ang aksidente. Ang hazard, nananatiling hazard until magkaroon ng interaction sa tao. O pag nagkaroon ng interaction ng hazard sa tao, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag na hazardous event. And this hazardous event may or may not lead to an injury. Okay, doon na nagkakaroon ng aksidente, no? Pag nagkaroon ng hazardous event, it can lead to near miss or it can lead to accident. Pag sa pag sinabing near miss, may nangyaring contact sa hazard at sa tao pero walang injury. Halimbawa, natapilo ka, pero nung nat nung natapilo ka, yung bagsak mo, naharang mo ng dalawang kamay mo. Wala naman akong tama, wala naman akong injury, near miss yun. Pero kung natapilo ka, tumama yung ulo mo, nagkabukol ka, injury yun. Accident yun. <laughs> Pero pag walang injury nangyari, near miss ang tawag doon, munti ka na. That's, that's the difference between accident and near miss. Pag sinabing unsafe act, gawa ng tao. Yan lang ang basic definition yan. Unsafe act, something that is uh, induced by human. No? Something that is uh, uh, provoked by human. No? Pumasok ka ng opisina ng lasing, unsafe condition. Ay, sorry, unsafe act. Sorry, sorry. Unsafe act. 
Uh, if you enter your company and if you are under the influence of drugs, that is unsafe act. Uh, horse playing, pagharutan sa loob ng company, <laughs> unsafe act yan. No? Nagdrive ka ng uh, service vehicle ng company, hindi ka naman authorized driver, wala ka naman lisensya, unsafe act yun. Uh, yung mga examples ng mga unsafe act. Nag-repair ka ng electrical equipment, hindi ka naman electrician, you are. That is an example of unsafe act. O, yan, mga examples niya. Nakalagay PPE area, pumasok ka, wala kang hard hat, unsafe act yun. O, yan ang mga examples ng unsafe acts. No? Human, ano, human made, human induced. Samantala, pag sinabi naman unsafe conditions, Ito yung nakikita natin in the environment. Uh, something that is tangible, no? something that is visible. Uh, something that originates from the working environment. Okay. May nakita kang mga uh, accumul accumulation ng mga, ng mga combustible material, unsafe condition yun. May nakita kang live wire, Unsafe condition yun. Nakita mo yung receptacle ng outlet mo, wala na. Unsafe condition yun. O, nakita mo yung wiring ng handrail, tanggal na yung double insulation. Unsafe condition yun. No? Okay. Maingay na makina, no? noisy uh, equipment. That is unsafe condition. No? Yan ang mga examples ng unsafe condition. Okay, basically 88% ng ano, 88% ng nangyayaring aksidente. Uh, according to uh, Herbert Henrich, ay uh, dulot daw ng unsafe acts. At 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 10% naman daw ng mga nangyayaring aksidente, according to Henrich, is caused by unsafe conditions. So, 88 plus 10, that is 98%. O, ibig sabihin nun, 98% daw ng aksidente can be prevented. Uh, only the 2% are unavoidable. Okay, as, uh, sir, ano bang sinasabi mong un unavoidable na to? Ito yung mga natural disaster like typhoon, earthquake, volcanic eruption that we don't have control. No? Something that we cannot control from happening. Yan ang, yan, ang, yan ang mga 2% ng mga unavoidable. But 98% of the accidents can be prevented according to Henrich. Okay? Ayan, mga causes ng accident, it can be unsafe act, unsafe condition. Okay? Accident is 98% preventable on only 2% cannot be. Okay, so... Pagdating sa impact ng aksidente, may dalawa tayong klase, direct and indirect costs. Parang iceberg yan, no? Pag may naaksidente, ang nakikita lang na dahilan or ang impact, sorry, is yung mga direct cost. Hindi nila alam na mas may malalim pa palang epekto ang pagkakaroon ng aksidente na tinatawag natin na indirect cost. No? Parang iceberg, di ba? Yung iceberg... Nakakita na ba kayo ng iceberg? Ako, ako nakakita na. Ice lang, pero walang berg. <laughs> Mayroon sa rep namin ice, pero walang berg. <laughs> okay, so yan ang dahilan, di ba? Bumangga dyan yung sinakya ni ano? Yung sa Titanic, si Jack and Rose, di ba? Dyan bumangga yung uh, ship. O kung bakit sila nagkaroon ng casualty, no? So, ang nakikita lang sa iceberg is the tip. Whereas the uh, the larger surface of the iceberg is submerged under the sea. Something that we cannot see. Yan. O, example ng mga direct cost. Okay, pag, na, pag may na-hospital, bayaran ang medical. Pag may nasirang equipment, ipaayos. Pag may insurance yung nabiktima, bigyan ng insurance. I-claim yung insurance. 
kung may legal implication, magbayad, monetary. O yun lang nakikita natin, no? For some for some top management, no? Ang nakikita nila ang impact ng aksidente, direct cost lang eh. Hindi nila alam na may mas malala pa pa lang epekto ang aksidente uh, as, repre as represented by the indirect cost. O, yan. Mawalan ka ng tao. Halimbawa, sampu yung na-aksidente, may impact yun sa productivity. Uh, sir, bakit may impact sa productivity? Kasi nawalan ka ng manpower. The lesser the manpower that you have, the lesser the productivity. The lesser the productivity is the lesser the profit that the company can produce. Oh, ibig sabihin, may impact sa profit ng company. Oh, yan lang din nakikita ng mga top management minsan. No? Mabawalan ka ng efficiency, income. Actually, hindi lang yung worker ang nagsasuffer, no? even the family members of the worker. Oh, yung other employees, no? kinakailangan nila mag-overtime. Just to uh, compensate for the for the lost hours in your production. Yung supervisor, imbis na magtatrabaho bilang supervisor, hindi. Kasi sasama sa investigation, sasama sa hospital. No? So nakikita din yung mga indirect impact, no? Oh, so pag pag hindi nakapasok yung employee, magte-train na naman ng panibagong employee. Mag-hire na naman. Okay, additional gasto sa company, sa supervisor, sa kanino pa. Yan, replacement. Uh, lalo na pag nagkaroon ng disability yung empleyado, no? Of course, you cannot you cannot let the operations run without the replacement for that person na na aksidente. Kasi nga kukulangin kayo sa maning eh. Kukulangin kayo sa personnel. So you need to you need to do rehiring. And upon rehiring, you need to train again the employee. Ganong ganong kabigat, no? Ganong kahirap pag nagkakaroon ng aksidente kaya as much as possible we avoid uh, accidents. That includes equipment downtime. Ayun, okay? So uh, that ends my first topic. Uh, before I proceed to the next topic, meron po ba kayong mga tanong, clarifications, concerns uh, about our first topic, no? Introduction to uh, occupational safety and health. Uh, kasi ang next topic natin, ano na? Uh, about sa ano na tayo? Module 2. If may mga questions po ha, don't hesitate na magtanong. Mag-chat lang po. Ay, teka. teka, teka. So that ends my first topic. Ah, kung wala na, so maybe we can now jump into the next topic. Yung ating uh, module number 2. Yan. Di module number 2 na tayo. Okay? So, uh, nakikita na po yung aking screen, ma'am? Sir? Okay na ba? Okay? Sige. So, let's uh, start with housekeeping safety. Ito yung ano natin, program timeline for this topic. Uh, under module 2, we have five elements. Uh, we will discuss fire safety, housekeeping safety, electrical safety, material handling and storage, machine safety. Yeah. Okay? Just to uh, repeat, pag sinabi natin hazard, ano ulit yun? Anything that has the potential to cause harm or injury to your employees. Okay, just to reiterate, ano nga yung risk? Pag sinabing risk, ito yung probability or chance 
na ang hazardous event ay mangyayari. At kung mangyari man ito, gaano kalala ang pwedeng maging impact? O, yan naman ang risk na tinatawag. No? Okay? Kailan, nag kailan nagkakaroon ng aksidente? Kapag nagkaroon ng contact ang tao at ang hazard, nagkakaroon ng hazardous event. Pag nagkaroon ng hazardous event, ito ay pwedeng magdulot ng aksidente or near miss. Pag near miss, walang injury. Pag aksidente, may injury. O, yun na. O, yun na. Sinortcut ko na yung kanina ha? para wag yung makalimutan. Okay. So, uh, let's first discuss what 5S is. Okay. Ano ba ang 5S na yan? So, basically, sa opisina natin, uh, may tinatawag tayo sa safety na three common office accidents. No? Uh, yung sleep, trip, and fall. Ayan. May tinatawag tayo sa company na common office accidents. Sleep, trip, and fall. No? Okay. Sabi ng isang participant, ah, Sir, totoo yan. Kasi sir, sabi niya, totoo yan sir na sleep trip in Paul. Kasi ako, sabi niya, kasi ako sir na Paul na. Sabi ko, oh sir, kumusta ka? Saan ka na Paul? Sabi nung isang participant, na Paul ako sir sa maling tao. <laughs> Hugot pala, no? Sabi ko, ay, ibang usapan yan sir. Okay. Akala ko na Paul ka from height. Yung pala na Paul ka sa maling tao. Sabi ko, masakit yan, sir. Lalo na pag ginaya ka sa Baguio as a friend only. Nako, masakit yan. Oh, si sino na ba dito nayaya sa Baguio as a friend? <laughs> Meron na ba dito nayaya sa Baguio as a friend? Okay. <laughs> Nauuso talaga ang mga chismis ngayon sa FB, ha? <laughs> okay. O, oh, late na lang. Late na ata ako naka, ano yan, nakasagap ng balita sa mga ganyan. Baguio as a friend. Hirap, no? It hurts, you know? <laughs> okay, sige. Balik tayo dito. So, uh, risk assessment for poor housekeeping. So, consider the following. General lifting and carrying. Uh, cleaning using the equipment. Yan. Kasi pag, sin pag sinabing housekeeping... Gumagamit tayo dyan ng mga disinfectants. Okay. Uh, gumagamit tayo dyan ng mga detergents. Then cleaning. Uh, exposure to communicable diseases. Yan. Lalo na sa mga laboratory. Nag-handle sila ng mga human specimen. No? Stool, urine, saliva. So, they tend to uh, get exposed to uh, communicable diseases like laboratory, mga medtech, no? Uh, medtechs. Uh, loan working. Nagtatrabaho mag-isa. No? Malungkot yan. Okay. Sleep, trip, and fall. O, oh, yung sinabi ko kanina. Uh, pag sinabing sleep, nadulas. Pag sinabing trip, natalisod, no? Pag sinabing fall, Nahulog. O, oh, yan ang meaning yan. Sleep, trip, and fall. And use of PPE. Um, minsan, ang nakakatakot sa poor housekeeping, yung mga mga excessive accumulation ng mga combustible materials and flammable materials na tinatawag natin sa safety na fire loading. Uh, fire loading ang tawag dyan. If there is an excessive accumulation of flammable and combustible material in a room, uh, we call it as fire loading. Uh, that is something that we need to prevent. Uh, kasi the more the, the more the fuel that is accumulated within a certain area, the chance for fire to happen is high. No? Malalaman nyo mamaya sa fire safety kung bakit. Uh, ano pa? Uncleared waste. Dapat yung mga basurahan natin, dapat three ports pa lang ang laman, tinatapo na yan. Huwag na natin hintayin mag-overflow. 
Ah, yung mga Pinoy, no? Hindi pa naman puno yung basura. Mamaya muna itapon. Hindi ganun. <laughs> Dapat reports pa lang tinatapon na yan. Kasi pag nagkaroon niya ng overflowing ang trash bin, that is something that invites uh, and it can harbor no? mga pests, mga uh, ipis, so yan. Langgam. Ano pa? Litter job equipment, tools and materials. Mga mga nagkalat, no? Mga hazards yan. Uh, poor housekeeping could conceal hazards which would normally be, be normally be visible to be cleared. Yan. Alibawa, yung mga wiring yung mga wiring ninyo, no? O, nasa ilalim pala ng mga nasa ilalim tinagay niyo sa ilalim ng cover no ba bawal yun no it can limit it can limit workspace forcing workers to adapt for working posture o dapat diyan sa opisina ninyo may ano yan proper ano yan ilang usually ano yan 11.5 cubic meters per worker no Ayan ang ano diyan yung sa bawat worker dapat ganoon yung minimum space no 11.5 cubic meters per worker uh, Sabi sa Dolly O standard rule 1060 uh, premises of the establishment uh, Sa isang worker dapat meron kang proper spacing sa sarili mo workstation mo uh, minimum Dapat meron kang 11.5 cubic meters per worker. Sabi sa Rule 1016. No? Uh, poor housekeeping can maximize the severity and consequences of accidents. Correct. It could result to blockage of the emergency exit. Bawal yan. Uh, pag nakita kayo niya ni Dole, uh, automatic violation niya ng uh, Rule 1940. Air protection and control ng Dole O standard, no? Maliwanag niya lakasaad yan sa batas, ha? Okay. Fire exit doors and firefighting equipment must be free from obstruction all the time. O, yan. So, yung mga fire extinguisher ninyo, mga evacuation plan, mga fire exit doors and other fire exit signage, it should not be blocked, no? At all times. O, nasa batas yan, na Rule 1940. Fire protection and control. Safety hazard yan. Iwasan natin yung mangyari yung mga ganyan. Okay. Uh, poor housekeeping, pwede rin kayong magkasakit. Uh, kasi nga, yung pag-harbor ng mga pest, rodents, mosquitoes, no? uh, and other vectors, uh, yan, that can lead to illness. No? Uh, example na lang is, Due to poor housekeeping, pag may mga baha, no? Yung anong sakit yun? Leptospirosis, di ba? Ihi ng daga. O, yan. Pwede ka rin makuryente. Electrical shock. Ma Magkalacerate. Pag sinabing amputation, pwede ka maputulan, no? At pwede ka rin ma-expose sa mga sardo substances. So, marami. Maraming hazards, no? ang uh, dinudulot ng uh, hindi magandang housekeeping. So sana sa company ninyo, meron kayong program about 5S. Uh, actually, 7S na nga ngayon eh. Kasi may, may nadagdag ng dalawa. Uh, sort, sweep, systemat ay, sorry, sort, systematize, sweep, sanitize, self-discipline, safety, and spirit. Or team spirit. Oh. 7S na. Oh, dati 5S lang yan. Ngayon, 7S na. No? Sort. Systematize. Sweep. Sanitize. Self-discipline. Safety and spirit. Or team spirit. Oh, yan. 7S na tayo ngayon. No? Oh, benefits. Uh, kapag nag-5S kayo in the company, uh, these are the benefits that you will get out of it. Okay. Reduce handling. 
Okay. May iwasan yung mga slip and trip accidents. Walang mga spilled liquids. I spilled uh, oil. No? Chemicals. Mababawasan din yung mga fire hazard. Yung mga fire loading na tinatawag. Okay? Uh, better control of tools and materials including inventory and supplies and more efficient equipment cleanup and maintenance. Uh, better hygienic conditions. Oh. Masarap magtrabaho sa isang opisina na malinis, no? Okay, masarap magtrabaho sa isang opisina na safe at and at the same time uh, and at the same time free from littered objects. Okay? More effective use of space. Reduce property damage by improving. Okay. Preventive maintenance. Less janitorial work. Oh, pati yung mga janitor natin mababawasan ng trabaho. If we maintain uh, good housekeeping in our workplace. Improve moral. Okay. May mga employees na gusto nilang pumapasok everyday. Because they like the ambience of their workplace. Because they like how clean their workplace is. Diba? Because they like the aircon. <laughs> Yung iba pumapasok lang pala sa opisina kasi magkiki-aircon lang. No? Okay. So, yun. Improve productivity, of course. Okay. Kasi pag spacious ang daan, ah, uh, Nakakatulong ito para maging time efficient tayo, matapos natin ang mas mabilis ang ating mga trabaho. Yan ang advantage ng good housekeeping. No? Okay, so, a quick discussion about fire safety. Uh, sabi nga ng barkada ko, uh, okay ng okay ng manakawan daw, wag lang masunugan. <laughs> sabi niya, mas okay na daw ma ng mga nakawan kaysa mga sunugan in terms of risk. Okay, kasi yung mga magnanakaw at least they target only the valuable items concealed sa bahay nyo. But, but speaking of sunog, ang sunog walang pinipili. No matter how valuable the uh, your jewelries are, no matter how valuable or costly your uh, appliances are, susunugin ang susunugin niya ng sunog. <laughs> okay, in terms of the impact, in terms of severity, mas malaki ang impact ng sunog kaysa sa manakawan ka. Okay, so tama, but much better kung maiwasan natin pareho, no? Uh, iwas sunog, iwas nakaw. Okay, so that's the ano Ito yung logic dito, no? And to give you some ano, some uh, uh, tragic events that happened in the Philippines over the years ago. Ayan, mga ito yung mga nangyari before, no? Ozone disco. Yan, bachelor's party yan, no? Okay, nag ano sila na in overload nila. Inexceed nila yung capacity ng ano ng yung diskohan no? at nangyari diyan nung nagkaroon ng spark nagkaroon ng stampede no labasan yung mga nagattend unfortunately yung orientation ng door ano siya uh, ano siya pull from inside no pull from inside tama no? baliktad so dapat push Push from inside dapat, hindi pull from inside. Ang nangyari, due to the stampede, natulak yung mga tao na nasa harapan. Therefore, di nakalabas. Kasi nga, para mabuksan mo yung pintuan, iilain mo pa loob. Hindi mo itutulak. Therefore, yan, nangyari. Nagkaroon ng casualty. 162 deaths. Ozone disco fire. Sa Quezon City, yung Manor Hotel, 75 deaths. Lang Center, Tunog din palang lang center. No? 
Uh, just recently, yung anong hospital yon PGH, di ba? Nasunog din yung third floor ata yon So, marami tayong cases ng fire, no? Uh, ano pa? Damas, di Islas, di Pilipinas. Ito naman, ano to? Bahay Ampunan to. Uh, located somewhere in Paco, Manila. Yan. Hindi nakalabas yung mga bata kasi may mga grills. Walang point of exit. Nakulong. Oh, therefore, nagkaroon ng 23 deaths uh, because of this tragic incident. No? Damas, di Islas, di Pilipinas. Bahay Ampunan. Okay, bakit nga ba nakakamatay ang sunog? Actually guys, hindi yung sunog mismo ang uh, common kung bakit namamatay ang mga tao. It's because of what? It's because of the uh, toxic fumes. Na it's because of the toxic, toxic fumes that is generated by fire. Oh, yeah. Mga carbon monoxide, CO2. Imagine niyo ah, ang sunog kalaban natin sa oxygen, kaagaw natin sa oxygen. No? Okay. Parang si ano yan, may kaagaw, di ba? Ah, parang si LJ Reyes yan. Okay. Kaagaw niya si Yen Santos kay Paulo Contis. O, oh, ganun yun. <laughs> oh, may kaagaw, no? So, Ano pang ini-emit ng ano ng fire? Uh, carbon dioxide, hydrogen cyanide, uh, toxic fumes yan no? Nitrogen oxide, dioxide and other toxic gases. So basically, because of the consumption of oxygen doon sa area, okay, ang tendency is for us to get suffocated. Bakit tayo na sa suffocate? Kasi nga wala nang oxygen. Because that is being consumed by fire. So, so the tendency in medical, nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na asphyxia. Uh, asphyxia meaning, nagkakaroon tayo, nawawalan tayo ng nasasupukit because of lack of oxygen. Yan, asphyxia, insufficient oxygen. Uh, third reason kung bakit namamatay it's because of hyperthermia. Yan. Nasunog, burn, no? Due to uh, excessive heat. Okay, so uh, ano pa? Uh Usually ang cost ng fire no pag na-expose tayo sa extreme heat. Oh, nagkakaroon tayo ng pulmonary swelling. Yung lungs natin nag-expand because of the build up of the pressure internal. No? Ang tawag diyan edema oh, or pulmonary swelling. No? Oh, nagkakaroon pa ng blood congestion. Nag-accumulate nag yung dugo no. Imagine niyo yung lungs natin nag-expand. Tapos nagkakaroon ng accumulation ng dugo. Okay, backdraft. Okay, ano ba yung backdraft na tinatawag? Uh, yung backdraft, ano yan? Uh, Oxygen-induced yan, no? Halimbawa, yung apoy, almost mamatay na, wala na. O, tapos, binuksan mo yung bintana, Biglang pumasok yung oxygen. O, ang pwedeng mangyari dyan, uh, because of the sudden introduction ng oxygen doon sa room, o nagtitrigger yun ang tinatawag na explosion, ang tawag doon backdraft. Y yung suddenly, nag-introduce ka ng ventilation, no? pumasok yung oxygen suddenly doon sa area. Okay? So sudden, ano, Sudden introduction ng oxygen doon sa room na nasusunog can lead to explosion. Backdraft ang tawag dyan. Or smoke explosion. Marami din namamatay dyan, lalo na mga bumbero. 
Uh, maraming namamatay na bumbero because of backdraft. Uh, what is fire? Okay, what is fire? Uh, it is defined as the frequent or the rapid oxidation with the evolution of light and heat. It is the chemical union of heat, fuel, and oxygen. Okay, so ito po yun ha. So, hindi magkakaroon ng sunog kung walang fuel, heat, oxygen, and uh, without the three together, walang chemical reaction na nangyayari. Therefore, without any of the component, no fire will happen. So, isa-isahin natin, ano ba yung mga components ng fire? Number one is fuel. Okay. Pag sinabi guys, fuel, it can be solid, it can be liquid, it can be gas. No? Ah, that, this is something that the fire will burn to continue its combustion. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Parang panggatong guys, kung nagsasaing kayo, di ba? Pag nagsasaing kayo ng yung traditional method, Ah, kasi ngayon nata, puro na rice cooker ata ngayon eh. <laughs> yung mga traditional method, no? Di ba pagluto na yung saing, yung sinaing natin, unti-unti na natin tinatanggal yung panggatong, namamatay yung sunog pag walang panggatong. Oh, that is fuel, no? Uh, something that the fire needs in order to sustain its combustion, no? Its ignition. Okay. Ang fuel, ano yan? Ah... Uh, Ang fuel, it can be combustible, it can be flammable. Okay, so, uh, ano ba sir ang difference ng uh, flammable at combustible? Uh, ang difference po nila is in terms of the flash point. Iba ang flash point ng combustible material, iba naman ang flash point ng flammable material. Pag sinabing flash point, Ito yung pinakamababang temperatura na kapag na-expose ang fuel, mabilis siyang mag-ignite. Okay? Ito yung pinakamababang temperature na pag inintroduce mo sa isang object, mabilis na liliyab yung object. O, yan ang flash point. Kasi masyadong technical lang nakalagay dyan. Eh. Simplify lang natin. Pinaka, pinaka mababang temperatura na pag inintroduce mo sa isang substance or object, liliyab ka agad yung object. Take, take note of pinaka mababang temperatura, that is flash point. Okay. Y yung mga flammable material, less than 37.8 degrees Celsius na temperature, pag nag-introduce ka ng temperature in less than 37.8, automatic liliyab Liliyab yung substance, yung fuel. Ang tawag sa kanila, flammable. Whereas, pag sinabi naman combustible, kinakailangan mo ng more than 37.8 degrees Celsius bago lumiyab yung isang substance. Example. Try nyong sindihan yung gasolina. Mabilis ba magliyab? Hindi. Gasolina. Ang gasolina, di ba, flammable yan? Kasi mabilis yan mag-ignite. Konting temperature lang liliyab yan. <laughs> Kaya ang gasolina is an example of your flammable. Okay? Samantala, ang combustible, alimbawa, dos por dos. Kumuha kayo ng dos por dos. Try nyong sunugin ang dos por dos gamit lighter. Ewan ko lang kung hindi kayo abuti ng sham-sham. <laughs> abuti kayo ng sham-sham dyan bago nyo masunog yung dos por dos gamit lang lighter. Kasi kinakailangan mo ng mas malaking temperature para masunog mo yung dos por dos. Kaya ang tawag sa dos por dos, combustible. Samantala ang gasolina, Kahit lighter lang gamit mo, silyaban mong gasolina, madali siya mag-ignite. Madaling magliyab. Kasi nga ang gasolina, flammable yan. 
Kahit mababa sa 37.8 na temperatura, liliyab yan. Kaya ang gasolina, flammable. Ang dos por dos, combustible. Uh, kasi ang diferensya nila is pagdating sa flashpoint natin. Again, ang flashpoint, pinakamababang pinaka temperatura na, pin, na, na kapag introduce mo sa isang object, madali siyang liliyab. Okay. Kasi ma medyo technical to eh. Ayun ang pinaka simplest explanation about it. Okay, next component oxygen, no? Wait lang, wala ako. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Share screen ulit ako, ha? Uh, sir Lucky, papasuyo po, sir, na pa-enable po yung share screening. Uh, sorry. <laughs> na Nag-disconnect ako saglit. Wait lang po, ha? Ipapano lang ako. Ayan. Thank you, sir. All right. Ayun, ha? Nakikita na po ba, sir, ma'am, yung screen ko? Okay na? All right, salamat po. So again, uh, we need 16% ng uh, oxygen para ma makapag uh, start ng fire. Uh, less than 16%, less than 16% ng oxygen, the fire will normally go out. Yan. Heat, uh, ano naman yung heat? Ito yung mga sources ng ignition, kagaya ng uh, friction. Kaya di ba, pag may earthquake, kinakailangan may standby ta lagi tayo na firefighting equipment. Kasi pag may earthquake, usually nagkikiskisa ng mga wiring, di ba? And because of that, it creates friction, no? Uh, friction creates heat, no? And... Uh, as we all know, yung heat is a component of fire. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng sunog. Ano pa bang example ng sources ng ignition or heat? Lighter, no? Lighter. Uh, yan, match, matches. Uh, thermal spark. Friction. Torches. O yan, mga sources ng, ano, no? ng heat. Yan. Ano pa? Naked flames, external sparks. Ayan, mga ano natin yan. Sources ng heat. Smoking. Uh, even ano, smoking, no? Uh, kaya nga, meron tayong executive order number 26 ni President Duterte, no? Uh, that was signed by President Duterte. Anong year ba yun? Matagal na ata. 2019, 18? Something like that. So, meron tayong executive order number 26, no? Yung nationwide smoking ban. Hindi naman sinasabing bawal naman ni Garillo. It's just that you need to uh, establish your own uh, designated smoking area for your company. 
So, doon lang kayo mag uh, Bawal ang paninigarilyo sa mga public places like hospital, palengke, church. You should only smoke at the designated smoking area. Pag nahuli kayo, may mga tinatawag na mga environmental police. Uh, nag kayo dyan sa may gilid, sa may public place. Yun, uhulihin kayo. May multa. No? Ano pa? Hot surface, static electricity. Okay. Static electricity, yung tipong minsan, di ba? Napahawak lang kayo sa doorknob. Para kayong nakuryente, no? Uh, ano bang simple, simple explanation ng static electricity? Uh, ganito po kasi yan. Tayo, halimbawa, naglalakad tayo, no? Uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, contact with the floor, no? So, it generates what? Friction, no? Uh, applying the principles of physics, no? Pag nagkakaroon ng contact, especially metal to metal, nagre-release tayo ng mga tinatawag na electrons. O, di ba? Meron tayong uh, neutron, no? Uh, electrons, mga ano lang sa atom, di ba? Kung, kung, kung natatandaan nyo pa yung physics natin, yung atom, di ba? May mga positive charges, negative charges. Uh, protons, positive charges. Electrons, negative charges. Neutron, normal charges. So, pag nagkagaroon ng friction, the tendency is for our body to release electrons. No? Yung electrons natin, it, it, it is transferred from the body going to other uh, conductive objects. No? Ngayon, ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng imbalance sa ating charges no, sa katawan. Nagiging ano tayo, more on positive charges tayo. So ngayon, in an attempt to uh, in an attempt of the body to normalize the charges in our atom, pag napahawa ka sa doorknob, yung mga electrons na nasa doorknob <laughs> will suddenly enter your body to normalize yung charges natin sa katawan. Kaya minsan, paghawak nyo ng doorknob para kayong na kikiliti, di ba? <laughs> para kayong nakukuryente. Pag bakit kaya umawak lang naman ako ng doorknob, nakuryente ako. Uh, kasi yung mga pre-electrons na nasa doorknob will suddenly enter your body in an attempt to balance your electrical charges in the body. Uh, yun ang tinatawag natin na static electricity. That's the principle, no? Kaya, uh, that's static electricity. Uh, ito na. So, sa kabuuan, ayan na. If uh, the combination of fire, I sorry, the combination of fuel, heat, and oxygen leads to chemical reaction, and the chemical reaction will lead to fire. Uh, ayan na. So, if you remove any of the component, no fire will happen. No fire will occur. The three, comp the three components must be put together for a fire to occur. Without any of the component, no fire will, takes, will take place. Okay, dapat kompleto. Fuel, heat, and oxygen for a chemical reaction to happen. Ang tawag dyan is the fire tetrahedron. No? Fire tetrahedron. Ang tawag dyan. Oh, yan. Parehas lang. Okay. May four stages din tayo ng fire. Oh, yung first stage is the incipient. Oh, pag sinabi po natin na incipient, nagsisimula pa lang. The fire is usually uh, less than three feet in height. And this is also known as ignition. Uh, Kung baga, the fire has just started to, uh, has just started to ignite. Yan. So, ito yung stages ng fire na kinakailangan natin maagapan. Ito yung stage ng fire na kumbaga sa tao, baby pa. <laughs> baby pa yan, madali pa yan i-manage kasi baby pa eh. Okay, so, ganun yung principle, no? 
Sa incipient stage, dapat maagapan na natin yung sunog. Why? Kasi pag nag-escalate yan to the growth stage, medyo mahirap na. Okay. Pag sinabing growth stage, uh, this is the time wherein the fire is starting to uh, consume all the available fuel around. Okay. Lahat ng pwede niyang kainin, lahat ng fuel na kaya niyang i-burn, lahat ng fuel na available na kaya niyang i-consume, yan, magkisimula na yan kumain. Parang ano yan, parang kuting, no? Yung mga kuting, di ba, ang kukulit na. <laughs> Pag kumakain na, medyo makukulit na. Kagaya ng mga kuting ko dito, tatlo. Minsan, umakit sa Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, minsan, makikita mo, nasa lamesa na. Oh, medyo mahirap na i-contain, no? Nasa growth stage na. Uh, dito rin pwede mangyari yung tinatawag na flashover. Okay. Ano ba yung, ano ba yung tinatawag na flashover? Uh, to simplify yung definition ng flashover, ito yung uh, thermal driven. Ibig sabihin, okay. pag umabot ng almost 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, yung temperatura ng mga, mga fuel, nagkukos yun ng sudden, ano? parang sudden outburst. Uh, parang sudden flash no? ng sunog. Ang tawag doon is flashover. No? Kung makikita ninyo sa mga, ano, sa mga pelikula, ito yung parang yung, sa, yung parang ano, yung sunog parang bumuka. Mga ganun. <laughs> May sound effect pa. <laughs> Okay, so yan ang flashover, yung biglang sudden ano, pag-expand ng sunog, no? Kasi nga yung mga available fuel umabot ng ano, uh, almost 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit yung kadalang temperature. Flash burn ang tawag doon. Uh, maraming maraming namamatay din na firefighter diyan because of uh, the uh, dangers brought by the flashover. Diyan na siya nagkukonsume ng maraming oxygen. Okay. When the growth stage has reached its max and all the combustible materials have been ignited, ibig sabihin, yung lahat ng mga fuel na nasa paligid ay nasusunog na. O, kung baga wala nang natitirang fuel, nasusunogin pa lang. Uh, fully developed ng tawag dyan. No? Ito yung hottest phase of the fire and the most dangerous for anybody to trap within. Kumbaga, ito yung pinaka-peak niya. No? Ito yung pinaka-peak ng fire. Imagine all the, uh, all the fuel available around uh, have started igniting. Lahat na nasusunog. Samantala sa growth, kanina, Ano pa lang, nagsisimula pa lang kainin yung mga fuel. Dito, lahat ng fuel ignited na, nasusunog na. And last stage yung tinatawag natin na decay. Ito yung uh, stage ng fire wherein uh, the fire is starting to slow down. Uh, the fire is starting to uh, decay. No? Okay. Sir, bakit nagda-decay? Kasi nga, wala nang available na fuel siyang i-consume. Therefore, what will happen to the fire? The fire will slowly uh, will die. No? The, the fire will slowly uh, become weak. And eventually, uh, this is the stage where the uh, fire is uh, put out. No? Nawawala na. The key ang tawag dito. Uh, dito delikado yung backdraft na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina. Uh, akala nyo wala nang sunog, patay na, wala na, almost pawala na. Pero sa din introduction ng oxygen, biglang pasok yung oxygen sa room, yun, ang tawag doon is smoke explosion. No? Uh, ang tawag doon is backdraft naman. Ayan. Yan ang stages ng fire. No? Uh, fully developed yung pinaka-peak. Uh, fully developed yung pinaka-peak. Okay. 
At yung pinaka ano naman, pinaka shortest is the growth. Ay ang ano incipient pala. Sorry. Okay? So uh, going forward, ang classes natin ng fire, marami yan. Pag class A, cost by combustible material. Ano to? Mga wood, plastic, paper, rubber, no? Mga solid combustible. Class A fire ang tawag niyan. Pag class B naman, class B fire, ang ito yung mga liquid flammable like gas, liquid flammable kagaya ng gasolina, uh, thinner, grasa, uh, yan, ano pa, pintura, mga liquid naman, liquid flammable at gases. O, lahat ng gases like LPG, no? Class B yan, no? Okay, pag class C naman, electrical fire. Uh, ito yung sunog that has something to do with your electrical equipment like uh, due to a uh, short circuit, overloading of circuit. No? Uh, nasunog yung ano mo, yung uh, circuit breaker mo due to overloading. Halimbawa, ganyan. Mga klase yan. Pag, pag class D naman is combustible metal. Magnesium, sodium, titanium as an example. At pag class K naman, uh, recognized na to ng uh, National Fire Protection Association 10. No? So yung uh, kitchen fire is type K. Ito yung mga ginagamit yung mga saturated fats and oils sa mga cooking oil. No? O, ang tawag naman dyan is class K. Okay, kitchen, no? Letter K stands for kitchen. No, ayan. Okay. Okay. How how heat is transferred from one object to another object? Oh, conduction. Okay. Kapag ah, ito na, ito na example natin, you know. Pag sinabing conduction, direct contact. Pag sinunog mo yung ano, uh, yung papel, kasama ng ibang papel, automatically, pag magkadikit-dikit yung mga papel, no, masusunog din yung mga katabing papel. Ano tawag doon conduction? Uh, kasi nga, yung isang papel is directly in contact with another paper. Pag sinunog mo yung papel, masusunog din yung katabi niyang papel. Conduction yun. Uh, pag sinabi naman convection, yung uh, uh, air current na tinatawag. Okay. Yung hot air is transferred papunta sa taas. No? Uh, kaya minsan, di ba, pag dalawang palapag, pag nasunog yung ground floor, Automatic mga after how many hours na susunog na rin yung second floor. Why? Because heat is transferred through air currents na tinatawag. Uh, hot air goes up. Tumataas yung mainit na hangin. Whereas the cold air goes down. Yan ang principle ng convection. Eh sir, paano yung mga bahay na hindi naman magkadikit Pero bakit minsan susunog din? <laughs> no? Uh, magkadikit sir na bahay, pero bakit nasusunog din yung katabi? Pero hindi naman sila magkadikit. Uh, dahil yon sa electromagnetic waves, radiation waves, no? Uh, so pwedeng matransfer yung heat from one object to another kahit hindi sila magkadikit because of electromagnetic waves. Or radiation waves na tinatawag. O, ito ang example. Oh. Convection, hot air goes up. Conduction naman, direct contact ng uh, combustible to combustible. O, yan. Samantala, ang, ang radiation naman, yung kamay niya, no? hindi naman nakadikit. Pero bakit napapansin ko yung init, napifeel ko yung init? Kasi yung init, 
can be transferred through electromagnetic waves. Okay. Ang tawag naman dyan is radiation. So, ito yung mga ways how heat is transferred, no? Conduction, convection, radiation. Okay? Kung may question po ha, mag-chat lang. Let's go to electrical safety. Ang electricity, alam natin, useful yan. Because electricity is something that gives power to our lightings, di ba? Without electricity, we won't be able to charge our laptop. Without electricity, we cannot use the aircon, the electric fan. <laughs> diba? Unless it's battery operated. Ay, yun nga lang, ang electricity nakakatakot din because uh, yung maling paggamit ng electricity, if we do not respect electricity, no? oh, that is something that could compromise our safety. Nakalagay na nga, high voltage, hawakan pa. <laughs> okay, para lang testing in, no? Yung iba, hindi gumagamit ng tester, no? Ang ginagamit lang kamay. Matesting nga kung talagang malakas ang kuryente nito. Hawakan pa. Nung nakuryente, <laughs> dun niya lang na-realize na, ay, masakit pala. <laughs> no? ah, Ganoon ang mga tao minsan, no? Electricity is energy looking for some place to go. It flows through a circuit, di ba? Okay, so kinakailangan there's there's a circuit, no? Where the electricity will flow. When it finds the path of least resistance, whether it's a light bulb, motor, or human being, it is going to take that path. Oh, yan. As long as mababa ang resistance, the electricity will flow. Mamaya, malalaman ninyo yung Ohm's law. Tandaan nyo pa ba yung Ohm's law? I is equal to V over R. Current is equal to voltage. Voltage. Sa mga electrical engineers, kung meron man dito, mas familiar kayo dito. No? I is represented by current. V voltage, R is resistance. So I is equal to voltage divided by resistance. Yan ang finormulate ni, ano, ni Ohm's law. So, what is current? Pag sinabi pong current, ito yung amount ng electricity na dumadaloy sa isang circuit. Yun lang, no? Ito yung volume, no? Concentration or the amount ng electricity na dumadaloy sa isang circuit. Pag sinabi naman natin voltage, ito yung lakas. Ito yung pressure ng electricity na dumadaloy sa isang circuit. Yung kuryente, yung volume, yung amount yung voltage, ito yung lakas, yung puwersa, yung pressure no? ng isang electricity na dumadaloy sa isang circuit. Okay? Ayan ang difference niyan. Uh, what else? Okay. What's the power drawn by computing equipment and fault current? Any current that is not in its intended form. Pat, o yan. Ito yung delikado, yung mga fault current na tinatawag. Kasi yung mga ginagamit natin, mga sa bahay, nakaano yan, nakasirket yan. Pinapalo natin ang Philippine Electrical Code. May proper circuiting procedures, everything. So, any current that is not in its intended pat, ang tawag dyan is fault current. Ito, simple, simple na lang to, no? Conductor, it allows the flow of electricity. Insulator, it resists the flow of electricity. O, yan ang definition niyan, no? Usually, sa mga wiring, ang ginagamit dyan, copper. 
Kasi ang copper, it's a very good conductor of electricity. Okay? Ang insulator naman, ano to? Mga rubber, plastic. O, kaya nga ang gloves natin is makapal. Electrical gloves, no? Rubber gloves. Kasi rubber is an insulator. Ayan, mga conductor, no? Mostly, mga metals, no? Gold, silver, copper, etc. Okay. Mga insulator naman, rubber, porcelain, asbestos. Kasi ang asbestos, ginagamit yan na thermal insulation. Eh. At, and at the same time, insulator siya. Yun nga lang, asbestos is delikado. Ayan. Uh, ang epekto ng kuryente sa ating katawan is na may measure sa pamamagitan ng milliampere. Hindi tayo gumagamit ng ampere as unit of measurement. Pagdating sa epekto ng kuryente sa katawan. Ang ginagamit lang natin is milliampere. O, ayan. O, ayan. Mga 1 milliampere, tingling sensation lang yan. 6 to 25, pag nakuryente ka, pwede mo pang mawidraw yung katawan mo no? sa source. For, for, for female, 9 to 30 for male. The more na lumalaki yung milliampere, mas delikado. Oh, it can lead to respiratory paralysis. Kung sinabing paralysis, it can uh, stop your breathing. No? It can stop the uh, function of your respiratory system. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng paralysis. 1 to 4.3 ampere, mas malaki na. No? Kasi ito milliampere lang, ito amperahin na. It can lead to ventricular fibrillation. Uh, in medical, pag sinabi natin fibrillation, nagkakaroon ng uh, irregularity pagdating sa rhythm ng ating puso. No? Delikado yun. Pwede kang mamatay. Okay? It can lead to electrical shock burns. Pwede second, first degree, second degree, third degree. Depende sa uh, amount of the electricity sa voltahe. Depende sa route ng electricity at depende rin sa duration. Gaano ka tagal dumalo yung electricity sa katawan mo. Okay, okay so pag sinabing electrical shock, yung katawan natin ang ginagamit bilang isang conductor of electricity. Okay, yan. That's uh, electrical shock na tinatawag, no? Kasi nga ang human body no, alam nyo naman that uh, our human body is made up of 70 to 80% of fluid. Okay, uh, that 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 makes human body vulnerable to electrical shock. Uh, that makes a human body a very good conductor for electricity. Okay, uh, kinakailangan natin ng electrical safety kasi tayo human itself is a conductor of electricity. Ayun. Pasintabi sa picture Pag nakuryente ka, may tinatawag yan na entry point at exit point. Usually, ang entry point niyan sa kamay, exit point niya sa paa. Okay. Pasintabi po, medyo maselan. Uh, kapag ang kuryente naman dumaloy sa mga vital organs ng ating katawan, mas delikado. Uh, especially sa puso. No? Kasi yung electricity, it is something that can impact the uh, electrical conduct conductivity of your heart. Uh, it can uh, irregular, irregularize, it can disrupt the rhythm of your heart, no? heartbeat, uh, fibrillation ang tawag dyan. Uh, pwede kang masunog. Uh, may it be first, second, or third degree. No? Yeah, sorry, pasintabi sa picture po, medyo maselan. No? Yan, third degree yan. Okay. Pag, second degree, gas, pag second degree kasi may mga blister yan, no? Blister formation. Pag first degree, ano lang, namula lang. No? Nasunburn ka, namula. First degree yan. Whereas, pag sinabi natin second degree, may mga nabuong mga blister. Yun yung may mga lumobo na may tubig sa ilalim. No? Pag, pag third degree, ano yan? Mayroon ng mga itim-itim. Wala nang sakit yan. No? Pag nagkaroon ka ng third degree, wala nang sakit. Kasi yung, kasi yung mga nerves mo, nasunog na rin. Wala ka ng mga pain receptor in your body that 
is able to perceive pain. O, kasi ang extent ng damage is even the, 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 the nerves were damaged. No? Okay, that's why ang third degree is no longer painful. Ang pinakamasakit dyan, second degree, yung may blister. Okay. So may tinatawag din, din tayong arc, arcing, no? Okay, so electrical arcing. O, ayan. So, ang kuryente pala pwedeng mag-travel in a gap. No? So, that is what we call arcing. So, yung kuryente pala, it can travel pagdating sa air, no? The higher the voltage is, mas malaki yung arcing na tinatawag natin. Uh, nangyayari yan due to mga overload, overheat. Yan, nagkakaroon ng arcing na tinatawag. O, yan, mga delikado yan. No? Okay, causes of electrical accidents. Inadicate wiring. O, kinakailangan pag hindi ka naman trained, hindi ka naman electrician, do not or never attempt to repair any electrical equipment. Okay. Pag may mga nakita kang mga open wire, defective insulation, report it to your electrician immediately. Ang, ang safety officer hindi naman gumagawa niyan. Ang purpose lang natin dyan is makorek yung hazard immediately. But not necessarily, tayo ang gagawa ng corrective action. No? no. Ang, ang role lang natin dyan is to uh, ensure that the concern is routed to the proper person responsible to correct the hazard. Kung may nakita kang ganyan, i-report mo sa electrician. And make sure that the action is taken at the soonest. Oh, yan. Overhead power lines. Lalo na sa mga heavy equipment, dapat ang layo mo dyan, mga nasa 10 feet away. At least 10 feet away from energized power lines. Okay, improper grounding or earthing na tinatawag. Okay, so ang purpose ng grounding, hindi yan 100%. Usually kasi pag ano na, pag mga nakadouble insulation ka na, hindi na ginaground. Pero ano lang to, added protection to. Ha? Pag sinabi kasing ground din, gro grounding, ah, uh, Rini-redirect natin yung flow ng electricity to the ground, no? Para hindi ka makuryente. No? So that's the uh, principle ng grounding. Uh, overloading and wet conditions as well. Okay. So uh, for element number four, we have materials handling and storage naman. Sa, sa pagbuhat ng mga gamit, uh, dalawa ang klase ng material sanding. No? It can be um, manual, it can also be mechanical. Okay. Pag sinabing manual handling, uh, hindi tayo gumagamit ng uh, any equipment. Only uh, we lift the object manually using our body. No? That's manual handling na tinatawag. Whereas, pag sinabi naman natin na uh, mechanical handling, uh, it's either we use uh, non-powered and powered tools or powered appliances, lifting appliance. So, pag sinabing mechanical, it's either you use non-powered or powered lifting equipment. And, ano ba yung mga non-powered lifting equipment? Yung mga uh, wheelbarrow, no? Wheelbarrow, uh, jack pallet, uh, truck pallet, uh, yan, mga non-powered yan. Samantala, yung mga powered lifting appliance naman or equipment, yung mga forklift, crane, overhead crane. No? O, yan ang mga tinatawag naman ng mga power uh, mechanical lifting equipment. O, yan. So, manual handling, it's either you do it yourself or you look for somebody to uh, help you. Lift the object. Lift, move, or transfer the object from one area to another area. Pwedeng ikaw lang, pwedeng uh, dalawa kayo, tatlo. No? 
As long as you don't use any lifting appliance, manual yan. Okay. Hazards of manual handling. Yan, pwede kang mabalian sa likod, no? Uh, your tendons and ligaments may get injured. Oh, inexplain ko kanina, ha? Ano yung meaning ng tendon at what is ligament? Pag na-damage yung tendon mo, ang bagsak mo dyan, sprain. No? Pag na-damage naman yung ligament mo, ang bagsak mo, strain. Oh, yun, ang, yun ang difference ng sprain at strain. Pag ligament, strain yan. Pag tendon, sprain. Yan. Muscle injuries, hernia. Yan. Uh, Work-related upper limb disorders. O, yun. Ang, uh, pag sinabing upper limb, shoulder, no? hands. Uh, yung ano natin, yung arm. No? Cuts, burns, dislocation, and broken bones. O, ito yung mga complications. No? Kapag hindi ka nag-observe ng proper lifting procedure, uh, these uh, medical conditions will happen. Okay? So, kinakailangan bago ka mag-lift or before you move an object or transfer an object, no? you need to consider the task. Okay. Gaano ba kalayo yung distance ng pagbubuhatan mo? Okay? Uh, how long will it take for you to complete the task? So, yan ang mga katanungan dito. Uh, anong task ba yan? Do we need to do it manually or do we need to make use of a lifting appliance? Okay, number two, the load. Uh, gaano ba kabigat yung load na bubuhatin? Okay? Mm, meron bang mga toxic chemical sa loob na bubuhatin natin? Uh, meron bang mga protruding object, sharp material? Okay? Are the shapes irregular or irregular? No? So, aaralin mo rin yung load, no? Itingnan mo ano ba ang the best way to handle the load. Uh, the environment. Oh, madilim ba? Umuulan ba? Madulas ba yung paligid? Okay. May mga obstruction ba sa dadaanan natin? Oh, yan ang mga titingnan mo ngayon sa environment. No? Individual capabilities. Ang sabi sa batas, kapag babae ka, ang uh, maximum Weight load na pwede mong buhatin hanggang 25 kilos ka lang pag babae. Sabi naman sa batas, kung ikaw naman ay lalaki, it should be times 2. Your uh, your maximum ano uh, load that can be that your body can lift, no, is up to 50 kilos pag pag lalaki. Pag pag babae, 25 kilos ka lang. Oh, yan ang mga tinitingnan natin. No? Bag bago ka magbuhat, consider the four factors. Yan. Again, pag sinabing mechanical handling, gagamit ka ng mga powered or non-powered lifting equipment. Oh, yan. Ito, example is yan, mga powered equipment. Yan. Okay, so what are the accidents in material handling? Uh, physical strain. Kasi pag nabigla yung mga... Pag nabigla yung mga ligament mo, delikado yan, pwedeng ma-stretch yan. Pag naputo lang ligament mo, hindi mo yan magagalaw. Delikado, no? Pwede kang mabagsaka ng mga load, no? That's another thing. Uh, collision, no? Pwedeng magbanggaan. Dalawang forklip, no? Pwedeng magbanggaan yan. Uh, people falling. Ikaw mismo, pwede kang mahulog. Uh, especially when you are working at heights, di ba? Hits, blows, and cuts to people from equipment or load. O kaya, ang, ang principle dito, kung, uh, kung kaya lang naman gumamit ng mechanical handling, there, then there's no need for you to lift the object manually. Uh, wag na natin pahirapan pa. Meron naman tayong engineering control that we can implement to uh, make our workload easier. No? Instead of doing it manually, you can just make use of conveyors. Halimbawa, yan, that's the, uh, sa mga pabrika, no? 
manufacturing companies, uh, conveyor is widely used pagdating sa mechanical handling. Yan. Sa mga construction naman, instead of manually lifting the load, why not use cranes? No? Marami, marami tayong mga types ng crane. Uh, tower crane, overhead crane, uh, gantry crane, o yan, mga truck mounted crane. So, that's another uh, powered lifting equipment. Industrial trucks. No? Mga carts. Ito naman na cart na to, ito ay non-powered. Kasi hindi ka dyan gagamit ng power or, or electricity for, for ito operate yung mga ganyan. No? Kung, kung makikita nyo no, sa mga warehouse, may mga ganyan, di ba? May mga cart tayo, mga dollies na tinatawag. Yan. Pallet jack. O ito, ang kagandaan sa pallet jack, na-adjust yung height, di ba? Okay. Para yung fork, uh, na-adjust natin to a certain height kung saan natin siya i-detusok, no? O, yan ang tawag dyan is pallet jack. Yan, forklift. Uh, powered naman to kasi ang forklift it's either powered by gasoline, diesel, may L LPG powered, no? Na forklift. Okay? So that is all about uh, mechanical uh, sorry, that is all about material handling. Okay. If, if my question po ha, don't hesitate to ask questions. Okay, the last topic that we have is machine safety. Uh, alam naman ninyo ang uh, ang mga makina kung wala tayong makina Diyos ko <laughs> kumusta naman kung gano natin kumusta naman uh, how efficient are we no kung wala tayong mga machines ang mga machines it can uh, help uh, expedite no the production no kung wala tayong mga machines if we will do it manually it will take a lot of time no before we can complete a certain task kaya ang mga machines these are widely used in different industries no hindi yan nawawala may mga makina yun nga lang uh, yung introduction ng machines sa mga pabrika, sa mga industries, uh, nag-create din to ng panibagong hazard. <laughs> Yun ang problema dito. Kasi nag-create din siya ng panibagong hazard, which is the uh, machine hazards na tinatawag. Pag-usapan natin, what, are the, what is a machine muna? A machine is an assemblage of Parts that transmit forces, motion, and energy in a predetermined manner uh, can be simple or a machine can also be compound. Yan. So, so basically, ang isang makina may tatlong components yan. Uh, Unang-una is the point of operation. Uh, pag sinabing point of operation, ito yung part, parte ng makina na gumagawa ng job. Parang ano, ano bang example ng machine? Yung, yung patahian, di ba? Uh, sewing machine, no? Yung, yung karayom na gumaganon-ganon, uh, yun ang tinatawag na point of operation. Why? Because it is the part of the machine that does the primary, the primary job of the, the machine. No? Uh, yun ang tinatawag na point of operation. Eh sir, sa sewing machine, alin naman doon yung motor? O di ba may motor yan? So yun naman yung tinatawag na power transmission. The motor or the power transmission. Ito yung, uh, this is where the power is coming from. Uh, this, this is the source. Uh, this is the source of the power that makes the machine operate. That makes the machine function, no? Ang tawag naman dyan is power transmission. Okay. Number three, other moving parts. Ano ba to? Ito yung mga, mga sprockets, 
Ito yung mga uh, pulley, kadena. Ito yung mga shafting tube. Uh, any other any other parts ng makina that are moving, no? Ang tawag naman diyan other moving parts. Yan. Yan ang basic three components ng machine, no? Uh, this is this one is the motor, no? Ito yung part ng machine na nagta-transmit ng energy so that the machine will perform, no? Kung wala kang motor, the uh, the machine will not work at all. Kailangan kailangan may motor ka. Okay? Uh, other components, yung mga gumagalaw, ito yung mga flywheel, pulley, belts. Yan, mga connecting rod, coupling, no? Sprockets, gears, ang tawag naman diyan mga other moving uh, other moving parts. O, ito na, na-discuss ko na to Other moving parts. Okay. Point of operation. Okay. Okay. What are the hazards uh, or hazardous me mechanical motions? Alam nyo naman, sir, di ba, ma'am? Ang mga makina natin, iba-iba ang gamit niyan. Meron tayong mga boring machine, shearing machine, cutting machine. O, ano pa bang mga uri ng makina? Uh, crashing machine. Yan. Yon, mga iba-ibang use niya, no? Depende sa paggagamitan. So ang nakakatakot dito yung is yung mga motion, no? no. Pag shearing machine 'yan, ah, nag sinishear na, no? Pinupunit. Up. Yung kamay mo pwede diyan ma maipit, no? Okay, certain body part, daliri mo, pwedeng maputol, no? Delikado ang shearing. Pag crashing naman, delikado rin kasi baka ma bagsakan yung kamay mo ng uh, moving equipment, no? At saka maingay 'yan, no? Pag pag crashing, no, ang motion ng machine, maingay 'yan. Kasi yung force no na binibigay niya, yung parang pwersa no. So, ano yan, that, that, that is also something that can uh, generate noise. Ang crashing. Yan. Me mechanical hazards. Ah, uh, pwede ka rin diyan ma-entangle no. Kaya mga sir ma'am, uh, may mga protocol ang ibang company na ang mga operator dapat nakatak in no tak in no entry oh yan mga ganun mga ganun no why kasi yung damit nila mismo is considered as a hazard uh, pwede siyang ma-entangle doon sa mga rotating parts ng machine which is dangerous entanglement ang tawag diyan mga loose clothing may mga protocol din sa ibang mga pabrika bawal ang mga jewel ring Walang hikaw, walang singsing. Dapat yung buhok mo nakatali, nakahairnet. O mga ano yan, uh, good manufacturing practices yan. No? Hindi pwedeng hindi. Kasi yung buhok mo, pag nasabit yan sa mga rotating parts ng machine, delikado ka. No? Uh, drawing in or trapping. So ang tawag dyan, uh, in, in safety ang tawag dyan, uh, reciprocating motion no. Halimbawa, dalawang roller umiikot pasalungat no. So pwedeng ma ano ka diyan, pwedeng maipit or coat in between accident ang tawag diyan. Maipit ka sa dalawang roller na umiikot no. Or it's either impact. Uh, pwede kang tamaan ng mga uh, moving parts of the machine. Pwede kang tamaan sa ulo, sa paa, sa chan. Okay, ang tawag diyan is impact, no? Okay, cutting, pwede ka rin maputulan ng kamay kagaya ng uh, yan oh, circular saw, no? Example of which is your circular saw. Ayun, no? Mapamali ka lang diyan, nako. Stabbing or puncture, ayan, mga drilling machine, no? Mapamali ka lang diyan. Pwede kang matusok ng drill bit, no? Ayun, no? Ayun ang mga delikado dito. Okay, so other than those, pwede ka rin mga kuryente, 
exposed ka sa ingay, vibration, no? Uh, kasi yung mga makina natin, it also generates vibration, no? Uh, as are the substances, radiation, no? Extremes of temperature, kasama na yan, no? Ergonomics, uh, especially due to uh, uh, poor posturing, uh, prolonged standing, awkward positioning, kasama yan. And of course, sleep, trip, and fall. So kinakailangan dapat ang mga makina may machine guard yan, hindi pwedeng wala. Pag sinabing machine guarding, ito ay isang example ng engineering control wherein ini-enclose natin yung mga rotating parts ng makina, linalagyan natin ng mga machine guards para hindi ma-access ng operator. O, yan ang principle ng machine guarding po. Engineering control yan. Didiscuss natin kanina. At actually, maraming, part, maraming klase ang uh, machine guard. No? May mga fixed guard. May mga... Uh, ano pa yung sa fixed guard? Yung isa naman, movable guard. Meron tayong mga distance guards na tinatawag. Okay? So, meron tayong mga motion sensor guards. No? So, marami tayong uh, types ng machine guarding. Meron pa nga yung mga self-adjusting machine guard. Uh, pa yung iba? Self-adjusting. Interlock system. Yan. O, marami tayong klase. So basically, ito yung ano niya. Ito yung purpose niya, no? Uh, to prevent employee contact with hazardous moving parts. No? Para yung kamay mo, hindi ma hindi siya ano hindi ka ma hindi mo mahawakan yung mga rotating parts ng makina especially the point of operation kasi pag nahawakan mo yan it's either ma-amputate yung daliri mo or it's either maput ma magkalaceration ka worst comes to worst amputation maputol no So, ang principal niyan is to enclose yung mga rotating parts ng makina para di ka ma-expose, hindi mo ma-access. No? Okay. Pangalawang principal ng machine guarding, dapat ito ay secured and durable. Naglagay ka nga ng machine guarding, hindi naman siya appropriate, hindi naman siya durable. Hindi akma yung design niya dun sa makina, useless din. So that's why ang ang machine guarding natin dapat ano yan. Uh, dapat akma sa makina. At yung type na gagamitin mo na machine guarding is supposedly dapat uh, appropriate and uh, aligned with the design of the machine na paggagamitan mo ng machine guarding. Okay. Ano pa? Prevent falling materials into the moving parts. No? And create no new hazards. Oh. Kung maglalagay ka ng mga machine guarding, dapat yung machine guard mo, hindi siya mag introduce ng panibagong hazard ulit. Oh. Kasi baka yung lilagay mong machine guard, may mga sharp edges, may mga protruding, uh, protruding na mga component. Oh. May mga... Ano pala, may mga toxic, contaminated pala ng toxic chemical yung ilalagay mong machine guard. Mga ganun, no? So, yung ilalagay natin na machine guard, dapat hindi siya mag introduce ng panibagong hazard ulit sa tao. Okay, so. Next, must not interfere with the worker's productivity. O, ayan, naglagay ka nga ng machine guarding. Yung machine guard naman, nakaka-obstruct nakaka-obstruct doon sa trabaho no which is wrong no mali yon and of course uh, should allow for proper and safe maintenance and lubrication okay na kailangan ng machine guards mini maintain din yan uh, especially when it comes to uh, uh, proper lubrication uh, proper inspection no if there's the need to replace replace kung may mga nakita kang signs ng corrosion, signs ng damage, we need to consider replacing the machine guard. Yan. So, 
para hindi maingay or uh, hindi mag-cost ng, ng noise, dinalagyan natin ng lubrication, di ba? O, yan ang mga consideration natin pagdating sa paggamit ng mga uh, machine guarding. Okay, so uh, I guess that ends my, present, my presentation, no? my lecture. Uh, bibigyan ko kayo ng 10 minutes. Ito talagang 10 minutes na to ina-allocate namin to sa mga Q&A. No? So meron tayong uh, uh, 10 minutes na question and answer uh, para sa mga katanungan ninyo. No? Uh, kasi, uh, kasi by 3 o'clock, break muna kayo until 3.15. Then later on, Sir Ian will uh, take over. Uh, we'll discuss the next topic, your last topic for this afternoon. Okay, so uh, kung may mga tanong po, mag-chat lang po ha. Uh, Stop na muna ako mag-share ng screen. Okay, so may, may questions ba? Okay, sandali lang ha, mag-ano lang ako. Uh, Medyo nawala yung mga picture. Ah. Magano lang ako. Uh, maglalagin ulit ako sa Zoom. Ah. Nawala kasi yung mga picture. O bigla. Kung may questions po, mag-isip na kayo ng questions para masagot na natin. Uh, wait lang. Ah. Maglalagin ako ulit. Ayan, ah, nagbabalik. <laughs> Ang nagbabalik. Okay, so uh, sige, let's now go to the Q&A portion. Kung may mga tanong, don't hesitate to ask questions. Wala? Sure kayo, ha? Uh, yung, uh, yung trainer ninyo, ang next trainer ninyo later, si Sir Ian Tixon. Okay. Uh, ang, uh, ang topic niya later is about uh, workplace health hazards naman. Uh, ako kanina, diniscuss natin more on safety hazards. Si Sir Ian naman later, ang uh, i-discuss niya more on health hazards. Okay? Uh, siguro kung, siguro habang naghihintay tayo, kung may maisip man kayong questions, mag-chat lang. Uh, sir, ano, Sir Lucky, habang naghihintay tayo ng mga questions, baka meron ka sir mga announcement na gustong iparating sa ating mga participants bago tayo mag-end sa topic ko. Wala. <laughs> Okay, so uh, si uh, okay sabi ni Sir wala naman daw si uh, Sir Lucky um, additional announcements. Uh, gusto ko lang magano uh, sabihin na thank you for your ano uh, for listening. Uh, hopefully sa first two topics ninyo for today, sana may natutunan kayong bago. Uh, okay, tomorrow. Uh, I will be your uh, lecturer again from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Ako pala magpapa-workshop sa inyo. <laughs> Ako pala magpapa-workshop sa inyo bukas kaya Okay, so yung tinuro ko kanina ng risk, risk assessment, yun ang your workshop natin bukas. So I have two topics for tomorrow uh, that will run from 1 to 3. 
Tapos after break time is workshop kayo tomorrow afternoon. Okay? So uh, kung wala nang mga tanong, uh, sabi ni Sir Lucky, pwede na, pwede na rin kayo mag-early break. no? So para mahaba-haba ang uh, coffee time. Ay. Okay, may concern si Ma'am Jenaline. Uh, sir, paulit po. Uh, anong specifically, Ma'am, na ano, request mo na i-repeat natin, Ma'am? Huwag uh, oh, naman sa naulitin lahat, ha? <laughs> uh, di ko. Ah, sa quiz? Sa quiz ba? Ah, ano, ano yun, Ma'am, yung sinabi ko sa ano po natin? Workshop. Workshop po bukas, ma'am. Uh, meron tayong workshop mula alas 3 hanggang alas 5 bukas ng hapon. May topic muna ako ng 1 to 3, then after that workshop na po tayo. Okay? So, yan. I hope I was able to answer your question, ma'am, ano, ma'am Jeneline. Okay. So, sige. Uh, early, ano na po kayo, ma'am, sir? Uh, early, uh... Uh, afternoon break uh, Please be back at exactly 3.15 Okay? For Sir Ian's lecture Okay? Ingat po kayo Thank you very much for listening See you again tomorrow Bye-bye
Once again, once good afternoon. Once again, good afternoon, dear participants, and welcome again to our training. Before I introduce you our next speaker, I would like to check the attendance first. Is Mom Janeline around? Sir Kenneth? Sir Anthony? Sir Ian? Kapun? Sir Redentor? Mom Christine? Mom Lara Melissa? Sir Darwin, uh, Sir Erickson, uh, Ma'am Anjali, Sir Walter, Sir Sharpie Anthony, Sir Franklin, Ma'am Sarah Jane, Sir Donato, and Sir Kevin. All right, so our next speaker po is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Nursing and uh, from General Santos City. Adole Accredited Occupational Safety and Health Practitioner, a registered nurse in the Philippines and in the USA, Occupational Health Nurse, OSHC Certified OSH, OSH Trainer. Let's welcome Sir Christian A. Dixon. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, sir. Good afternoon sa lahat. Magandang hapon, mayong hapon sa tanan. Welcome to our day one. Tama po ba, sir? Day one, no? Bosch Training? Yes, po, sir. Day okay. Can you hear me loud and clear, guys? Okay, yes, we boy. are, how many of us here? We are 15, right? 15 safety officers. Okay, moving forward. I think I introduced na ko ni sir. Oh, you can call me safety E, yeah? No, I'm here in Jensen City right now. I am the safe, the current safety head of the junk, of DreamWorks Construction. So, this afternoon, we're going to discuss the last topic for the day one. It is a workplace health hazard, guys. And we're gonna end by five o'clock. And then, kung may to oras pa mamaya, we will have our workshop. Uh, sir, meron ba silang post test mamaya, sir, after my discussion? Yes, meron po, sir. Mm, so, okay. okay. Kasi plan ko sana mag-workshop sa kanila eh, kung may time pa mamaya. Okay. So, magandang hapon po sa lahat. Guys. Yan. Most of you here ba mga engineers or different positions from different companies? Meron ba tayo ditong doctor or nurses or inclined to medical profession? Ang saya ng online class, no? Kasi nakamute lahat. Yun. So, moving forward na lang. We will not waste our time. Okay, guys. After your graduation as a, in a BOSH training, the fourth hours training, you are to be called as a safety officer too by rank. But dapat po mga kasama, hindi lang tayo mag-focus po sa occupational safety, but we should focus also no sa occupational health usually kasi ang goal natin safety officer is tapusin ang buong shift sa workplace natin na wala maksidente wala matusok wala masunugan okay wala mapahamak wala mahulugan ng materyales wala maipit but yung occupational health issue is nakaligtas natin because the effect of that is gradual matagal pa it takes time or even after how many months or years what lalabas that's why Walang um, action agad na ginagawa ang ating management, the managers, the workers, or even kahit sinong membro po ng ating company. That's why po tayo mga safety officer ang, ang manguna po to identify this potential health hazard so that we can make a control measure immediately in order for us na to prevent any untoward illnesses na mangyari po sa ating workplace. Especially right now guys, no? we are exposed rin po sa biological hazard na because dati po, ang biological hazard, yung mga nasa healthcare facilities lang po, ang pwedeng ma-expose. But right now, because of this COVID pandemic, pwede po tayo mapasukan ng SARS-CoV-2 virus sa ating workplace na pwedeng maghawaan mismo sa loob ng company. Okay? For the objective of this discussion, safety advocates, no? 
at the end of this discussion, we were able to define the industrial hygiene and health hazards, outline the basic principle of industrial hygiene and areas of activity of an hygienist, outline and give example of biological, physical, chemical, ergonomic hazard. And do, these four hazards, no, ito po mubuo po sa ng, ng health hazard. Describe how chemical enters the body. Give example of occupational exposure and nature of exposure to each type of hazards and discuss the GHS and safety data sheet. Safety officers, let's define first these following words. If you hear the word industrial hygiene, it is a science of anticipating, recognizing, evaluating, and controlling the workplace hazard. If you hear the word hazard, it is anything, no? any instances, any person or material that can cause us harm, leading to injury, fatality, or even property damage. Lahat po ng bagay na pwede tayo maaksidente, pwede masugut, masugatan, that is a hazard. And number one, we should eliminate the hazard surrounding us. But sometimes, these hazards are part of our job, part of our daily routine, na hindi dapat natin kayang tanggalin. That's why, since part siya ng everyday life po natin, we are just doing risk assessment just to minimize the risk or exposure of the certain hazard. From high risk, going to medium risk, going to low risk. Okay? Specifically po, the health hazard. If you hear the word health hazard, these are chemical, physical, and biological factors in our environment that can have negative impact in our short or long-term health. Exposure of this health hazard can occur through touch, through inhalation, or even through ingestion. It affects the worker's health and exposure takes a long time to show their effects. That's why minsan na-ignore natin ang pag-address, pag-control ng mga potential health hazards sa ating mga workplaces. Okay. Health hazard identification. We safety officers should have or should develop safety eye. No? Upon going out from our offices or even inside the office, we should have an ability that we can easily recognize potential hazard that can cause harm to other people, to our co-employees, or even property damage to our company. Health hazard identification, it is a systematically identifying and evaluate health hazards evaluate hazardous material or even physical agents and propose measure to eliminate or control these hazards. Not only identifying, not only assessing, but also giving recommendation on how to control, how to eliminate this potential hazard that can cause harm to others. Okay. Guys, safety officer, please take note. We have four types of occupational health hazard, no? Kasi merong safety hazard, merong health hazard. But if you are talking about health hazard, may apat po na bagay na tayo dapat mag-focus. First is the physical hazard. Second is chemical hazard. Third is biological hazard. And fourth is ergonomic hazard. And let's discuss this one by one. Para once we will do safety inspection at site, and then we can we see the a chemical. What kind of hazard is that? No, there is a uh, um, exposure to tetanus or TB or COVID. What kind of hazard is that? Uh, an even posture or uh, carrying too much weight beyond to his capacity. What kind of hazard is that? Okay. First, let's discuss what is chemical hazard. No, that's the first uh, uh, classification of health hazard. A chemical hazard is a type of occupational hazard caused by exposure to chemicals in the workplace. Exposure to chemicals in the workplace can cause acute or even long-term detrimental health effect. Guys, ang dami pong nabiktima po ng mga chemical hazard existing in our site. I will cite you an example po no, as part of introduction. Nabilong kasi ako sa construction industry, even though I'm a registered nurse. No? Nung safety officer pa ko sa isang project, Okay, meron kaming isang worker na kailangan niya po ng thinner. So, nag-request po siya sa warehouse, kumuha po siya ng thinner. Alam niyo ba, ang ginamit niya as container, yung container po ng mineral, mineral water na walang label. Ito pa talagang container ng mineral water. And then the warehouse release and put it in a container of that drinking water. Yun, alam natin, ang property ng, ng thinner is parang tubig talaga siya, colorless. Once hindi mo amuyin, once naka-close, parang water lang talaga siya. Ginamit sa site. Nung hindi naubos, ang ginawa po ng worker is nilagay lang po doon sa tabi 
na malapit sa drinking station. Ngayon, may isang worker na dumaan, na uuhaw. Nakita niya yung drinking station, wala rin siyang container. So, andun rin yung si thinner na nakalagay sa container ng mineral water. Ang ginawa po ng worker namin, he opened the bottle and then he drink that what that thinner. Buti na lang there is an irritating effect. Dito pa lang sa truth niya, immediately kanyang nalabas agad. But there's already burn inside sa truth niya. And that's a part of a chemical hazard that is commonly happening kahit saan po ng mga industries because there's a lack of control measure from elimination no ay from engineering control from admin control such as there still should be a policy no bawal gamitin yung mga gantong container the the labor there's the proper training and then even other controls and then it is possible also to happen sa inyong mga companies guys there are classification of chemical hazardous uh, chemicals that that can that our body can be exposed no example of that is the chemicals the organic solvents the hazardous form of it is vapor the acid okay the heavy metals the gas and even the dust and these chemicals has different properties na ano pong um, ano niya bagay na pwede siyang papasok sa ating katawan example of this guys is if this chemical will not be properly controlled pwede po natin siyang mainom tulad sa sinabi ko kanina ng example through ingestion no if a certain chemical has no control there's no proper barrier there's no proper ventilation there's no proper ppe being used, pwedeng ma-inhale po ng tao and it is very fatal. Ang bilis po, po ng absorption, if there's chem this chemical, will enter in our lungs. Bakit po? No? Kasi dyan po na-exchange ng air. Ang mga dugo natin, dyan po dumadaan rin galing sa ating heart. And that's why, ang bilis po na absorption if we will inhale that kind of chemical. No? Absorption through skin, direct contact, walang proper gloves. No? Instead of using the rubber gloves, they're using the cotton gloves. Absorb pa rin yan siya. Injection or even penetration due to laceration, puncture. There's an open wound through the skin. Like example is there is a yung mga aso na hindi po na control sa site, no? Sa workplace nakagat yung tao, exposed po siya sa rabies, no? Or even the stagnant water, poor poor hygiene, no? There's a vector, mosquito, dengue transfer, etc. No? So the this chemical, if there is no barrier, can easily penetrate to our body. Mas low risk pa siguro kung through, through, uh, through uh, ano lang siya, uh, penetration to skin. What if ang penetration niya is through inhalation? no Through ingestion. Mas fatal guys yung inhalation compared to ingestion. Kasi kung ingestion, pwede pa siya masisira because of our acid sa chan. But once inhalation, ang bilis po ng effect na nakaksira po sa buong katawan. Once these chemicals will not be controlled again, we have uh, different health effects na pwede mangyari sa ating katawan. It can damage our kidney, the renal diseases, damage our lungs, even damage our skin, and even cause uh, cancer later on. Damages or diseases to the blood. It can cause problem to the cardiovascular system natin sa heart and the blood vessels, mag-increase ng blood pressure, even low blood pressure. Makasira rin siya sa brain or even our nerves. Okay? It can even cause cancer or even a teratogenic effect. Once buntis ka, mapasa mo rin sa anak mo, sa baby mo, pwedeng sila rin po ay maapektuhan. Ganun po kadelikado once this chemical will penetrate inside our body. Let's say an example of this chemical existing in different workplaces like the organic solvents. Okay? Carbon-based substances capable of dissolving or dispersing one or more other substances. There's a lot of industries, manufacturing, construction, no? Using organic solvents. The nature of exposure, the solvents can enter the body by inhalation. No? Yung mga plumber namin using solvents sa pag-install ng mga pipes. No? Pagdaan ko po sa site, masyado ma maamoy mo talaga yung, ano, yung, yung, yung singaw ng certain solvent. And I'm checking the mask. They're only using the surgical mask or disposable mask. No? That is an inappropriate PPE. No? So we should recommend properly that they should use proper uh, respirator. Aside from that, there should be proper ventilation. Putting a big fan, no? exhaust, para ma-disperse talaga yung fumes, yung amoy ng chemicals na mawala siya dun sa environment. Or even swallowing. No? Accidental swallowing of solvents can cause fatality to the body. Or even skin contact due to no gloves, no proper barrier being worn by the worker. Who are the workers at risk of exposure of these certain chemicals? No? 
Those workers involved in handling or using paints, varnishes, lacquer cleaners, adhesive, glues, de decreasing and cleaning agents. Those production workers of using dyes, polymers, plastics, textile, the pharmaceutical companies, cosmetic products, or even the gum powder. Those workers involved in photography, the magazine painting, food packaging and label. These people I mentioned are very exposed to abusing solvents. Therefore, proper control should be implemented. What are examples of organic solvents arising or used to be used, uh, used by different industries? The benzen, the acetone. And they can be inhaled or even ingested. No? The methyl acetate or the, even the chloroform. Okay, so I decline to discuss uh, deep, deeper, no, ito mga sample chemicals. Aside from that is exposure to acid, no? Acid are corrosive. It is, these are the materials that can attract the chemicals and destroy exposed body tissues once we are exposed. They are very irritating to the skin or even to the mucous membrane. The mist are suspended liquid droplet generated by the con condensation of liquid from vapor back to liquid. Who are workers exposed of handling acid? Those workers who are factory workers in plants that produce nitric acid and manufacturers explosives. Mechanics who handle dirty batteries. Exposed or uh, involved in publishing, printing, or photography shops. The steel workers, the production of plastics and cellulose acetate. Example of acids used by different industry, the pesticides. No, That's why... Some uh, farmers are using organic chemicals instead of these acids, and then the output is same naman in siya. And the type of control of that is substitution. No? This pesticide can cause irritation to the skin and even to the eyes, who are exposed, the farmers, and the pest applicators. Example of also of acids are the oil mist, heavy mineral oil, the mist paraffin oil, or even white mineral oil. It can cause also damages to the skin and even to their eyes. Okay? the sulfuric acid, and, and also the uh, nitric acid. Guys, another example of chemicals, no? the dust and particulate. Example of this includes the dust and fibers. Yung mga construction sites natin, no, na, na, um, there is no dust, uh, dust management control na implement They are doing grinding, drilling, and then there, there, there is a dust accumulation inside uh, within the workplaces. There is no proper ventilation. There is no proper workflow, no proper PPE. Yun, it can be inhaled. The natural exposure, particulate matter enters the body through the nose and mouth during breathing. Who are exposed of this dust and particulate? Those people involved in mining, quarrying, tunneling, stone masonry, and construction. Dito sa amin po sa construction site, Gra nung hindi kami sa finishing stage, grabe ang yaming dust. That's why uh, we deployed a, a water tanker. Ang ginagawa lang po na water tanker for the whole day is doing a dust management lang po. Nag-iikot nag lang po siya sa site namin and then spraying water para yung mga heavy equipment is masus... Ang dami namin heavy equipment dito para yung mga dust na na-accumulate sa site is ma-decrease po. Okay? Any the other processes using abrasive blasting, manufacturing of glass and ceramics, handling of power, uh, powder chemicals, the farmers, and even the food processing involving flour. Okay? Example of gas, guys of dust and fibers, those using asbestos and silica. The asbestos are uh, the people involved in insulation work, plumbing, mining, and shipbuilding. Those people involved also in handling silica, yung gumagawa po involved manufacturing po na mga glasswares. Yun sila. Drilling. Ah, uh, Mga sanding, no? ceramic products, cutting or crushing of stones, yun po sila. Kasi nagiging powderized yung solid material and then it can be easily inhaled through lungs. That's why po, ang dami pong involved sa gayto mga heavy industries na ang sakit usually ng mga workers nila later on is sakit po sa baga. May mga joke nga sila na after their shift is umiinom sila ng tandway para daw magka-cleansing. That's not true guys ha. Mas lalo pong lumala yung mga sakit ninyo once you have a different vices if you are exposed to excess intake of alcohol. Aside from that, guys, if you're exposed to heavy metals, heavy metals are common in industrial appliances and are found in batteries and pesticides. Heavy metals are naturally occurring elements that have a high atomic weight and have density of at least five times greater than water. A fume is formed during operation such as welding, bracing, or torch cutting. Those people uh, involved in in mining, okay, working in firing range, 
Okay? Those workers involved in stained glass makers, involved in battery fabrication or manufacturing, the welders or smelters, sila po yung delikado po in relation to exposure to heavy metals. No? Expo nature of exposure, itong heavy metals could be ingested through eating contaminated foods kasi pupunta yung, ano niya, yung heavy metals sa contaminated food and even inhalation. Example of these heavy metals are the zinc oxide, iron oxide fumes, no? And then yung mga tao pong exposed dito, yung mga welders, galvanizers, no? Car makers, yung mga welders natin, no? Iron founding men, the boiler scalers. Therefore, guys, it is very important also to identify all chemicals na involved ang inyong industry. Later on, I will show it to you ano yung mga consideration para mas makontrol natin itong pagpasok ng mga chemicals na ginagamit natin araw-araw. Sulad ng sinabi ko kanina, these chemicals are considered hazard. They can cause harm to our health. But these chemicals are very useful in our operation. Therefore, anong dapat gawin natin just to minimize the risk of exposure? Because we cannot totally eliminate this chemical kasi wala natin yung trabaho. No? Another example of chemical also are the gases. The gases are formless fluids that expand to occupy the space or enclosure in which they are confined. The nature of exposure of these gases is inhalation. Buti na lang ngayon, no? because of pandemic, all of us are mandat mandated to wear face masks. At least, medyo napifilter po natin yung mga gases na uh, uh, being produced by our workplace. But it's not sufficient kaysa kung grabe po ang concentration ng gas na iniimit po na inyong workplace, kailangan po mas higher than you are using the ordinary mask. We should use the proper uh, respirator and then filtered and then minsan gumagamit tayo ng mga carbon filtered respirator. Okay? Some common gases in the workplace and who are the people exposed of this? Like the pressurized gases, yung gumagamit po ng mga compressed gas cylinders, no? gases in their compressed state yung may mga argon, acetylene, LPG. Yun po, masyadong delikado. Kasi binsan kasi may mga nagjo-joke na mga workers na if they want to test a certain gas cylinder kung may laman, is they are not satisfied sa weight. No? They are opening the, the gauge, no? yung valve mismo ng gas cylinder, and then lumalabas yung gas, and minsan wala yung protection, may inhale po nila, and that is very toxic to our body. Okay? Who are the people very exposed to these gases or even these compressed gas cylinders? Those who are involved in welding or even flame cutting, no? Example, mga welders, mga uh, hot work workers natin, gumagamit po ng acetylene uh, tank, no? Na and, uh, masyadong malapit po sila, walang proper protection. Those divers, no? Medical laboratory use dispensing beverages, okay? Those involved in extinguishing fires, heating, cooking because they're exposed of LPG and even the water treatment. Guys, confined space also is very involved sa gas uh, potential exposure related to chemical hazard. Bakit po? If we define a confined space, no, it is an, a, a, an area no, that is not uh, suitable for human occupancy because there is an insufficient uh, gas inside, insufficient uh, space, insufficient access, insufficient uh, illumination. That's why ang kailangan po, mandat, uh, ginagawa namin as a control measure, if you have an activity inside a confined space, is we will do gas testing by a competence a trained gas tester. Titingnan po natin kung enough ba ang concentration oxygen inside to that confined space area. You are uh, you are entering inside the, uh, a boiler, you are entering inside a vessel. We will just also check also the presence of the H2S, no? The presence of other gases, toxic gases, flammable gases bago tayo papasok po. What are the major hazards uh, within the confined space? Ulitin ko po, ang confined space po isang area na limited po ang ating movement sa loob, isang area po na limited po ang ventilation sa loob, isang area po na pwedeng puno po siya ng mga chemical or hazardous gases na pwedeng can cause toxic to our body, an area po na limited ang access natin, and, and there is a poor ventilation and illumination. Aside from that is, we are also at risk for affixation, no? insufficient oxygen supply inside to that confined space area or tank. And there is a toxic atmosphere due to a toxic substance or gases confined inside that um, confined space or vessel. We will also check these harmful gases inside to that confined space area, like the sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas. 
which a which a, with a characteristic that is irritating no there is a bad odor the natural exposure is inhalation because we are not using a proper respirator some people also are using scuba para talaga they are provided na independent oxygen supply workers at risk those involved in copper smelting or power plants no yung when I, i i work in a power plant construction and then pagpunta na sa operations sa commissioning makita talaga namin yung mga tao namin po pasok talaga sa loob ng malaking tanke sa mga vessel and then kung hindi po sila trained possibly malaki aksidente ang mangyayari manufacturer of sulfuric acid manufacturers of paper or even fertilizer h2s is very also important to be detected through through gas testing bago po sila papasok sa confined space area there should be no presence of sulfur or h2s inside a confined space area no the hydrogen sulfide this h2s is a colorless a flammable gas extremely hazardous gas with a rotten egg smell ang baho po niyan the level of h2s talaga during gas testing should be zero Hanggat merong presence sa H2S, no one is allowed to enter inside that vessel or tank or confined space area. No? So kailangan natin mag-conduct talaga ng gas testing bago pumasok. Or mag-blower muna tayo ng big fan. Okay, eliminate the gas inside. After elimination of the entire gas inside na accumulate na doon, we will do the gas testing from the bottom, from the middle, and also from the top portion of that area. The nature of work, If there's a presence of H2S inside the vessel or confined space, it's through inhalation. Who are the involved workers of this? No, no, mga construction workers natin, yung mga hot work people natin, gumagawa ng mga water treatment industries, and etc. So, kasi sila po yung pumapasok po sa mga uh, confined space na mga environment. Another thing is formaldehyde, no? used in production of fertilizer, paper, plywood, and some ri ricin or food preservative in household products. Exposure of this is through inhalation or even direct contact of skin. Occupation, na exposed of this formaldehyde, those farmers, manufacturers, yung nagtatrabaho po sa porinaria or even the beautician. I experienced this guys, yung na-inhale ko talaga itong si formalin. Kasi nung nurse pa ako way back nine years ago, is doon ako sa City Health nagtatrabaho. And then we have a medical, uh, ano, yung medical legal doctor. Sabi sa akin, iyan, sama ka sa akin, assist ka. Mag, ano tayo, mag, tawag nito. Ano yung procedure na we were testing yung patay para mag-forensic exam sila para hanapin namin yung bala sa loob ng katawan and then papasok po namin doon sa morgue, meron pong apat na patay doon and then parang ano lang siya, parang ordinary morgue, morgue lang siya, walang freezer, doon ma-inhale mo talaga yung singaw ng formalin. Ang isingaw po ng formalin is para po siyang maanghang na masakit po sa pangamoy, masakit po sa mata. Yun po. So lahat kami doon, nag, nag, talaga, nag mask nag-95, and then nag kami ng vapor ventilation. Kasi yun talaga ang masangsang na amoy ng formalin. Masyado po siyang maanghang once pumasok po siya sa ilong ninyo. Okay? And that's all for chemical hazard. The second hazard that we should consider during our inspection or, or safety assessment is physical hazard. Physical hazard involves Noise, vibration, inadequate illumination, extreme temperature or low temperature, extreme pressure, exposure to radiation, or even inadequate ventilation. Okay, guys, ha? because all of these things can cause harm to our health. No? And then the effect of this will take time, not immediate. Mabuti pa ang safety hazard kasi once merong poor housekeeping dyan, napatid or nasipa ng worker, there will be a fall, mat, falling material struck to your head, immediate yung effect. No? There is already immediately a contusion in your head. There is already an open bleeding. Pero itong exposure to too much noise, exposure to too much vibration, matagal pa po yung effect na mapapansin natin. That's why this hazard should be addressed properly para walang reklamo na mag-arise later on. Okay? Let's first discuss the radiation as part of this physical hazard. Okay? Radiation is energy that is emitted by a source. There are two types of radiation, guys, or safety officers. No? First is ionizing radiation. Okay? So please take note, baka lalabas to sa exam mamaya. No? Ionizing radiation causes ionization in the material but that absorbs it. 
If you hear the word non-ionizing radiation, that's a second type of radiation. It does not cause ionization in the material that absorb it. If you define what is ionization, it is a process by which electrically uh, neutral atoms or molecules are converted to electrically charged atoms or molecules. No? So again, the two types of radiation, either it is ionization or non-ionization uh, radiation. What are the occupational sources of this radiation? There are the alpha particles radiation. Pwede makuha natin sa smoke detectors or even sa mga science laboratories natin. The beta particles, makuha rin natin ito sa mga laboratories. The X-ray radiation, makuha natin ito sa hospital or medical radiography or baggage security scanners. The gamma rays, a form of radiation through industrial radiography. The neutrons, through, from by, emitted by the power plant station. The, the UV lights, galing po sa sunlight or even sa arc welding, the, the ultraviolet rays, no? that is a form of radiation. Okay, the infrared, the sources of these are the hot red steel in rolling mills in the glass manufacturer. The visible light also is considered as non-ionizing radiation. The laser leveling devices or even the laser pointer. Ngayon, high-tech na po ngayon, even in the construction industry, they're using this uh, uh, level, laser leveling light no? para um, level talaga yung pag-install nila ng mga tiles or etc. The microwave also is considered radiation. And even the radio wave produced by the radio, TV, or radar antenna. Types of ionizing radiation, guys, are the alpha particles, beta particles, X-ray, gamma rays, and the neutrons. Who are the workers exposed of this ionizing radiation? Those involved in healthcare facilities, no, assisting in fluoroscopy procedure, and or certain industry and laboratory works. If you are exposed. With the maximum level of this ionizing radiation, it can cause nausea and vomiting. No? Pwede kayong masusuka or susuka na talaga. Reduction of body's defenses because it will affect your immune system. Reddening of skin, loss of weight and hair, blistering and ulceration of skin, cataracts, cancer, or even genetic defects. Okay? Mga teratogenic effect. Yung buntis po ang ma-expose. Pwede mapasa po and then there will be an abnormality or deformity or sickness na pwede mangyari dun po sa kanyang baby na i-deliver. Example also of this non-ionizing radiation. Yung mga cause by light lang and then cause it can lead to uh, burn or heat. Like the ultraviolet radiation, the visible lights, the infrared, the microwaves, and then the radio waves. Who are exposed? Those workers involved in microwave, no computer screen. Mga workers po natin, no? using computers, prolonged exposure to cell phone, yun po, they are exposed to non-ionizing radiation. And some healthcare workers natin, because healthcare workers also can emit, um, the healthcare facility can emit ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. What are the health effects of this ionizing radiation? It could cause a burn, thermal effect, increased temperature of molecules, produced by microwave or even smaller scale of, of the um, a field producing the infrared, the thermal radiation, uncertain as to any non-thermal effect, and also other sources that only causing too much heat. And that is a source of, of ionizing that can cause harm to our skin or even to the other body parts. Okay? Another example also, guys, or part of a physical hazard, no? Is exposure to too much noise. Okay? Kalina po, chemical hazard, Second health hazard is uh, physical hazard. Part of physical hazard is exposure to radiation. Second, exposure to too much noise. Noise is measured in the unit of sound pressure levels called decibels. We are measuring the level of noise through the unit of decibels. No? Normally describes a loud, sudden, harsh, or irritating sound. It can cause noise-induced hearing loss. No? Who are exposed of these uh, workers exposed to too much noise? Those work uh, working in entertainment industry. Yung malalakas po masyado yung mga speaker. Nagtrabaho po sa mga bar, sa disco, sa mga cinema. Involved po sa manufacturing na masyado po malapit sa mga equipment na nagproduce po na masyado malakas na ingay beyond 85 to 90 decibels. Those workers working in the call center industry or even mga street sweepers because of these machineries 
mga vehicle na dumadaan po sa kanila. Guys, according po sa OSH standard, no? According to the OSH standard, there is a permissible noise exposure that's only allowed, no? Sabi pa doon sa yellow book, if you are work, if you are exposed in an environment or equipment beyond 90 decibels, you should not work beyond 8 hours without hearing protection. Okay? Therefore, there should be an environmental hygienist or industrial hygienist na ma-assign po or such people involved in WEM activity or, practice or services na sila po mag-determine gaano po kaingay ang inyong environment or working environment. Example po nito, may isang work na nagtatrabaho po sa masyado malapit sa isang equipment and then that equipment is producing more than 100 decibels. No? So that worker should not work beyond two hours in that area. That's why we are recommending, no, according to the OSHA pa, in international standard, beyond 85 decibels of noise, there should be already a protection, hearing protection, either the earplug or earmuff. Earplug is, is recommended already. But here in the Philippines, beyond 90 decibels, kailangan na po sila mag-require ng earplug. Beyond 100 decibels ang ingay, kailangan po na earplug and then nagyan po natin ng earmuff. That's only a part of the PP control. How about elimination con or engineering control? No, part of it, because we have type three kinds of control, and then it will be discussed late uh, the following days. Tignyo sa entire cost tignyo ng Bosch. The first control will be uh, engineering control, putting a barricade like a enclosure facility, acoustic board, no acoustic uh, acoustic border na may enclose po yung noise na hindi po lalabas talaga dun sa surrounding environment niya. This is part of engineering control. That being control is putting signages, conducting training for the people in order for them to identify this health hazard. And lastly, this PPE control. Okay? So, ditin ko po, beyond 85 to 90 decibels, all workers involved to, do, to that noise of environment, noise environment should already have a hearing protection provided by the company. Okay? What are the health effects if you're exposed to this noisy environment? It can lead to hypertension. Pwede pong tataas ang iyong blood pressure. Hyperacidity. Totoo po ito. Once masyadong maingay po ang iyong working environment or mayroon pong taong tumatalak po sa tabi ninyo, pwede po kayo magka-ulcer niyan. No? Tingnan niyo po yung mga, mga, ano natin, mga guys natin na mayroong mga girlfriend na grabing makatalak-talak. May mga sakit po yan sila ng mga ulcer. It can cause hyperacidity. No, joke lang po yan siya ha. Palpitation, no? Distress later disorder or even sleep disturbances. That's why po, no, mag-ingat po tayo sa environment na masyadong maingay kasi it can cause complication. Example, no, itong sila Sir Metz Logistic sa Cebu. Muna nga sir, kay delikado yung guys, sir, kanang saba kaayo, muntik sweeping sweldo ninyo, pangulit din mo sa iyo. Kayong asawa magyayaw sa inyo ha, it can cause too much noise. Therefore, no, magdala po tayo ng earplug. Pagdating po natin sa bahay, kung magsobra na po kayo sa oras ng alas 9 po ng gabi. So that there will be too much noise produced by your wife. Okay? There should be proper PPE to be used. Okay? Nasabtan, sir, sa mga taga Mets Logistic Incorporated, Cebu? Yun. <laughs> May sir naman, parehas yun, mabisaya yun ta, sir. Okay? How about vibration, guys? Vibration is part of physical hazard. No? It can cause damage to our nerves or even other parts of the body. If we define vibration, no, it is a mechanical oscillation of an object about an equilibrium point. Yang nagba-vibrate po, that is self-explanatory. Vibration enters the body from the organ in contact with vibrating equipment. Using machinery or equipment po no, mga drills natin, mga grinders natin, na kung anong part po ng body na humahawak po doon, yun po ang masyado maapektuhan po ng mga sakit or mga complication due to prolonged exposure to vibration. Who are the people exposed of too much vibration? Example, mga state workers natin because they are involved yun po sa mga earth moving, okay, land development, may mga equipment sila na kailangan po mag-leveling or mag-compact ng mga soil natin. Kailangan nila magsakay sila sa equipment na mga compactor with vibrating mode. Those mechanics, no? mga barbershop workers natin, drivers, or any industry that you are involved or handling an equipment or machineries with vibration mode. You're at risk also of our other complication na pwede makasira sa inyong mga nerves saka sa inyong mga blood vessel. But it doesn't mean na you will not use that equipment. 
we will apply control measures such as admin control na huwag talaga yung prolonged exposure. Pwede there should be a break para rin mag-relax ang inyong mga muscles, tissues, saka mga nerves natin. Okay? So, huwag palagi gumamit ng vibrate. Huwag yun na. Vibration. Any devices that can cause vibration. Okay? Another part, guys, of this physical hazard is illumination. No? Illumination is the use of light to achieve the desired effect. The quantity of light that illuminates a surface measured by a foot candles or lux. That's why we are uh, we are measuring the the adequacy of illumination or light or certain area through lux meter. Okay? Kasi depende po yan sa activities mo natin. Kung activity po ninyo is ganito, there should be intended lux or light level para sa ganyang workplace natin in order for us to protect ang stress ng ating mga mata. Okay? Glare may be defined as any brightness within the field of vision. There are three types of glare. Disability glare, discomfort glare, or reflected glare. Too much light and insufficient light can can have an effect to our health. No, It doesn't mean lang na yung kulang sa ilaw. But yung masyado rin maliwanag, pwede makapekto rin sa ating mga site of vision. Okay? Workers at risk of poor illumination hazards in the workplace. Those workers working in direct sunlight, outdoors, and poor lighting areas. That's why, guys, if there are people applying for overtime, please also check their workplace during nighttime activity kung sufficient ba yung nilag, uh, na provide na ilaw para po sa kanila. Okay? Not only to protect the health condition of the worker, but also to, to have a safety environment because if there will be a sufficient light provided in a workplace, they can identify potential safety hazard naman. Yung mga tripping object, no? mga, mga open hole, mga, uh, mga, uh, mga insulated um, electrical wiring na pwede malikit electrocute po sa kanila. Okay. Illumination, there are two sources of light, no? The natural and artificial light. If you hear the word natural light, it is a sun. It's the Earth's main source of natural light. If you hear the word natural light, it is those created by humans. This include electrically and fire. The most convenient and commonly used as artificial light is electricity. We have different types of lightings, no? The local lighting illuminates a relatively small area without illuminating the entire space of your work space or uh, room. Localized lighting, it provides ambient light as well as a task light. Kung saan po kayo magtrabaho, yun lang po ang ilawa natin. That is a localized light. Often, it is an uplighter up, uh, up with a light source that is directed toward to your working station. And there is a general light. Okay? Lagigyan po na illumination ang buong room fills in between two or the intended for general illumination of an area. Indoors, this would be a basic lamp of a table or floor. Okay, yung mga fluorescent po natin, that is for general lighting. Okay? Aside from that, guys, as part of this physical hazard is the too much temperature or presence of humidity. No? The heat, it can lead to heat, heat stress. Okay? May be experienced by workers exposed to excessive heat arising from worker. Too much temperature can lead to complication, can lead to burn, okay? Or even disorder to the body part kung saan po na-expose po yung tao natin. Sino pong involved? Yung mga baker, bakers natin, farmers, miners, or even other people na humahandle po ng equipment na masyado pong mainit. Okay? We should also consider that excessive temperature is considered as physical hazard. Ulitin ko po ha, handling equipment that is very hot The person is exposed to extreme temperature, an example of physical hazard that can cause harm to people. Okay. Abnormal pressure also as part of physical hazard usually refers to atmospheric pressure or change in altitude. Atmospheric pressure is pressure of air at sea level, usually 14.7 PSI. Who are exposed of this abnormal pressure? Those involved in aviation, No, yung mga na involved po sa mga flights, no, mga flight attendant natin, those involved in diving, no, yung sa underwater. Okay, confined space area with too much pressure in the surrounding. Sila po yung in, uh, exposed po sa mga uh, hazard relation to physical. Or even too much cold environment can lead to uh, damages to the body. Dito sa Pilipinas walang problema, but there are some industry involved in a cold storage, no? less than 36.5 in a prolonged duration can cause abnormality already or disturbances sa system po ng katawan po ng tao. 
Okay? We already discussed chemical hazard, guys. We already discussed a physical hazard. Now, the, fourth, the third hazard in relation to health hazard is ergonomics. I'm sure always po niyo ito naririnig. If you hear the word ergonomics, it is a science of ergonomic studies and evaluates a full range of tasks, including but not limited to lifting, holding, pushing, walking, or reaching. Okay? In proper body position. Okay? Awkward positioning. Carrying too much weight. Okay? Not using the base of your body. Anything, any activities that can cause us musculoskeletal disorder, and that is an ergonomics hazard. Who are at risk of having this ergonomic hazard? No? Workers in an open field, construction workers, offices, or even the all, I think all industries exposed to this ergonomics. No, even sa opisina, prolonged seating, that's an ergonomics issue. Sa, sa mga malls, sa mga grocery, prolonged standing, ergonomics issue. Sa mga construction site, manufacturing, creating too much object, and then uh, awkward positioning, overturning, not using the base of the body, okay? Not using the base of your feet in carrying object, that is ergonomics issue also, guys. No? Using a very repetitive motion, halos every day, awkward position, no? Example of this is female carrying more than 25 to 30 kg every day. Beyond to his capacity na po yan siya. A person is carrying an object beyond 50 kg without assistance of others. That is ergonomics issue. Dapat po kasi guys, ang trabaho po dapat ang mag-adjust sa tao. Hindi po yung ang tao mag-adjust po sa trabaho. No? Even a simple lifting of material. Once may pupulutin kayo materialis po sa galing sa floor, ang ginagawa nyo po is yumungoy ko agad not using or not bending your legs. And that can cause back pain. Okay? Spinal cord or spi spine problem. We all know that according to the Symptom Health Study, the number one cause or problem no, or effect in relation to occupational health is musculoskeletal disorder. And this musculoskeletal disorder is caused by this ergonomics hazard. No? Example of people or mga workers or professionals natin at risk for this ergonomics issue, mga registered nurses natin or mga people working in the health facility. Kasi prolonged standing po yan sila. Laborers natin carrying uh, very heavy objects. No? Mga janitors, mga cleaners, delivery drivers, garbage collectors, stock clerks, work in the telecommunication, line installers and repairers, or even people working in a prolonged seating position that are at risk for prolonged seating. That is ergonomics issue. Okay? So even tayo po, guys, sa training, no? we have an online training right now. Can you imagine if we will just sit here for eight hours, eight hours in duration for the whole day? There will be an ergonomics issue that will happen. That's why kailangan natin mag-break for 15 minutes, tatayo, stretching, etc. Pwede rin po gawin yung part rin sa mga health uh, health programs ninyo sa workplaces. Kung ang inyong industry po ninyo is yung mga nasa opisina na palagi po nakaupo ang inyong mga staff ninyo, what if after two hours magpa-alarm po kayo or there will be a music that everyone do stretching or tatayo po sila sa kanilang mga desk. Yung mga tao po ninyo nakapulong seat standing, what if after two hours they will have a 15-minute break para rin makaupo po sila para putulin lang po natin yung prolonged activity nila that can cause strain or stress to their body. Okay? The fourth hazard, guys, in relation to health is biological hazard. And it is very evident right now because of this COVID pandemic. No? And it is, we believe that COVID is also COVID policy or prevention control in every workplace is a prime responsibility of a safety officer na dapat po hindi po tayo mahawaan, mapasukan, or malabas galing sa ating company. I'm sure all of you here are safety officers or designated safety officer po ng bawat companies ninyo. And trabaho nyo po siya mga kasama na wag po kayo ma-infect ng COVID-19 or sino man sa inyong mga katrabaho. Okay? Moving forward po. If you hear the word biological hazards, no? it includes bacteria, virus, fungi, or even other living organism that can cause acute or chronic infection by entering the body either directly or through break in the skin. Okay? So, these biological hazards 
encompasses exposure of this microorganism. And then if this microorganism invade inside your body, infection will occur. No? And then through infection, symptoms will arise. Example of that are fever, redness, okay? pain on that area, etc. But the common implication of fever of infection is really fever. That's why we will do thermal scanning talaga sa lahat po ng tao papasok po sa ating workplace na kailangan they are afebrile or walang lagnat sa kanyang katawan. Remember guys, ha? fever is not a disease. Fever is just a manifestation that you have ongoing infection inside your body. If you have ongoing infection inside your body, you are very uh, infectious na pwede kayo makahawa ng ibang tao. But again guys, adlib ko lang si COVID ha. Huwag magkumpiyansa kasi we have a new different variants right now. Even those people that are asymptomatic or those people that are afebrile or don't have fever, they are carrier of the virus and they can pass it to other people. Especially if this carrier is not vaccinated. Because if you're vaccinated, magwiwig kasi si virus na ang kanya mapapasa po sa iba. But if the person unvaccinated, immunocompromised, not having fever, and then mapasa rin yan sa mga kasama natin sa trabaho. Commonly cause of diseases due to exposure or contact, and then common cause of health hazard in the workplace. Example of causative agent, guys, that can cause a biological hazard is the bacteria. Bacteria are simple single-celled organism. They vary widely in shape, and many have tail that allows them to move through liquid. Si bacteria po, kaya, po, kaya niya magparami even outside the body, okay, or even outside the cell. Example of bacteria that is common to our workplace is tuberculosis. No? Disease. The disease causing the tuberculosis is mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yun po ang bacteria causing the TB. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Another causative agent causing this biological hazard and infection is the virus. It is a microorganism but are not strictly alive. They are self-replicating molecules. Genetic material contained in a protein shell. Ito namang si virus, kailangan niya pong pumasok sa loob po ng cell ng kanyang host para po siya magparami. Yan po ang karakteristik po para mabuhay po ang isang virus. Example po ng mga sakit caused by virus, <coughs> itong si COVID-19. Anong tawag ng virus causing COVID-19? It is a SARS-CoV-2 virus. The Hepa B disease <coughs> caused by a Hepa B virus or even the, HI the HIV virus. Okay? The doctors, the surgeon, those people involved in medical industries are very exposed of this biological hazard. Okay? Those exposed in laboratories. But right now, all of us are at risk to be exposed of this biological hazard. Okay? Not only in medical industries. Guys, as a safety officer, we should have a safety eye in order for us to immediately recognize this potential hazard. No? Again, let's review. What are the four general classification of health hazard? One is chemical hazard. Number two is physical hazard. Number three is ergonomics. And number four is biological hazard. And therefore, upon going out to our home, going to our workplace, we should immediately recognize this potential hazard no, in order for us to do control measure. Conduct regular inspection or walkthrough. I know you have your other tasks also. Some of you here are managers, supervisors, office staff, admin. But as in a slash of your designation, you are already as designated safety officer of your company. Therefore, kayo po dapat ang manguna sa pag-identify sa mga existing hazard na andyan po sa inyong mga workplaces para huwag nyo antayin na meron pong mga aksidente. Usually po kasi mga safety officers, we are so very reactive. We are waiting that someone will get injured before we will do action. We should not wait for that instance. Before any instances to happen, no, we should do control measure immediately or already so that there will be a, we can promote a zero illnesses, zero environmental harm, and zero accidents in our site. No? Aside from that of conducting um, inspection is to review medical records of our workers or even reviewing the safety data sheet of all chemicals entering in our site. Collect workers' complaint and feedback Baka may mga workers na may meron sa mga concern na masyadong doon po sa workplace nila may pasangsang am na, na amoy from a certain gas or chemicals that we should address of it. No? Review process. 
So magitan po ng ating uh, meetings natin, review, reviewing the uh, operation procedures ng bawat uh, department, material use and the end products. Aside from that, safety officer is to review accident reports, summary of injuries, and other documentary requirements by DOLE. Okay. Safety officer, we should also be familiarized with this GHS. No? GHS means globally harmonized system. There is, there is a specific department order by DOLE, the DO136-14. It is a guideline for the implementation of globally harmonized system in chemical safety program in every workplace. The GHS is a system for the standardizing and harmonizing that's the classification of labeling all chemicals that we are using. No? Ito na po siya. Uniform na po ito siya kahit saan po ng mga workplaces sa dapat natin i-adapt. Example po nito, no? yung mga chemicals natin, mga drums, no? mga lahat po ng mga substances na ginagamit ng mga raw materials, may mga GHS na po yan sila nakatatak. So dapat tayo po mga safety officers, we should be familiarized kung ano po yung mga GHS na naka-indicate po doon. Anong impact po noon once we are exposed? Anong pwede po mangyari once meron po nakalanghap or may nakakontak po doon sa chemicals? Anong dapat po natin gawin for the storage of that chemicals? What is our waste disposal management also? So magitan po ng GHS na nakalagay, nakalagay dyan. Is that toxic to the environment? Okay, pwede ba siyang ilagay dito kahit may hot work sa paligid natin? And that chemical is flammable or corrosive, whatever should kailangan, we should consider that during our inspection at site. No? As per DO 136-14, okay, the guidelines in relation to the GHS, there are different uh, sections that we should be familiarized. Ito po nakikita nyo sa right side po guys. Ito po yung mga example ng mga signages or, no, or mga signs po ng GHS, GHS, GHS na dapat we should be familiarized. That example, if that chemical bath or substance is explosive, flammable, oxidizing, is that a compressed gas that there is a high PSI inside, irritant or harmful, dangerous environment, can cause health hazard, corrosive once being contact, or even toxic. In these guidelines given by this department order, in section 1, it discusses about the coverage of these guidelines. No? The guidelines shall apply to all workplaces engaged in manufacturers, use, storage, and industrial chemicals in the private sector, including their supply chain. Number 2, it discusses about the objectives. Number 3 is the definition of terms. Number 4 is the roles and responsibilities of the employers and employees and the OSH committee handling for these different kinds of chemicals. And number 5, the adherence or provision of the latest edition of this GHS. Okay. What are the advantages or benefits of this globally harmonized system uh, markings or signages? No? This GHS provides a chemical classification and labeling system that is updated and maintained internationally. Hindi po siya internal, nasa inyo lang po siya applicable. It includes provision for the common and coherent approach to classify the hazard and the preparation label and safety data sheet. Aside from that is, it is very also helpful guys, in order for us to be equipped, in order for us to prepare kung anong dapat ang ating gawin during our stocking and even sa waste disposal. Okay? As part also of this GHS guys, industrial chemicals shall be classified according to the following criteria of this GHS. Hazard classification. If that certain chemical is explosive, flammable gas, flame uh, combustible, oxidizing, okay, gas with the presence of uh, compressed compress, uh, gas inside, like the compressed gas cylinders with a high PSI, flammable or combustible, no? Aside from that is self reactive substances, okay? Pyrophoric liquids, pyrophoric solids, okay, self-heating substances, oxidizing liquids, substances which in content with water emit flammable gases, okay, and other things po. Kailangan we should be familiarized, okay? If these also chemicals can cause harm to the health, can cause acute toxicity, corrosive to the skin once it will be contacted, can cause irritation to the eyes or even to the sensation once mahawakan po natin siya, or we should also consider the environmental impact once may dispose po natin ng chemicals. If this chemical ba 
makasira po ba siya sa likas na yaman once itapon po sa tubig or even emission to the ozone layer or atmosphere. Okay? So example of GHS that we should be familiarized. No? Okay, then po. I want also to highlight, guys, about the safety data sheet. Ito pong gawin po natin. No? Sino po sa atin dito ang involved po sa manufacturing? Okay? Kindly raise your hand. Yung mga involved po sa manufacturing. Wala. Sino po involved mga industries po dito or companies involved po na nag-aangkat po kayo or nagkumukuha or gumagamit kayo ng mga chemicals or any substances po? Yun. Sir, ma'am, my question is, meron ba kayong SDS sa bawat chemicals na pinapasok po ninyo sa inyong mga industry or sa mga companies ninyo sa workplaces? The safety data sheet. Okay? Meron po, wala. Meron po. Very good, no? About SDS. It is a safety data sheet. Nakala nakalagay po doon sa safety data sheet, no? All properties, all facts about that certain chemicals, no? Saan po natin kukunin po si SDS or si MSDS, no? Material safety data sheet, gayon po si SDS na lang siya. Safety data sheet. Ang bawat manufacturer po o kung saan mo yun nabili ang isang certain chemical, dapat sila po ma-provide ng SDS na dapat kailanganin ninyo. Once you have this SDS, kailangan po naka-stack to siya or naka-keep sa safety office siya sa clinic. Naka-stack po siya sa warehouse kung saan po nakalagay ang chemicals or bibigyan po natin ng gamit or ng copy yung sino pong gagamit ng chemical na ito. Ano pong nakalagay po doon sa SDS or safety data sheet? Para po yan siyang gamot na if you will buy a medicine, okay, sa loob po ng box merong etiketa ay meron po siyang uh, drug, drug literature. Okay? All facts containing or stating or describing the, chem the certain medicine. Dito po sa SDS, nakasaad po doon yung identification of the substance or mixture in the supplier, the hazard identification, the composition of the chemicals. Ano pong gawin po natin in case meron pong taong may exposure sa, ta sa chemical na yun? Ano po mga measures natin, na anong na mga PPEs na dapat gawin natin once we are handling that kind of chemical? Is this chemical or raw substance are flammable or combustible? So that we will have a plan kung saan natin po siya i-stack natin. No? If this certain chemical or raw substances po natin, is saan natin, ang anong plano natin for the waste disposal, so doon po yan siya nakasaad po sa SDS. We should review all chemicals inside our plant or industry or workplace before natin to siya gagamitin. The operation should inform the safety officer that we, there will be a procurement no or may paparating po na chemical para po tayo mag-advise sa ating purchaser o sino man sa logistics na anong dapat nating nilang gawin or dapat nilang gawin so that we will be prepared kung dapat ba may mga special PP to be used mag-conduct ba tayo ng mga special training for the workers handling that chemicals or etc rather than na exposed na sila and then dun pa tayo magbabasa kung anong dapat gawin po natin okay sulitin so, ko po Lahat po ng substances, lahat po ng chemicals, lahat ng raw materials natin, there should be an SDS. And this SDS, kailangan madiscuss po natin sa mga user po, tsaka people is stocking this chemical inside our plant. Okay? In summary, safety officer. Okay? So we have time pa content for our workshop. The individual, the industrial hygiene consists of the following approach, anticipation of recognizing the hazard which involve identifying the hazard in the workplace, evaluating of the exposure to the hazard and controlling health hazard. Not only the industrial hygienist or trained WEM personnel, but the safety officer should be equipped, skillful, and knowledgeable on how to recognize potential hazard in your site. You, safety officer, also should know how to assess, how to analyze the risk of that certain hazard that you identified and you, safety officer, should be familiar, equipped, and knowledgeable on what to recommend on different control measures once you identify this potential hazard existing in your workplace. We should also review that there are four types of health hazard. These are the physical hazard. Example of physical hazard, the noise, vibration, pressure, too much light, okay, too much heat. Another thing is the exposure of chemicals. No? the biological hazard, and also the ergonomics. 
So ito pong apat na bagay na dapat i-check po natin para madali lang po na ating gawin about the control measure. Aside from that, safety officer is the main duty of a safety officer is to conduct hazard identification in the workplace which serve as a basis for the classifying their workplaces. Health hazard identification is a part of the risk assessment process. How can you do a risk assessment if you don't know what is the hazard existing sa inyong workplace? And identifying hazard in the workplace can be carried out in the form of inspection, walkthrough, review of records of medical, exposure to accident report, baka may mga cases na kayo dati, safety data sheet review, okay? And feedback and complaint from your workers. Guys, do not ignore even a simple complaint by your workers kasi sila mismo po ang exposed dun po sa area nila. Therefore, conduct investigation so that you will know what is the real problem to prevent the occurrence of that instance. Okay? So, I'm sure yun lang po kasimple on how to recognize potential health hazard in our every establishment. And please do not Ignore about it. No, bakit? Kasi po, matagal po ang effect once these people will be exposed with this health hazard. Dapat balanse po, recognizing safety hazard at the same time, recognizing health hazard at site via identifying if these are chemical hazard, physical hazard, chemical hazard, or involved in ergonomics issue. Okay? So let's have a short na lang na workshop no because by 4:30 you will have a uh, post test no so i will show you this guys no ito na lang po i will call you one by one na lang po and then please discuss no sa i want sa mga information okay i will show you a picture okay and then please identify potential health hazard doon po sa picture na yon okay Kasi kanina, we identify no different hazard, right? Exposure of chemicals, okay? Exposure of too much heat, exposure of inhalation of dust and fumes. Yun mga mga health hazard, no? Another thing is uh, improper PPE. Okay, that's a health hazard also. Aside from that is uh, exposure to too much radiation, okay? No vaccination, that is a health hazard. And in every hazard, what is the possible health effect to that certain hazard. Example, you observe a person doing a welding activity without wearing welding mask. Okay? What is example of health hazard for that certain work activity? Okay? Palitin ko po. May isang taong nag-welding. Ongoing po. During your safety inspection, hindi po siya nakasuot ng welding mask. Anong health hazard po ang pwede niyong makita sa ganong trabaho? Mr. Erickson. Sir Erickson, on that instance po, example po. Uh, yes po. Yun. During your inspection, Sir Erickson, is pag ikot niyo po sa planta, meron po isang welder na gumagawa po ng, ano, ng welding activity, hardware activity. Napansin niyo po is, grabe yung fumes. Okay? Ang lakas po ng glare. And then that person is not wearing any face uh, welding mask. Anong health hazard na identify mo doon? Pali, sir, uh, chemical. Maybe some kind of ano, chemical hazard. Okay. Exposure? Uh, by, means of, by means of fume, sir. Yes. And then that is the hazard. What is the health effect for that, sir? Uh, normally, sir. Uh, ano yun, sir? Sa physical, physical <laughs> Anong pwede mangyari sa kanya once they, with that person in, inhaled the fumes? Because, okay, there will be a respiratory problem. Okay? So, that's right, guys. No? Pag inspect ni Sir Erickson, nakita po niya na walang barrier, no proper ventilation, no? And then nakita niya is exposure to fumes due to no protection, not wearing proper PPE, the welding mask. And then the possible side effect can cause respiratory problem. Okay? So, ganun lang po kasimple. Okay, I will show you an example, guys. Okay, please take out a paper. Okay, dapat tayong lahat po nito gagawa. Na? So, please make this table. Column 1, okay, work activity, and then put photo number. Okay, please write at the top portion of your paper your complete name and the date today. 
Okay. Yan. Tapos na. And then make a table. Okay. The first column is work activity because I will show you a photo, num a, a certain picture, first picture, and then you will put a put picture number one and then put what kind of activity he's doing. On the second column, guys, identify health hazard on that certain picture. At least two health hazard. Okay? Individual activity to, ha? On the third column, please um, indicate or identify what is the possible health effect to that health hazard na na-identify po ninyo. Okay? Kuha, because I will show you four pictures. Every picture should have two health hazard. And every hazard, there should be one health effect. Nagsusulat po ninyo. And then after the output, mamaya, I will call you randomly to present your output. And then all of you should take picture on the, your paper and submit it to RBA as your output for today. And we will send it to the OSH Center. Okay? So let's start for our workshop. Five minutes lang po per picture. Okay? Picture number, individual guys ha, write your name and also the date today. Picture number one. Okay, the first column, please put photo one, what is the activity? Okay? Five minutes, go. Okay, one minute more before we will proceed to the second picture.
Okay. Let's proceed to the next picture. Okay, in your second uh, row. Na? So, same procedure pa rin. Okay. This is the second picture, second scenario. Plus, please put in your first column, photo two, work activity, cutting work. Okay. And then, kayo na po bala sa hazard identification and then the possible health effect. At least two hazard and then one health effect of each hazard. Okay, let's proceed to our next picture. Prepare for photo number three. Yeah. This indicate photo number three. The activity is used of equipment at work. Ano yung specific kinagamit po niya? Chuck hammer. Pag drill po siya, no? Okay. Identify potential health hazard and possible health effect for that hazard that you identified. I want you to be specific in identifying the hazard, not only putting a uh, presence or existing physical hazard. What physical hazard you observe on that activity?
Okay. Last picture. Okay. The last picture. Please prepare. Yun. Photo number four. Pick painting work.
Okay, time's up. Okay, guys. Tapos na po. Okay. Ito pong gawin natin, no? So please write again the ni your name at the top portion of that paper and then please take picture and then please email that to RBA Mandaluyong at gmail.com. Uh, I type it sa chat box natin. Ang ilagay po ninyo na subject is your name, tapos health hazard identification workshop, September 20, 2021. Please check it sa chat box natin ngayon. Okay? Yun po ang gawin po natin. And then please send it sa RBA website and then we will put it uh, as your output for today. Okay? So I will call Arat randomly to present your presentation. Okay. So please prepare. Okay. Please read your output. Sir, Dar Sir Darwin, good afternoon po. Sir, please share to us your output sa picture number one. Good. Hello, sir. Hello, po. Hello, good sir. Afternoon. Hello, sir. Darwin. Good afternoon. Okay. Please share to us, sir, your output po sa picture number one, your observation. Ah, uh, sir, yung number one po is uh, yung health hazard po. Ah, uh, no mask and proper gloves. Ah, uh, inhalation of uh, toxic smoke. Uh, tapos exposure po, sir. Tapos po yung possible, possible health effect, uh, respiratory disease, burns, uh, difficulties of breath po. Good. Very good. Thank you, Sir Darwin, for that sharing na. So, okay. Okay. also, thank you, sir. Sir Ian Fakum, good afternoon po. Kindly share to us your output sa picture number one. Hello po, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Uh, ano po, uh, sa physical hazards po, tapos uh, exposure po siya sa, ano, sa chemical ng welding rods. And sa health naman po niya, sa ano po, uh, inhalation po. Yun lang po. Okay, what is the health effect of that hazard? Mm -hmm. Yep, nasidulat niyo po. Inhalation po. Inhalation that can cause damage uh, or respiratory problem. Apa. Yeah, no. So we will thank you for that sa iyan, no? So in in our health effect, it should be uh, specific po. Anong pwede mangyari sa kanya? So that we will uh, prioritize it what kind of risk na ating irritate because you will have also a, a workshop on the following days on the risk assessment kung is that if we, if we will consider that as a high risk, medium risk, or a low risk. Thank you very much, safety officers. And now let's proceed to picture number two. Okay, so I'll just call you here. From Total Ball Corporation, si Ma'am. Ma'am, please share to us your output sa picture number two. Yes, sir. Um... The person is not wearing masks, so by chemical hazard due to fumes. Possible health effect is respiratory problem. And I also tell you, sir, wrong body position uh, is ergonomical hazard, possible cause to back pain. Um, possible health effect, musculoskeletal problem. Good. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for that uh, presentation. Sir John Kenneth, what is your observation for our picture number two? Ay ayan po, sa picture number two po yung sa cutting work. Uh, ayan po, yung improper use of PPE natin, wala po siyang uh, welding mask. So, possible po na magkaroon po siya ng respiratory. Ito po yung health effects is yung respiratory disease po. Yan po. Then, yung second factor is pwedeng health hazard is yung burn. 
pwede pong ma- masunugan siya if ever sa balat and can cause blisters in the skin and skin irritation. Ah, Yun, very good. Thank you for that, sir. Marami, no? Very good observation. Let's proceed to picture number three. Sir Donato Galang, good afternoon po. What's your observation for that photo number three? Yes, good afternoon po. My, my observation is po, uh, regarding sa health hazard niya, is physical and ergonomic hazard. In sa physical, sir, uh, make, noise, make noises and possible health effect is hypertension and stress-related disorder. Yes, very good. Second, sir, is ergonomic, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir, for that uh, findings now, your presentation. And now let's proceed also to Ma'am Sarah Jane. What's your observation for that picture? Barista number three pong picture is yung sa akin po is ergonomics and physical hazard. Pwede din po siya sa physical hazard, yung noise po. Then, syempre sa healing problem. Then, yung posture niya po. Okay. Yun po. What's, your, what's, what's the health hazard for that health? What is the effect, health effect rather, for the hazard? Possible po is yung pong stress din po. Hearing loss. Okay. Or the musculoskeletal disorder. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Na-observe natin dito yung exposure to prolonged vibration as part of a physical hazard. Okay? So, can cause damage to the nerves, to the sensation, or pain to the affected area. Okay. Yan. And now, let's proceed to picture number four. Our gentleman from Mets Logistic, sir, is, isa lang po sa inyo. Si sir na nakablu ang mask. Uh, base sa nakikita ko, sir, yung, yung spray ng paint. Yes. Uh, yung health hazard niya, yung inhalation. At saka yung possible health effects is respiratory disease mm-hmm. at possibly rin sir na maswalo niya yung sa health hazard swallowing tapos din siya ng uh, cardiovascular disease sa possible health effects yun lang sir thank you so much sir for that observation and also we will listen to my cousin ma'am Lara Melisa cousin <laughs> say mapalito tayo ma'am <laughs> yes, Ma'am Lara. What's your observation? Sana si Ma'am. Yung sa hazard identification po niya, yung chemical hazard po. Tapos yung possible health effects niya, respiratory problem po. Okay. Kasi po na, kikita naman po, wala po siyang suot na mas. Kaya po, dire-diretso kong papasok sa respiratory system niya po. Yes. Okay, and that's all, Yan ma'am. Po. Thank Opo. you very much, Ma'am Lara. Thank you very much, a safety officer. No? But before we will end, no? in in part of your control measure, guys, kasi hindi natin na-discuss kanina, and then ma-discuss yun in later days, no? We have different approach in our control. Not only the PPE, but also we have the first is the engineering control. Can we install something, equipment, no, or barrier, or permanent control para wala tayong exposure immediately to that hazard? Number two, or the second level of control is the admin control. Either we will do orientation, safety training, installation of signages, okay? putting a barrier. That is a part of controls. And then the last or the least line of defense is the PPE. Because we observe no, na always na ginagawa natin, once we identify potential hazard, we immediately introduce use of PPE. No? And that is the last line of defense. We will only use the last line of defense once hindi po applicable si top 1 natin si injury control or hindi natin nagamit si admin control. Okay, but you can use all of the controls. No, You will conduct trainings, put in signage. At the same time, you will put isolation, isolation, proper ventilation or fan, at the same time, provision of proper PPE. Guys, again, you are to be called as a safety and health officers. Please also do not ignore safety or 
the health hazard existing in your workplaces. Because even though they are the effect of it is gradual, slowly, but still it can affect the entire operation of your organization. Okay? And that's all safety officers. So I hope you learned uh, something about this topic. And then in your remaining uh, four days, mas marami pa tayo matutunan. Okay? Any question about that safety officers? Okay, nan so far. Okay, hinaot na sabtano sa kumigala mang bisiya dere, yung mga Tagalog so read po mga Tagalog. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pa, inyong pagparticipate sa ating workshop ngayon. Tomorrow again we will meet sa ating workshop about high rock activity and also with other topics. And that's all for this afternoon. Thank you very much safety officers. Thank you sir. Thank you so much sir uh, Christian. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay, para po sa ating post test, paki-check po ang ating chat box. Uh, sir, sige, sige, ako, sige, ako konti ha. Guys, please do not forget ha, please email your output na ginawa po natin sa rbamandaluyong at gmail.com with proper uh, subject po na nakasulat doon sa ating chat box. Maraming salamat po. God bless. Okay pa. Thank you so much sir. Meron na pong nag-submit na ating outputs. Ayan. Kapag hindi nyo po siya maklik, pwede nyo pong iscan ang ating barcode para sa inyong uh, posters for the day.
Good afternoon po mga ma'am and sir. Kapag tapos na po kayo sa ating pre-test, pwede na po kayo mag-leave sa inyong Zoom, sa ating Zoom at na makapagpahinga na po kayo. Ingat po palagi. Maraming salamat.